should be good to go. Is there a YouTube stream up already? Doesn't look like it. Managing it, it's having it so it's. Wait, how does it work nowadays? You shall have. I thought you could just have a town. What is going on? Playing fucking shots. Okay, YouTube just had a bit of a weird moment. I don't need to be playing Game of Friends fucking clips right now. Please. Oh, it's like some weird. Oh my god, what is going on? It went there for a second and then it was off. So... Is there a particular reason why it's not showing up like that? I don't know, guess it doesn't matter. But hello everybody. Everything should be working and live and all that good stuff. We're obviously a little bit early, but I think it's fine. So I wanted to go over <clears throat> this again. Oh, I haven't logged into Augment on Firefox. Hmm. Maybe I could just do that on a uh, tab that isn't on the screen. App, oh. It's not a, too big of a deal. And then how is this connected to that? Good, perfect. <clears throat> Just to double check, it is starting in an hour, right? I'm not completely off the goop. Yeah, good. That's over there. Um, that I can close. They have um, Paper X. Winning. What about Loud versus Sentinels? Loud are the favourites for that? Uh, I don't know about that, really. I don't think the favourites, but I have them winning it. Uh, I've already sort of done the veto for the first series. I think Gen G versus Loud. It's a really interesting... Uh, sorry, this is, uh, this is me getting ahead of myself and doing it for the potential upper bracket game, I think it was. Here we go. This is more in line with what I think it'd be. I don't think I've touched this at all. The Paper X ban in an icebox because Genji would want to play it over Breeze. So, you, I don't think Genji would pick Breeze, but I guess we'll see. Um, but yeah, Paper X will ban an icebox because they haven't played it yet. Probably not much, if not anything, on it. The so Genji been playing it, been looking pretty good on it. Beat loud, uh, beat uh, lost to EDG, but I think that was a bit of a one-off. Um, Genji, they did ban out Sunset before. I think it was to Edward Gaming. I think they were the team that um, they banned it out first. They had been banning out Bind, but I don't think they've really been doing at this event thus far. Um, against EDG, they banned out Sunset first, and again. Against who was their first opponent? Loud. Ooh. I don't think they banned out Bind. We could double check what they banned out instead. They banned out Sunset there too. Did they ban out Sunset against EDG? No, they banned out Bind there, which makes more sense because um, EDG's Bind was like fairly decent. So banning out Sunset, they did it against Loud. I think it's a good thing to do against Paper X because I think Paper X are um, much better on Sunset. Than Genji are. Genji haven't played it, I don't think, since. Um, I think the groups. 
in kickoff. I don't think we've seen. Oops, wrong one. I don't think we've seen Genji play Sunset at all this event. Yeah, not this event. They played up against our Q and Paper X, I think. And it was to Paper X that they lost to beforehand. Um, so yeah, we've seen them play it, but I don't think it's going to be anything stand out for them. In all honesty. Not in comparison to Paper X's. So Paper X, they'll want to take a sunset. I think Genji, if they're clever, they'll take it out beforehand. Um, Paper X, Icebox there, that'd be going Genji. If we actually do end up going there, I think they're the favorites. Obviously, there could be some like ace up the sleeve comp or certain play style of playing that might catch people out. But I'm I'm not really thinking it, you know? I don't I don't have that feeling that there's gonna be like a meta change in the last like couple of days for them to work it out. So Breeze, if we go there, I'm still leaning towards Genji. Um Paper X I did think did play a little bit of Breeze. I can't remember really. Um I think it was just against Genji that they played it and they lost. It's taking a second to get through all of the stuff on the sheet now. Yeah, and they were running Yoru, Sova, Viper, Omen, Harbor. Triple controller. Mio did say that they have a trump card in Genji vlog. Yeah, I'm not... From the perspective of Gen G, I think that they will have some, like, cool stuff that they're hiding. Like, Sunset, they could potentially come out with something there. Um, I just don't think that they would do it anywhere else. But, uh, yeah, Breeze, if we go there, I kind of believe in Gen G again. They won it in the first time that they played. Vine's a really interesting one, because I think we've seen... Bind be pretty okay from Genji to beat the Arx and to beat Paper X. But again, they haven't played this map at all in Madrid. It was just last played in kickoff. Whereas we have seen a lot of Paper X play in Bind. They only won against... Um, of which of the two fucking teams was it? Was it KC? I'm trying to remember what was the crazy... I think it was KC. Uh, no. It was Heretics. Was it Heretics? I'm going to have to look it up. It's all like blurring into one for me. I think it would have been Carmen Core actually, just because there was no sunset. They played against Edward Gaiman. That was Edward Gaiman's pick, and Edward Gaiman's thing is all right. And then they played Gingy before and lost 13-4, but they have changed up that comp. So I think it'd be crazy if Paperx picked it, but I don't know where else they can go. But you can't go Lotus, because I think Genji have that like lockdown. No matter what Paperx are doing, like Lotus isn't working for them. So they have to like either come up with something else or just try to double down on the weird double controller, double duelist stuff they were doing. Split. Again, which iteration of Paper X are we going to get? Are we going to get the Triple Duelist? Are we going to get the Sky Double Duelist? Because both were okay, but neither were like super duper standout. Hey, Breeze. I want Paper X to win, but I'll think Genji will, Saj. I mean, based off like looking at it this way, of like, okay, if Genji and Paper X play on Lotus, it's going to be like Genji winning Lotus. That's the thing that Paper X throws people off with. Because it just comes down to like the individual moments. Like the pistols, who's winning clutches, who's winning rounds that they shouldn't be. If Paper X could force up mistakes from Genji because they're a little bit more inexperienced than them at international events in big games like this, that's how Paper X always get this far. Like there's no advantage for Paper X here. None whatsoever. Their backs are against the wall, but that's just the way that they play. In fact, I think that's the way that they like it. 
But you could say for all of these, really, that all of these are like in favor of Jinchi. I don't think that's too out there to say. I think the only one that's a little bit off of Jinji is Split. Um, who, what did come to date? Was it, what was the map that Loud picked? Oh, it was Breeze. They picked Icebox. Um, and Jinji's got a bit of a own goal by picking Breeze into them. Except Texture and Karen, everybody has been to a Masters. Yeah, Meteor was with no exception. Um, obviously, Blackia has a good amount of experience. Who's that lead? Munchkin. Yeah, I mean, I think the general backbone of the team is a lot of experience, but Munchkin doesn't have that much IGLing in big moments like this. Um, Blackia, I think, has been lacking in some of the performances that they've had um and like you never know with, like, with somebody like karen they might absolutely just like fall to pieces here right a lot of pressure on them now and with it being double elimination now and a bit more of a similar i, I guess format to what we're used to i think teams like loud and paper x that have done these kind of events frequently are going to feel really comfortable in this it's why the likes of fanatic and stuff have looked really good is because they know how to sort of work their way through a double elimination bracket and genji i don't know what genji are going to be like if they lose today and then go down to the elimination game against the loud or sentinels like do they have enough about them to actually be able to rebound off that and you know go go in a bit of a loser's bracket run well, which map will Genji be first picking if Paper X ban Icebox? I think Lotus. I think that would be the more obvious one. Because it's been a really good map for Genji, I think. Like, I think the way that they play it, it's very straightforward. It's not really super flashy. But I think that that's how you want to approach it. Trying to think if we've seen them play it this because we didn't see it against Loud. Yeah, the only issue is that we haven't seen it in a while. But that only seeks to benefit them, I suppose. Did you qualify for playoffs in their first Masters with a squad? They've exceeded expectations already. If they understand that, they won't feel any pressure and will have a chance to win this match. I agree, but I think the Korean culture of we win or we die is going to probably like seep its way into the players uh and it's the reason why we've seen korean teams consistently get so high and then kind of bottle it as they get kind of like vertigo they get a bit too high look down and they're like oh shit yeah like i i actually have this Gen G team winning the whole fucking event it, it's that's the thing that i think is going to the reason why I think these guys are so good is the map pool for them is fucking stellar. I think that they're really good at making the right adjustments they need to. They seem to bounce back really well if they lose a map. Like they got destroyed on Breeze against Loud, yet they came back onto Ascent, which is a really good map for Loud, and they destroyed them. I think there's so much that like teams can't really copy that. And maybe if we see Genji put into that same situation now, then they don't have that bounce back. That's when they start panicking. But yeah, I, I think for Genji here, I'm looking at the wrong series as well. Here we are. I think for this one, it's like Paper X picking Bind just because they've changed a lot. Uh, Genji, we've not seen them play it since. The issue is, I suppose, is there's a lot of maps here for Genji that they haven't played this event. Um, luckily, they're up against Paper X, who they have played. And maybe there's a chance, I suppose, that um, they might change stuff up. But like, Genji have played Icebox. They haven't played Sunset, but that's not relevant. They haven't played Bind. They haven't played Lotus. Um, they... 
did play split, they did play Ascent. So, you know, if we had a Veto, and they played Breeze as well, obviously. So it's like these two first maps and Sunset, they haven't played at all this event. And against somebody like Sentinels, that might matter. But I think for this game, because it is up against uh, Paper X, do they be on both of these maps, the first ones? I think they're going to be like fairly comfortable with the environment. It's just a case of whether Genji tried to change too much that they overcomplicate it, or they don't change enough. Paper X gets a good read on them. Paper X plays to sort of like shut them down and they panic. But from what I've seen from Gen G, I think they have enough about themselves to not fall into that issue. What do you think about Monyet playing Raze? It has been looking better and better as the event has gone on. Now, I think at this point, it's balls to the wall for Paper X. It's just based on like individual form. If you want to take a peek, if you want to go for stuff. But the fact that Monya is playing in that way for Paper X shows how good of a fit he is for Paper X. There's not many players that could just jump into Jing's shoes, not necessarily replicate the form that Jing had, because that's really difficult. But Monya is at least not afraid to put himself in the same positions and get some amount of success from it. So I think Monya's raise, I like his omen more. I think he's a fantastic like controller player, but like his raise is improving a lot, especially since the Afrika like ignition event, the off season event. From there to now, money has improved a lot. In long run, I think money will not play raise. Yeah, because Forsaken's raise is also pretty good, and I think it's easy for Forsaken to sort of almost copy the things that Jing did well because he was in the server with him and knows what Jing likes to do. But the problem is, is that Forsaken is just too good on various different roles that it's kind of hard to choose what you want to put him on, I guess. Um, I was also doing this, so I now have this going. So I can have the stream open whilst I'm like, <coughs> like looking at this and stuff. So I think that like map pool on the face of it, if we look at the data, if we look at all of the the previous history, it is heavily in favor of Genji, but it is against Paper X, where the sensible approach isn't always the right one. In fact, you're better off switching your pickums because it's going to be fucking opposite day because it's always opposite day when it's Paper X playing. It's so hard to call it. It's all on Genji, I think. It's theirs to lose, and that in itself could force Genji to like really start to panic. Paper X, I think they've done well to get this far. I think they'll be really happy with that. Um, and plenty to take back to Pacific to work on and improve. But a much better start than they had last year. I did want to look at the second series as well, whilst we had a bit of time. I even like tried to go through some of the other ones. I think this veto is a really tricky one. I feel something really underperformed. I, I feel to an extent he's trying to do too much, Mr. Death. Like, with his opping, he's re-peaking and over-peaking a lot. But in some of those situations, he's just like, I need to just keep taking fights. If I start panicking and playing scared because I'm not hitting stuff, I'm not going to be the difference for my team if they need me to win. But I do think there's go in the opposite way of that where you do too much and you try to double down on stuff that isn't good which something has been guilty of but i think that he's done well to like recorrect it in some maps lotus however though he was way overdoing it is this the veto that i still think sentinels ban in icebox uh loud have looked pretty good on icebox i think despite losing to Gen G this event so i don't think sentinels would want to go there especially because sentinels I've only played it once, which was in the grand final, and they lost too loud. So I think Sentinel's banning this out over Ascent, over Breeze, I think is kind of fair. Unless they feel more comfortable with what they were doing on Breeze. I don't know. It's a tricky one. I'm even like 
wondering if Loud picked Sunset or not. Because Loud Sunset does look good. But if Sentinels ban out Icebox, do you pick Breeze instead? Because you know that they have... Like, the issue is, we haven't seen Sentinels play it in so long, they might have fixed a lot of stuff anyway. Also, um, just checking the audio stuff. Me talking should, like, reduce the audio of the music. And I can turn this down in my ears as well. So that level of audio shouldn't be too bad, and then when I start talking, it should drop. I'll drop it a little bit more, though, just because it's kind of loud. Good morning, Razor. I uh, hope all of this stuff with Challengers Leagues went well. And I've been working with um, Knights on it. The, che the teams get champions points at this event only if they win. Which is kind of whack if you think about it. Let me open up a big pen. Because... To give it a second to load, wherever the hell it is. There we go. A team, let's say Loud, who got second at kickoff, get second place again in Madrid. They get zero chat, uh, VCT points, and they get zero VCT points. Loud would have the same amount of circuit points to qualify for champions as fucking DFM and uh, Tyloo. But I think that's for the best. I like the Madrid is just its own sort of hype event. If you win, you get free. Same as the kickoff, like, individual ones. But I think that taking some of the impact off of Madrid, especially with it being an eight-team event, to do with champions and just making it, like, its own sort of separate thing, kind of like lock in to an extent. But I think that's really good. I mean, that's, like, the better approach to have there. I still need to production, but I'm learning fast. Nice. I hope you like I'm glad you're enjoying it. Each way you get one point or was I high? That is for the group stages, KM. So when we get into the stages of EMEA all playing each other in groups, uh China playing each other, Pacific playing each other, that's where you get a point per. So there's less focus on masters events for qualifying for champs. And more focus on like the international league and specifically the groups. Which means that the sort of midweek fixtures of fucking C9 versus crew might matter a lot in the grand scheme of things for points. Every game matters instead of groups being a bit like who's going to get to playoffs and then who's going to qualify for international events and then the teams that do well at international events get to go to champions. It's split one and split two, like both groups. Um... Yeah, I think that Sentinels pick and split, I think it's the best thing for them to do. Like, what are the other options? Bind. You haven't seen Loud play Bind in a while. This Phoenix comp might be something different, and you don't know what to expect. And I feel like Sentinels, from how they look, are quite a big anti-strat team. I feel like that's a big focus for them. So going to a map that you've not seen Loud play in a couple of weeks, where they might have a totally different composition, could be uh, a disaster. So I don't think that's wise. Sunset Loud will want to go there. You're like fairly decent at it. So you can pick whatever side you want to play on and just go for it. Lotus, well, Loud are now banning it out a lot more. So you're not really going to get the chance to play it, even though you look good on it. Breeze, I, you haven't done well. Loud haven't seemed keen on picking Breeze. They're happy to play it, but they don't, they're not really going to pick it. So you're probably better off like floating now. Yeah, I think Sentinel's banning out Icebox first, because out of Icebox and Breeze, I think Loud is more likely to pick Icebox. If you ban out Icebox, Lotus ban out, uh, Loud ban out Lotus. Is there a chance that Loud pick Breeze over Sunset? I don't think so. I don't think that they're going to... Because it's the same sort of thing. While Sentinels haven't necessarily looked good on Breeze, and you did beat them previously, I think they might have changed slash fixed a lot of their game. So you're taking them to somewhere that they're kind of hoping that you do. 
So just keeping it on the simple maps of what you've played a lot this event, what you've been successful on this event, what you don't feel you need to change too much of the anti-strat for. And both of these maps are really good if you need to like adapt to. If you need to play more for mid, if you want to play um, to stop the planet instead of retake. There's a lot of stuff that you can do on either of these two maps to uh, change your way of playing. Whereas somewhat on like Breeze and Bind and Icebox to a lesser extent, it's a lot harder to like change your game plan because the maps are a little bit more like basic with how they play out. The loud band split right off the bat, and then you leave open Lotus, which Sentinels are also good at. I think that neither of them is great for loud. I think it's like this could be the other way around. But this is just a general what is like likely. And then if there's like a big swing in what teams do. Like veto wise, I think that that'll be like worth highlighting. And it should be clear as to why it's worth highlighting. We have Sentinels banning out Breeze afterwards. Loud banning out Bind or Ascent. I don't know. It depends on how good they feel their Bind is because we've also seen Sentinels change up their comp to have the Gecko in it instead of the Yoru. And it did look better against Heretics. A little bit of a, you know, typical third map brawl fest, but I'm kind of happy with what I saw from Sentinels in that map. In comparison to before. Hey, Sprite. So in these maps, Sunset, I think I'm going loud. Split, Sen, Bind, really is 50-50. Uh, if we do see Lotus, I think that's going Sen. If we go to Ascent, I know it didn't look good with Loud when it changed over QCK from the Phoenix to the Yoru. But again, they've had a bit of time to fix it. It was a complete shit fest for them. So it's clear that they're going to VOD review that, fix a lot of the stuff, and make sure that it's, you know, top tip ready, I suppose. And for Sentinels, I feel like the way that they're playing that map from, like, the, it just isn't a map that seems to suit them. Like, they lost to uh, NRG, I think it was, and they lost to Loud, and then they beat... I think they beat Leviathan? But I'm not too sure. I feel like Loud more so, but this is like 50-50. I mean, this map is 50-50. This map is 50-50. Icebox, if we go there, it goes to Loud. If we go to Breeze, that goes to Loud. The Sentinels have a really good chance with a veto here to just get something that they want. And I guess it's just a question of like loud instead of taking them to sunset. You know, you're happy with that. Sentinels are happy with split. The sense could be 50 50. It's going to be a really good series, the second one. If this was a best of five, I think I'd favor Sentinels more. But in a best of three, I think it just suits loud. In like the veto but that's just you know on the face of it what it might look like ultimately i don't think it's going to be that straightforward because it never is like me doing this and me doing any form of like analyst desk stuff my job isn't to predict the future it's to sort of set the stakes and what's likely and then if the comp is different if the veto is different if the fact that you know gen g when they have the top seeds they pick team B, because a lot of teams do. Paper X7 had the chance to be team A or team B. The Sentinels, when they're the highest seed, they always, well, so far this event, they've always chosen team A. So they get to pick first, the ban, their pick, the second ban. They're giving Loud the control to have this final map. But Sentinels will be more focused on getting, like, if it is Ascent as the third map, they might pick to defend first. Maybe this is the other way around, so Sentinels do have a bit more control in. In fact, I think that's like the better thing for them to do, is to go Team B, have some control over if you want Ascent or Bind in this case. But then again, your two bands are just two maps that you really don't want to play, both of which Loud are good at. So you don't really get a choice of two maps, You'll because you, otherwise one of those maps is going to be Breeze or Icebox, which, yeah, neither are necessarily that good for it. Oh, how do you decide team A or team B? Uh, higher seeds, mostly. 
this stream contains fast flashing images like it was viewers who are susceptible to photosensitive epilepsy and other photosensitivities viewer discretion what was i gonna say advised. also tell me what the audio levels are like too when i'm talking over stuff because i've now got it so the audio ducks when i talk so it means that we can have the commentary kind of high but at the same time if i'm talking it gets pulled down so it's not just too too noisy but I might not be pulling the audio down enough. I might be pulling it down too much. I don't know. Let me know. Today is brothers against brothers. We've got back to back regional rematches in our first day of the playoffs. Be busy today as well, won't it? This whole is this at the same place? Looks like it. Hello everyone. Oh, and Hypox on the desk, like full stop. That's nice. Madrid coming to you live from the Madrid Stream audio is still a bit high, to be honest. And I'm back here on the desk with Mimi. And Even when I'm talking, is it too clashy or is it okay? Because I can, I can, I can fix it. Bunny, there's only one bunny. No, there's three Maybe I could just dip it down like this. Oh, that's a bit, bit much. But there, I think that's about right. But yeah, um, either the team that comes from like the upper bracket, or you know, in this case, because Sentinels came through uh, the Swiss stage without a loss, they were the higher seed. So they get to choose whether they're team A or team B or not. For the Swiss stage, it was literally done based off the order of the boxes being picked up. Both of you will have to cast it with some specific words uh, that we've given you to work into. It's completely random word generate. Are they generator. Spanish? What kind of words um, are they? They're English think, words. Yes, and I think Alex was the one that did it, so you can trust her. I feel like okay. you can. Also, they're English. Okay, okay, well, that's yeah, 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 yeah. a little bit of a relief. Uh, Mimi, you are going first. Okay. And you are I also had to fix my fucking washing machine today, which was hey, annoying. Oh, oh wow. Negotiate extraterrestrial and dough. Have fun with this one. Extraterrestrial? That's free. Okay. All right, let's start the clip. Roll it. All right, where are we? Uh, round 17 here. KC setting up for an A hit. They're going to use this Yoru to dive in to start this one and try and negotiate their way forward off of this ultimate from Martin's spot. Uh, not negotiation, though, is it, Mimi? Negotiate isn't negotiation. This site. Now, into the back lines, Forsaken, just needing the kills like no or something. <laughs> nah, come on. Lines. Now, the flank becomes the biggest factor in this round. Paper X will work their way back on through, and the dog doesn't clear the close corner. Tomasi has already found one and has more for his trouble. I'd say something about like along the lines of what? Tomasi's such, in such an alien position, you might as well call him an extraterrestrial. He's just in this corner. No. Gonna That's what I'd be like going for for a specific style. Yeah, hopefully that um that works pretty well now with the audio. Cause I wasn't happy with having like constantly fucking with the audio levels. I just kind of wanted to like leave it at something that was like pretty good. I even listened to like um <coughs> what is it? I even like listened and downloaded some of Tarek's vods just to see where the audio levels were for his microphone. And then how loud the game was, like, beneath him. But also, I did sort of feel, like, from Tarek's stream that the game was too loud. So I was like, if I'd, like, turn it down a little bit, this is a good level for the audio. What's that? Oh, it's, like, minus 25 decibels. That's where I'm going to, like, aim to have the game audio at. And then it, like, dips another 10 decibels if I'm talking. But Hypox, since you think you can do better, how about we take a look at your round? This is going to be... Once I see my words, It's going to be loud versus EDG here. Oh, this is so free. This is actually... It is kind of free, I think. Transmission. EDG. I'm worried about the round. Is audiences in there for the analysis? No. I mean, I, I think it's just me wanting... Looking out for a little bit of like I like doing production stuff. Like I have a like a degree in like broadcast like engineering stuff. Like working in studios like the ones that make broadcasts like this. And I always like I find audio audio is the single most important thing about any stream. People don't focus on it enough. But like if your audio levels are just out of whack. People will leave and they subconsciously won't realize why they don't like watching the stream. And it could be that somebody's microphone is just too loud, the game audio is too quiet, um, like the compression on the microphone is kind of bad. 
actually fault line coming through that's gonna distribute some of the players on site elsewhere but nice see like coming through. Spike finally coming through. hypo key is really good with his words fitting in words like this is not too surprising for him have i missed anything important no not yet we're just talking about the veto um i think on the face of it like we can actually do it like, again like just again this was something as well i wanted to do so i can have the stream up and whilst doing stuff so people can like how big is it actually on stream big enough i think that like you can still enjoy it especially when it is just a little audio game uh but yeah so for the first series looking very in favor for genji but it is paper x that they're playing up against so this means fuck all none of this means shit all is what i'd say uh the second series i think is a lot harder to call like there's literally some maps that because we haven't seen sentinels play ascent since kickoff we haven't seen loud play bind since kickoff it is impossible impossible to call these two maps because both of them also like a lot of question marks about Loud, whether they go back to the Phoenix, whether they've got better with the Oro, like they did against Genji. Uh, and Bind, we only saw it once for um, Sentinels. The main maps that we expect to see from both these two squads, like first picks. But there's nothing to say the Sentinels don't up their Sunset game, but I think that Loud look probably like the best team on sunset at the moment even considering paper x yeah the the, the short answer is you've not missed anything important other than me talking about some stuff that i did with the audio in the background it also should mean that i don't like peak at all which i don't think i was doing from previous streams but um yeah also i was watching a little bit of cadrel and i noticed the cadrel for the lck games the league of legends league that's in korea he listens to the korean casters which i think is mostly just because he finds them really hype and really funny to listen to but at the same time i kind of understand it from the sense of like me watch party in over an english broadcast is 10 times harder than doing one over the chinese broadcast because i just get like distracted by what the casters or the desk is saying they made top four. I mean, they, lo they looked great regionally, and then they yeah. came out here, they upset loud when they were looking weaker, and then they also beat an EDG in a 2-1 in a series there. For me, I haven't seen quite a ton of Genji yet. It's really hard to place in my mind where they're yes, going to yeah. be in these playoffs. Absolutely great. I remember saying, coming out of the, after the, the, the win over loud, thinking that actually Genji's performance in the follow-up series kind of gave context to loud losing that. Yes. Uh, it's anyone's game, I feel like, at this point. And that brings us to today's MasterCard fan poll. We got two regional rematches what is it? on deck. And we want to know which match you think will go the distance. We're going to go uh, three maps, maybe both matches. Uh, mm. We need three mappers as well. So scan the QR Feels code. Like both. I think mean, both is probably the better option. We'll have the results a little bit later on. Also, make sure to use the hashtags Master Madrid and VCT. A lot do because of hype when something pops off. Well. Keep those tweets coming. Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, it's... Coming. But, uh, Part of me would prefer to listen to this with, like, a Spanish broadcast or something like that. Even just go to the Chinese broadcast and see what they're doing. But, um... <coughs> I think people would just read it as like, I don't want to listen to the casters because I don't think they're very good. Which I don't think is true. Like, I, it's not that at all. It's more... I can on, I can't concentrate too much on what I'm thinking Hello if other people are talking over me. Almost trip over the board that we've got over there. Stage two playoffs edition. You may have just taken a sneak peek. He literally has the fucking Eggman jacket. It's the same color. It's the same color. Where is it? What you got in there? What have we got in there? Well, number one is a regional matchup rematch of the grand finals because the fans love regional rematches of the grand finals. I'll get him in early. So get him Where in is early. he? Get him in early. The, the it's one was no kind of the same one. color. Okay, that's good. Why it hates EMEA. Okay, that's so good. We've got that one out early. All right. So we've got what next, next two. What next he just needs the goggles and he's set. The grand finals. Ah, oh, that's tragic yeah, for them. So Paperx, they make it to the grand finals. We don't know how yet, but they, they need to be well, in the grand finals. I think they'll probably make it through the lower bracket because Gen G are favored, in my opinion, in this match. Oh, okay. yeah. I 
agree. Okay, but there's one team that needs to make a lower bracket run because John Riot really loves it when Sentinels play the most oh. matches possible. So Sen make so it all the way through Sen the lowest? Yeah, Sentinels are going to lose their opening matchup. They've got to go all the way for the lowest into the grand finals. But if, but if Paper X lose the grand finals, that means Sen already win. Yes, yeah, so Sen are going to win the grand finals. Unfortunately for viewership, it needs to happen, which means that wow. Loud ends up winning here, but then they end up... So how so Paper, Paper X, X must go through the top? Yeah, but this is good. This is good. Right. Because, because okay. teams that do well in scrims, they need to go out early. So Genji have been undefeated in scrims. They've got I also like this, uh, oh, this shirt this from Bren. Perfect according to the script. We're right on schedule right now, honestly. So Him on about fucking Vyvanse and taking naps. Said it wasn't relatable. I'm like, wait, way too fucking relatable for me. You can't take a nap on ADHD medication. You wake up and you just feel complete delulu. You just don't know what fucking day it is. Absolutely nothing wrong. I mean, I said they're never right, but they whipped out the John Riot script, Mimi. Will they be right this I time? mean, if you just look at history, you know they're going to be right. Every storyline they said there has come true in the past, it has to come true again. Paper X um, dudes, you know, they're cooking away. again. It just makes sense Did it, to me. Was it accurate? Sense. That's well, not, that's not what how is Sideshow's wife? We'll, we'll wait and see, right? Yeah. I am not going to answer that question. Because I feel no matter what I say, even me saying I'm not going to answer makes it sound like I've got a fucking stashed away somewhere. When we saw this last time, it was not Paper X that came out on top. No, I think that was probably the... I don't want to say the big upset ahead of this, but... My girlfriend is called Beth. Sideshow's wife is also called Beth. The individual perform on this Gen G roster was what carried them through to a pretty comfortable scoreline in the regional finals. Beth yeah, Wilkinson, I assume her name is now. If not, I'm sorry. Um, she is American. And they kind of still are, right? My Beth, who doesn't have my last name. She isn't Beth Central. Yeah. Um, she's from Bristol. But they're not the they same person swinging this season they had really but it's funny to have two the valorant color commentators that are bald have some form of facial hair are both from the north of england both kind of make content both come from overwatch and also both have a panical back i effectively feel like i was fucking replaced by sideshow but you know like in um indiana jones where he picks up the statue and puts some of equal weight in there it's the opposite like i'm the sack of shit and i've been swapped by the the golden monkey statue however we did hear from the Sajos fantastic as a personality as a member of talent i hope this time around we managed to shut texture down beat up caron try our best they really manhandled us last finals and we hope we get it right this time i mean yes as well for the sake of the tournament we do hope they get it right this time i forgot how you said the name i mean identifying the threats here texture and caron it's a nice name somebody from my ex's uni was called that quietly caron but uh the headliner but it's uh, long ago now concern being really for i just can't remember if it's a is, is who is that front line right with all this kind of composition shifting and i don't want to say losing will alex be happy bit, today he'll be slamming his desk ashley said time and time again so hot discussion i think it was a different right pronunciation than on the right track to find the other girl but I mean, it's easier said than done but for more on paper let's remember. send it over to mega fabs who caught up with my freak all the audio levels and stuff good by the way Hey, mind freak. What's going on? Feeling good? Yeah, I'm feeling all right. All right. So, Genji, of course. Did you see all of the there were there were leaks for Clove? I'm not going to share them on the stream, what but I did see that there was some stuff that was like leaked. I don't personally think it's legit. I think actually we. But um. Same, like nothing is different because like right now. Yeah. Like we said before, it's our odd. Performance is not. Uh, but I'm seeing like all of the supplementary content that's coming out on um, Clove now. Like tens reacting to the footage and be like, "Wow, she look, uh, they look amazing." Sorry. Um, yeah. So weird. I actually feel kind of. I feel lucky casting Clove, I suppose, because I don't. But seemingly, they lack all that because there's a lot of like uh, women agents that I cast men playing them. I typically just like pronoun them as they because I don't say the raise she is ulting mid because obviously it's like you know if it's 
what don't know, but Monye, Monye playing. It's like he is pushing mid. Sometimes I just they're pushing mid. So saying they them for pronouns. I don't think it's good to impact me too much. Don't really make a lot of sense Unless I'm talking about what the agent can do specifically and talking about their utility. But I don't know. I, li I like the fact that Clove yeah, is non-binary. I think that... I'm glad that just their uh, Riot and Blizzard in Overwatch with... Is it Voyager? Venture, I think their name is. Like both Overwatch and Valorant releasing non-binary agents pretty much in the same month is just before pride too kind of cool we get things like they're they're like i think they'll make she day to avoid that coming up with something creative but now it's i almost feel like if you want to have less of an issue with it from rights pov you would just have them be they them obviously it's what makes sense for the character but i think you're gonna get a lot of people go if it's she they Really seems like you'll have people be like, well, what's the point in pronouns if she's going to go by non-binary, but also go by she? I'm just gonna, I mean, I'm an OG paper girl. I'm gonna come in and maybe channel a bit of paper. But that's just ignorance from people, I suppose. Every single time people do have those questions. Is this the end Hey, Sophia, Dilly does a VCT before officials. Who you got winning? Um, I have Genji and Loud winning. I'll have to, I'll have to check. I think my pickups are up to date. Entertaining. Here we go. This is my pickups. Oh, fucking money! Where are you going? Sorry, that was divine, not money. And the same people are going to complain anyway. Exactly. True. I feel that this is a little bit. Madrid. Is this his stats on Raze? Because did he play Raze? He didn't play Raze at all at kickoff. This was like a recent Madrid thing. So I feel like that was a bit... Um, that Raze was a little bit of a... What's the word? Red herring, perhaps? Yeah, these are my pick -ups. i got Gingy winning this. Gingy beating loud again. I said to those people, Paper X. Like, me having Paper X going now instantly... Naturally means the Paper X are going to make it to the final. Like, it depends how strong the narrative is, but honestly, I'm not too sure. But yeah, I have um, Jinji winning this first series and then Loud winning the second. If it was a best of five between Sentinels and Loud, I'd had Sentinels winning now. But I think best of three is Loud are going to be very, like, comfortable with it. I pick them to feel like the exact opposite. I guess that's the good thing with uh, this event. Like, any... There's not going to be... But any of the four teams could just bottom out straight away. I don't think it'd be too much of a size. Maybe Sentinels bombing out straight away would be the most surprising. Yeah, that's up there with some of the best accolades you can receive. Um, uh, again, it just came, it, it comes down to the sustainability for me. It is what is the go to? What, what is kind of, uh, you know, the. the I, I guess the new form You're doing good, buddy. Uh, the first two matches I've Sentinels and Paper X, I've Loud running lowers and winning as Sentinels going through uppers, finals with Jinji going zero and two. Yeah, I think that's the, there's definitely a possibility. I think we'll sort of know from the first half of Genji because they can just go in and just look absolutely out of their depth, deer in the headlight shit. Hey, Texture, come over here for a bit. I uh, hope you're feeling good because today is going to Because also, they haven't played officials in like a week now. Well, not quite so a week. A lot of people think like the same four or five days. Uh, what do you think contributes to the team's success? Like they last played uh, Saturday. So, yeah, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Do you like the Genji jacket? Huh? I thought for a second it was like sleeveless, but it's not. It's because the sleeves match up with the jersey perfectly. How are things? They're good. Um, today was a bit of a pain. Uh, the washing machine was blocked, so I had to like 
manually drain it which when you have the drain of a washing machine on the floor is really difficult because it's full of water it's full of wet clothes so it's really difficult to move it forward to like lean it up i put like a, a weight a dumbbell underneath the washing machine to keep it upright and then had to drain it that way but the floor was fucking soaked i think some of the wood has started to like warp already so that's kind of a problem but uh it's fixed it's just the aftermath of it and now the whole fucking flat and my hands and stuff the smell of like laundry detergent so it's just a bit like what the nice smell but it's just so strong genji have their own translators our korean translators just genji fans um usually riot will hire translators um jen is the one that typically does korean stuff uh they have different translators i think for like the press events like the guy that did the translation there i don't know who that is but sometimes you have jen do it uh they have a another lady do it for china sometimes they have people working on the events translate um our like, director producer for ema a couple of years ago they struggled versus secret because she's portuguese super high if there was like a portuguese translation she would sometimes do it so it's like all hands on deck i wouldn't say they're fans uh there might just be people that are there working the event uh all people that are like horizontal i suppose to it because i know that um joker which is uh got his name J uh, is it joker or jake um i think it's jake lynn or lim he's the guy in charge of pacific uh, vct pacific and he's at madrid now because like, i guess he's got you know obviously going to watch his two pacific teams but you know all of the main people from the international leagues will probably be at this event oh that was their assistant coach wait was it glow or is glow their main coach i can't remember not glow solo no solo is a different coach altogether solo is a obviously outside of Julius at any um, international events thrown off now I, I can't think of any if he keeps wise. this up I really think he's in the conversation yeah. for like best rookie performance I mean absolutely so it's HSK last year who was on uh, yeah so I get confused with these guys a lot solo was previously of like various teams like who's on new turn when it's coaching I get it mixed up with glow previously of um DRX would go the distance and you say that you believe the Sentinels versus Loud One will. No, we're close to fucking. No, I'm mixing. Who am I mixing up with? Yeah, that, that yeah. would have been me for sure. Uh, no shock to see. Hey, just was on DFM. People who don't think Genji and Paper X are going to. Who was the um? Oh, yeah, coach exactly. of global esports before probably Genji. I, I feel like probably yeah, but yeah. but still i feel like general has no. been very high on paper x still yeah uh, we eraser that was it and the eraser is now let's find out today's map uh, he's somewhere in china i think i can't remember who for Right, vetoes uh let's see if this works of playoffs at masters madrid um genji you are the higher seed as you came into playoffs 2-0 from swiss so would you like team a or team b yeah, team b team b so paper x you will be team a and we will start okay with your we got that band. right at least icebox icebox your band sunset sunset and i kept drawing this split split side on split mm. attack. attack and map number two lotus lotus side on lotus wait i kept drawing attack. this Next set of bands starting with Paper X, you have Ascent, Bind, and Breeze. Breeze, surely. Band Breeze. Your band, you have Ascent and Bind. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I do think it's a bit of a piss take how long they take. Like, Genji really do go over their vetoes. Ben Bind. Ben Bind. Map number three by default is Ascent. Paper X. So I got it kind of right. Attack. All right. Good luck, t -Bow. I don't know why that was much of a discussion, really. Well, well, well. We've seen these maps already. When so, they yeah, for some reason, that doesn't work with the... Uh, 
come up first, uh, the one that Paper Rex did actually manage to win. Yeah, uh, for Split, honestly, that's a map I don't have too many questions about. Both these teams play very sane comps. They've both been rocking with the double. I don't know why that didn't work. I, I think what well, we should be fixing. I did a Vita go. Um, this was right. This was right. This was wrong. This was split. We were talking about it earlier, Mike. Uh, this was right. This was right. This was wrong. This was bind. This was right. So, Paper X picking split. I think that map to me is the pinnacle of where Paper X is still Why? Where they don't have a comp that really works. I think that weakness in the map pool could really be. Also, looking back at this again. I mean, it was a real head scratch to see the way that they played that comp as well. It wasn't as if, you know, we've got I don't know why I put bind here to be honest. Some of these rounds and be hyper um, I guess let the Astra kind of Paper X have played like a good amount of it. Um, it it's, it, it's maybe maybe some Paper X have something cooked up here. It's like, where do they go again? Do, have they now had the time to re prep? We know, yeah, that's how I had it very, very quickly, but uh, it, it just feels like such a but I think that both of these I will also say I think this would have been better for Genji to be fair so I think if Paper X wanted to win going for split and just trying to do better here is good but it is kind of like this could backfire massively because Paper X lost to EDG on this map they kind of got farmed it's paper rex. And then EDG lost to Gen G. But the thing is that But I guess you've seen Gen G split more recently than they're buying, so you probably have a bit more of a response to it. And that's the thing, that's the hot topic right now. It's like, oh you guys both lost to EDG, right? No, Gen G beat EDG. Because it's the dumpster them, I think. Thank you, Lexi. I just that that Lotus comp is the one that's a bit out the window sure. in my eyes that's a little too far past it to really justify we're also not taking nothing away from carmine core being a fantastic lotus team maybe was it, it was exposed you know exponentially more so than another team i want to pull out from the map feature for a second and just talk about this rematch i mean yeah. first of all <laughs> yeah. yes he's correct but but also for genji what is it that he said would mean if they that it's just paper x the second time for so many of those players it's their first time on an internet i'm gonna run ads but for a quick wait ever they made it to uh just so we can get into game and not get ads whilst it's going on so yeah and i'll go grab a drink this is horse shit but it also doesn't really work the only way that you could get this to work is if it was a tricod spam across all of the different language streams yeah. They're like the Korean broadcast, but then you're not going to have a Korean Twitch broadcast. It's going to be on like Afrika and their new like, He's on attack, attacking soul. Is attacking soul still playing in Valorant at the moment? Because if so, that's fucking great. But I don't know. I haven't seen them play in the uh, China Nationals qualifiers. But where the fuck am I going to see them play? So yeah, be right back. Magic won't be able to work anymore. This is the thing. It comes back to the same old for me. My heart says Paper X. My my head says Gen G. Yeah. Unfortunately, I think as well if some of these individuals on Gen G continue their performance or even you know start improving on the performance we've seen far you know bubbling up with the the tournament now coming into playoffs, a little bit more prep time. That's a real concern for Paper X if they're going to try and pull out some comp changes or really switch up the way they've been playing. If they've gone into that level of detail of the games we've seen already here in Madrid. Yeah, but that's the thing. Uh, we do have also another curse. You know, we got the uh, the nine three curse. We have a few curses in this tournament, but whenever there's a rematch, whenever that happens, it does feel like the team that's lost before is somewhat favor going into it again. Yeah, there certainly is. Yeah. I, I think there's a, there's a pressure to do more, to improve, to look back on that match and learn from it. And Paper X is a lot better than them. The individuals have stepped up. They've gotten closer to finding their identity again throughout this tournament. I, I think that this is a moment for Paper X that if they can Ooh. dispatch Genji here, make it on forward, this is finally the game where it can kind of dispel the doubts that everyone has had around this team, around if they can do it again, on, on if they just have to rely on these hero plays, especially if they can do so dominantly or in two against Gen G, which I think will be really tough against a good opponent. I don't think this is in two hours. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't think there's any world where that happens. But if they can come out here and get a confidence win, not only is that people looking at them better, but for themselves, right? They're still Ooh. rating themselves a six out of 10. Right. Exactly. They're right. still low confidence. I'm back, I'm back. I think they need a win today. No bias. No bias on no, the desk no. here at all.
all. But no, I, I absolutely agree. I, I, I think as well, it's it, it's really telling if, if to hear Paper X talk the way they have. They haven't spent these. Why are we calling these events truly global when it's only Europe, America and Southeast East Asia? Where are where are we missing, region? Especially now that China's like part of the scene. What regions are we missing? The only one I can think of is kind of like Russia, but I think there's a very clear reason as to why. Kind of above anybody's like fucking pay grade. Working on Riot Esports. You name most of the continents? Yeah, exactly. Like, I'm... Africa? Well, to be fair... Um, EMEA... Is... Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Yeah, but there's no teams. That's not Riot's fault, though. Like, there is a league there. There is a way for these teams to make it. But there's no infrastructure yet. I think with, like, the, like Mina especially, because I've worked in Mina too... <laughs> There are teams like Jordan are getting a lot of esports teams, Egypt. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff happening in the Middle East as well, which like we had an Egyptian player on our roster who had to keep having their power cut every day from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Because over summer, it was literally so fucking warm that they needed to turn off the generators so that they could cool down. Otherwise, they'd have no power at all. And then they were saving power because of all of the stuff happening with the war in that general area that I don't want to touch the topic of because we're on an official watch party. Everyone wants to beat us so far. It hasn't worked out for them. And but my point is that in a lot of those places, it's kind of hard for them to just focus on like the building of esports because they're just building their economy outright. Especially now that esports isn't as supported by like venture capitalists and all that shit. Um, yeah, it, it, it's not on the priority list. But, like, India is also a really good example of, like, eventually, like, eventually India will become, like, a really good region in Valorant because it just has the population, the investment, and the interest. Um, especially when PCs get more affordable and can play games consistently on Valorant. And if it isn't, like, Valorant the PC game, it'll be Valorant the fucking mobile game. Like, that'll be massive in India. Last game against Gen was a pet final. It's just that Africa have no servers. Yeah, but they are starting to get them. Like, there's now a proper, like, South African uh, server. I think they're constantly doing new ones in North Africa. Scary. Valakia, it is a return to greatness. I'd love there to be, like, African fucking teams. Like in a, a, an Africa Pacific League, uh, Africa Pacific League, an Africa International League, I think would go hard. Like just the fucking branding, the personalities that you'd have there. I think it'd be fucking great, but it's just not there yet. Does Nigeria have a server or no? I don't know. But I, I know because I've spoken to people at like Riot about like Mina is such a big region for them to focus on. But also you got to deal with like stuff like um, like Saudi Arabia and stuff like that. And they are like involvement with esports like because you want the reason you want to be inclusive to the regions, but you don't want to feel like you're indebted to any region because they're putting a lot of um, investment into it. Yeah, but it's also like you could have a lot of companies and a lot of countries have a lot of money over invest. Well, we're seeing it already, right? There's certain regions and countries of the world that are putting a lot of money into Formula One, into boxing, into football, the World Cup. These fucking things are so hard to get off now. I don't know if this was to avoid plastic overuse but i feel like it's just made it worse we've seen this matchup before and last time genji became the king of pacific but 
I'm scared for Jinji. I think we'll just see. <laughs> you know, as dumb as it sounds, I just think that this is going to be like... We will see straight away what kind of Gen G that we're dealing with. I think Paper X will fluctuate. They'll look really timid on... Like, they've been winning out the majority of pistols recently, haven't they? So I think for Gen G, one of the important things to nail down is probably pistols. Because Paper X got all but one against uh, Heretics and maybe even KC. Um, I think it's just... Meteor, I think, can do so much at keeping the team. I don't want to overfocus on Texture. I don't want to focus on Karen. I think it is just like the consistency of these players more than Meteor needs to be fucking MVP all the time. My Texture needs to be. Um, the other one, I suppose, is. What other team will play a comp for the first time after scrimming it once and then show up and look terrible in the first half? What's something that's disruptive? Fuck, I don't know. Not to the same level, though, man. They, they show up, they make a miracle happen, and then you'll talk them after and like, yeah, we just want I think just anti <laughs> Yeah, I mean, on the veins of Navi Angel, he does currently hold the record for, for the split, most though. in a single tournament, but Forsaken is one away. If he I think there's a lot to do with him. What's he on? He's on Sky. So they're going for the Sky double duelist, Viper. Hydralia. Did Gen G have an Opera? Texture. So, uh, maybe, maybe but Meteor's on the jet. So, a Meteor cannot. Meteor can jet because Meteor was a jet player before they went over to Sentinel. So, yes, the answer is yes. I think it is like Meteor versus something for me. Um, also, Devi. Uh, so, like, win conditions on Paper X's side, Devi. Actually, no, not Devi. Mind free. Because this is like the second or third map that he's ever played a Viper. And there's so much focus on this role in particular because you have no Sentinel. But yeah, it's like mirror comps on either side. Um, I think that this is like a really important thing to get right. And yeah, these two facing off for me. I think Texture's got to be good. Forsaken's like position is solid. Also, just doing as much as you can on the attacking side. But this is um, out of the three maps, also including losing to Paper X at kickoff. Because they beat EDG, they lost to Paper X. Uh, and who else did they lose? They beat or lost. It was either Team Secret. RQ. Oh, fucking Zeta. Fantastic analyst desk. Yes, we're pretty familiar with these teams. Isn't they played hard? ADG, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we heard it from the desk. The only thing harder than beating a team once is beating them twice. Paper X know that from EG over at Champs. Now it's an opportunity for them to give uh, Genji a lesson in that very same thing. Well, that's the thing. I kind of want to touch on what Mike said earlier, where it's like a cool watch. head over heart sort of situation i also think it's mind over mental i mean that's yeah it, it's such a big thing for me too is like my head says this team on most maps but just fuck it. there's something about paper it it is impossible to really gauge it just other than having those individual moments and being completely unashamed if they have a round that just completely goes to shit so many teams would get tilted off that they would like that snowball and go into a down downward spiral in this particular instance i think that paper x are just like eh, whatever like we make so many mistakes all of the time they'll laugh it off and just go again next the only one that'll get upset about it will be alex i want to see paper x against a more stable team like Fnatic. i mean i think what would be a really good series would be this <laughs> uh -huh. I'd be scared of them just as much because I think loud ha loud are the fanatic esque team at this event like they play more out there comps but they're starting to like go into really good stuff on breeze icebox um 
it's not exactly the same. Sunset. The before, they were running Forsaken on a Yoru. Himself and something were diving in, taking so much space and winning almost all of their opening duels. I think it was 13-4, correct me if I'm I mean, you have something playing so badly, and as soon as it was. So, for Paper X... Elimination time, he just went nuts. Like yeah, but also something much like Forsaken, like something is like on different roles. He's having to play a lot more than just the Jet. He's playing the Gecko, Reyna. Gecko whopping is kind of odd, but like here, this should be his most like comfortable position. He's not phased. Oh yeah, for sure. Like, yeah, he did poorly and then showed up where it matters switch into this composition and just look incredible like the double duelist especially the only change they made was omen Split versus ddg he went at 6 and 21 explosive, but i just remember that defensive half of texture and meteor i think they both ended up with 22 kills both were the best player in the server it was like going toe to toe all the way through so it, it won like 13 7 though didn't they it was like six all at the half these are the players we have to watch and then it was just all like EDG's attack, I think, was just no good. But the thing is, it's every time he plays split, he has a life, someone else's life game. It's not a forsaken life game. It is okay for anyone else. Oh no, wait! Against EDG, that's the one that they won. So I was thinking of Genji for some reason. Yeah, forsaken. Yeah, with a one v five, the four K. Yeah. Mimi say, well, okay, if you think it's gonna be two zero, who is the team to two zero it here? And actually, looking at the veto, right? Split last time went to Paper X. Lotus was super close. I mean, if we go based on what we saw in the past, maybe I don't think you can. I don't think you can go based off the past, like because Paper X's Lotus looks completely lost. The best of the best, Pacific number one, and Pacific number two. All right, finally we're in. Throw down as the barriers go up on Split. Pacific versus Pacific. Genji attacking first. They chose to attack on Paper X's map pick. Good nade coming and this is the already, and side where they've only got like a 30 percent win rate they're gonna be stuck in the corner early on this is a great start for so like four rounds ish the boom bot was chasing him and yet caught him and for gen g two versus five barely any damage done at least they've still got the spike but they have to hope for some serious mistakes at this point the paper x go running forward yeah paper x is pistols man it's a b hit but you can see <laughs> I don't know how many that would be in a row. On the defensive side, they're just going to hunker down and wait for Gen G to take a step forward and give them the first pistol round win. Yeah, I, I think the scary prospect as well is that. Also, let me know again, like audio levels and stuff like that. Sort of rougher. If it clashes at all. Yeah, Monia doesn't need to peek that anymore. Especially because you have two people watching the angle to cross. And flawless too. Ooh. Oh, this seems fine. Good. I, I would so I haven't had to change or do anything. Because of the fact that we saw recently on Lotus the changes to the comp. What was the other team that was really insane on pistols? <laughs> From when? So, this is the map that I feel like Paybreaks have to win. The problem is throughout this tournament, I've said that in like 2022. And then they've won the other map yeah. because that's just how they are. They just managed to adapt. They have the individual players. I feel like it'd be like maybe liquid. And, and that is rare. Like it is very difficult to have people. But liquid has also been on the other side by having really bad pistols. It has been Gambit. I don't know if it was Gambit. Trading out their own map picks or losing your pick. Because they weren't at international events. That, yeah. Gen G, they've not got off to a great start. And as the push comes in, okay, actually they're getting close. The pressure's kind of being applied to Monyet. All right, they, yeah, they just bully Monyet off. Nice poison cloud uh, on the push. Devise in a great position. You get, considering how aggressive and in the face that was, only getting two there for Gen G. It, it could have been a lot more. The divide did really good, and then something. Now, that would be... Did your pistols are really bad, meaning the skin? Yeah, I hoped for a little you know bit, like, more. Yes, I do. He, he, well, he's, he just lost his gun. It's now been given to something, and he's bought a judge to replace it. So that, again, if, if you're oh, talking God. about... If you're talking about for sake... Half armor in a couple of these cases, so the outlaw could do a lot. So he needs to be careful. Munchkin and Karen. Which, to be fair, they're not going to be the ones peeking into the operator first. So something goes down, we don't need to focus too much on these two players and their half armor. But him dying this early is a bit of a problem. Some steps might have been heard by Munchkin here, I highly doubt it though. He's just watching for any aggression, sees one, doesn't need to fight, calls it. Monia tries to folk some 
Folk fakes some steps back towards B and then repeaks. And then, yeah, this crossfire is nice. You prefer this to be the other way around, like to have the judge on this corner and bait away from him would be really nice. They are not one of those teams that just aggressively but the judge being here is good because obviously you could just be on this box and face this way viper being in this position is common too because you'd poison cloud this and then wall that feels the paper x on this defense granted we've only seen like a little bit like three rounds they're playing in the most like de facto default style a team can like this is paper x just going to what's meta it looks like Paper X, hear no noise, see nobody here. There's a flash still on the Vi that could be used to clear outside of it, but this late on in the game, you're just going to sit there, hope they right, die. The flash, the execute, they were stacking A, and you got B. So, the Paper X, uh, you know, it's hard to get back into a site with, with these What's the first ones that they're thinking of? This is even like a scary position to be in, right? Because if these guys are on like lower buys, specters and stuff, they can just like sky flash out satchel out just explode out pretty much onto your face so he is pushing up playing a little bit closer it's just a little bit unnecessary perhaps and it's actually karen that goes down and then the rest just clear up the kills you got to expect that like fucking paper x are going to pull some shit like that lots of space so even when that judge gets up close he's only getting the one and it's an immediate drop the rest of the players easy to i do think the paper x like gun buddy in like kill white looks really nice it's a fairly bog standard start to the game pistol win for paper x follow up and then they lose I mean, the one thing that we'll say is that maybe that third round could have seen a bit more damage out of that side. But again, they did gamble on a site. It didn't work out. All the paper breaks bundle. Itself. It's the yeah, best bundle, I think. Deal that damage here as we get the operator out on something right away. And the shot is not oh, money. It's good. good. Traded. And drop the B site under threat. But Genji back off the whole time. I do like Genji cutting noise here. I think cutting noise and then going back B is a good shout. Because you don't have the smoke here. You don't have the paranoia to worry about. Freak still very much close. Yeah, they also flash mid on the defensive side. Like, I don't have the information. I feel like if Genji just tried to dedicate A, I think they've made a mistake. Who have you lost? You've lost texture. They're like satcheling in is hard, but you still have the jet to dash. I'm not a fan of this. Like, Paper X have read this nicely and just like stacking on the right side. Great trade, great position. Mind Freak tries to push to get a little bit more. Yeah, Genji are demolishing here. I wonder if they saw. Would they have seen anything? Would they have seen the operator here? Because there was a fight. I'm pretty sure not. I think the op was here. Uh, a few more but I can't remember. Because like if them the the op hearing the op, like an op is shot is fired or they see them. I if you shot with op, then yeah, going this way I think makes sense. On, right? They know that it's in play yeah. right now. So they're gone spread out. Already sending Munchkin to try and find this player. And like here I think, you know, you put pressure towards A, you take the fights. And then if you get a kill here and you have to freeze, you can then go back to B. But I think just Paper X, like Munchkin pushing this afterwards, it's a little bit, uh, not Munchkin, Mind Freak pushing this after I think the Vi takes the fight here. And, and as I said, when we saw them wishful CG, thinking, they had a really stellar, aggressive and confident defensive side. So I think for them, any sort of grinding out of these early rounds is going to be really important. Yeah, it was divided sure, first. You're still going to have an operator onto something, which alone... And Forsaken still just had a judge. ...cause issues in the round. But as I said, they, they've been methodical. Their utility's been good. They <laughs> That's the most uncoordinated fucking fist bump I've ever seen. Alright, oh, these are the kind of rounds that the Paper X win. <laughs> Like, may even, just be going for an early even though the operator's on the other side. All set up outside. Sky flash for heaven. Good default. Like last, last you got the paranoia. Oh no, you don't have the paranoia still. Fist bump into a high five. Sky dog going in. Great flash from Devi. Divide doesn't get traded here though. He was taking a fight. That's such a good paranoia as well from Munya. Forsaken, but they certainly have now. Good fight. Forsaken's got a gun now. And now something Seekers is being used. It's a good eco, but something has the op. He's just going. Are these steps going to be heard? I don't think they... I don't think they expect it, but I could be wrong. So many tough angles, tight angles to clear with this op in hand. And no idea there's a player up top. He's checking the Oh, what a flick. 
What a trade. Good round for B. I told you, if I could, these are the rounds that Paper X just somehow show up on. He's a good defense setup as well. They're like, the operator's like conditioning Genji to say, hey, I'm over at B. And then you stack like three players on A. Like this flash that came in from Devi was really nice. This position as well that um, the Saken was playing from. Like even though he dies straight away, he, the rest of his team get a kill off of him. I text your meteor and Karen clearly Genji's best players. I would say so. Because one of those players is like the main initiator, which often gets a lot of the heavy lifting. They're not going to get a lot of kills. They're often going to have low ACS. And then also the IGL. You can see their spread. This I think my more... Point, I didn't have Karen in my top 10. I think I had him as like 12. And then Texture for oh, me was they're, they're happy to second. And, for and then Meteor was like eight. Like I said, the other problem here... Genji have a lot of credits. Like, I think these the two are the two top players. I don't think Karen is. IGL is Munchkin. Yeah, I mean like Lakia, the initiator player, and the IGL. Forsaken's been a hero before, but down to just 5 HP, that's... Not really going to work too well for them. And the Seekers oh, the, went towards mid, but also in towards the A site. The, the realization's there eventually. Mind free can win this battle. It could be huge. I, I, I made that mistake before, though, thinking Lucky is agile. Uh, and this is a bit of a loose round. Bringing back two kills. The spike left. just about making it to the site. And it is going to bait it. Mmm, Devi. Teaming up with texture, it leaves this man who did get healed up early. You're just going before Forsaken's even with you, and he is showstopper too. Oh, I didn't know. But actually, Munchkin's just teamed up with his teammate. He's just left it. Doesn't even mind about the pit. I don't know if Forsaken. Nice shot from texture. Matter loses the fight to his counter raise, and the march. Did he think that somebody else was alive here? But he heated that right. Uh, Nate. Divide or pushing this. I don't like that at all. Don't like that in the slightest. No surprise that there's a timeout. To try and gain some semblance of an advantage. And Divide did incredibly well. Uh, in his position, he stayed down. Luckier is vibes. I mean, I, he does the dirty work, I think, like, yeah. I think there's still room for him to improve and play like he did in the early, uh, like, new turn DRX days. But on this team, the good thing is that he doesn't need to do that. Same as, like, Sassy, I think, on Sentinels. Like, he can have huge impact for his role. But he is on an issue, so he doesn't really get the chance to show like a huge amount, I guess. Already, Gen G have found the same number of rounds they did last time they played Paper X here. Yeah, I, I said it. It's looked like a different beast. It, I, I think they're a team that have done really well with the coaching staff. Someone as legendary as Solo, I, I don't think you're ever going to have the. Takes just for him because of his vibes. What is it like? He's super like positive and stuff. And even just giving him a moment to talk here is going to be beneficial for them. Mind freak off to a bit of a slow start as well, but also it, it, it is just oh, that's cool. Those individuals a lot of the time. I, I think we saw because honestly, uh, I feel like with somebody earlier, like, like the 5v4 um, Genji, I, I think luckier like something with how his career's gone, like but pretty much considered you know, at a point the best they, player in Korea, and then. It, it, Never really got the opportunity on DRX, got dropped, <laughs> hasn't really been anywhere close since. I would have felt that he'd be the kind of person that was a bit jilted, right? Because it's been a frustrating um, career for him post-DRX. Alright, a gun for the Omen Execute. There's no pressure here whatsoever, and it is just a Vi over here. Close range surprise factor is probably the best way to find Mind free just running in. It's a nice smoke actually from Monia to allow him to push in. They know that the Viper is the low ground. I, I thought Karen just was on the same team as him for a second. Ace. Fourth kill of the round. Confidence builder if ever I've seen one. Sky flash for CT gets nothing. It's just something on his own. He didn't even use the blade storm. Losing the round. That's expected. It's the amount of players still alive on Gen G. They're farming. Oh, boo. No ace. Triple peak. This is so good. Look at that firing squad down below. Yeah, Broke his wrist after DRX. Against any other team, maybe he'd have a chance, but Gen G Yeah, I mean it's that's what I mean, it's just unlucky. 
they don't even lose another member of the squad. But I think, like, he barely got a look in outside of it afterwards. But also, Karen, having the the focus to expect more heaven, he knows that there's one on the ground. But he's still watching heaven. He's not getting, like, his attention pulled away. Doesn't allow anybody to get too far ahead, and he even takes. We we love the turtle. At it, so why not? This is definitely where, on the side of paper, X, you start to feel that that mental pressure apply. A wrist injury, somebody just come to mind. Again again. Failed I'm team, really surprised that I haven't done any fucking. My, my wrist and stuff clicks anyway. I think I'm double jointed. Oh my god, they're just absolutely annihilating paper X here. No paranoia to play with. Still some flashes on Devi, but Paper X set up with a man disadvantage on a retake. Seconds into the round. Yeah, it's not going to be easy to get back in here. As said, I feel so vindicated saying that Genji is going to win this fucking event. Granted, I might jinx it. Not done yet. But like, how well Genji at this time are playing is unbelievable. They lose one. That was a full buy, and they lost one. That was so quick from Genji. And you could just see the more the confidence build. The you should never have just one guy on site against double dive. Yeah, especially when it's like. A couple of volts, but there was it was Monia, wasn't it? He tries to get out. that's already back online. You gotta have the fanatic esque way of playing. Which the problem is that everybody sort of does it, but like the. Like, if you'll be pushed A, backing up to here, at the same time you get support from here. So you can, like, fight this, as well as your teammates supporting. You kind of need the same here. Like, if you back up to CT, having that support heaven. Like, if Monier TP's up to here, there needs to be a player here. Or a player here. Would you try and learn from Black here or Devi? Both. No reason to say not both. I think Black here being able to support. Both of them are the same sort of thing. Actually, it's a very thankless task and both Lakia and Divide do it well. I'd say probably Lakia because Lakia, if you're an initiated player, you'd focus on... Like, Divide kind of plays everything. Oh, and the peak late as well from the jet. <laughs> Even both the casters were like, oh! Oh, man. Good effort from Monia. I didn't think there was any way that that round was going to be... They're both better than me, that's for sure. But somehow Munyet made it close. The thing is, though, again, you just have to give props to Gen G. Like, the beginning of this round, they were so ready. They had yeah, I think for, like, main initiator, Black is a good one. Ready for that push Kape, honestly, is a good recommendation, too, because Kape is exactly the same. But the deeper players were so ready it's so close. It ends up being quite an easy fight. Yo, not even close, guys! Not even close! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like I said, you know, there was no chance of them losing that clean. I thought something would be the hero, but Mun yet they complimented. Who was it that just spoke then? Because they're English, like they sounded American. With how well their English was, like came across then. Close, but no cigar. Seven to two. Genji. Oh man, they're just annihilating something. How many times has Genji got the fucking first kill here? They just, they're just pushing through. Something. Stingers to play with. Sheriff on Forsaken. Fucking the meteor has landed and it's killed the dinosaurs. Munchkin. I mean, yeah. It's, I think it's because it's kind of like he's saying, like almost like a fucking film quote. They know that there's going to be weaker weaponry, so they're just not giving them any of the close range fights. Powering up from above. We've got three players here ready to collapse onto tower. Yeah, Munya has got two there. There's two on site, but it is planted for heaven. You have a nade still for texture, so that's going to come in. That's forced out. Anything else? Not really. But you got the same main player. Yeah, really? Like, just the fucking post plus Everything about Gen G, the way that they're playing, is phenomenal. This is a team that won 33% of their attacking rounds. They averaged four. They have got eight. It's hard to think about. Even the round that was close time. Only rounds that they lost with a pistol in the round following. It's not what you want to see. 
Why is Meteor using the Snow Globe Phantom? Because he's about to bring the fucking Ice Age against these animals. Now they come to the international stage and they might do well, one better. In Grand Final Sentinels will have to ban Slayer. For us, well, 13 to you. An opportunity here at least to shut down the first half. Alright, finally we have a fight back. Two versus four. Spike is in an awful position. You have got Omen Ultimate, so you don't need to peek this. You could you could just TP to pick up the orb. Oh, the spike. So you had some room to play there. But I think they were just like, it's a two versus four. Let's just fight and see what we get. Save the ultimate for this round because we might have like a an execute plan. We might go for the B execute again where we TP here. Definitely had support. I think he doesn't get that kill if it's not for Munya being able to kill No way they let you take Spike with Omen ultimate. It is in a really bad position to have three people stood on it. I refuse to believe that. If it was here, I'd agree. The Spike was here. Having three out of your four players stood on the spike when it's open to this slash this, I think would have been a risk. I think it's more likely that Paper X would just give up and just be like, let them ult, let them take it, let them plant. We'll just play retake as like a stack. Good to see him showing up. Really swinging. He's currently 12 and 6, 2KD. Especially with how this is going for Paper X, I think there would be a bit more like, all right, let's chill now, let's chill. Hey, Avalanche. Great. They, they don't know whether to continue on that aggression or reset for the later play, and Genji have not made a decision. With a minute five yeah, it's an interesting call now for Genji. They're slowing down the pace because they have two attack ops. The nervous are so big within the smokes that have placed. Most of the time, those smokes are being put down by Monia just to... This is watch from Devai. He's playing from danger now. Oh no, he's actually uh, no. He was in danger and then went up the zip line. Something. Oh, that couldn't have been any worse timed. Also, Meteor's got the fucking gun melee weapon, which is the best melee weapon in the game. Like this, the fucking probe. Yeah, it's good. Good presence. You've shown that you have one up towards A. Oh, one up. They might not expect another up. Now they do. Yeah, not much time to work with. This pressure. You've got good map control, but you haven't got the spike. All right, good two couple of rounds for Paper X towards the end. But I think 8-4 on the attack is really nice. Do I think that Paper X can sort of do the same? Well, they're going to pick up the pistol because it's Paper X of all fucking teams. Has the game been so far? Really good from Genji. It's just the typical stuff. Paper X won the pistol flawlessly. And then it was all Jinji up until you got here. Even still, though, you said Lackia's performing. Let's hear from him now. If they win the pistol, I'm betting on Paper X. Yeah, I mean, this could be a really good... Like, wobble. You have a four-round advantage. You lose the pistol, that's two. Let's say you lose against the bonus at, like, a clutch. You're eight, eight. You probably have a timeout. I think Genji still have two left. How do you sort of get from this position on your defense? Like maybe Forsaken starts going nuclear and then it's like, how do you stop him? Where was Munchkin before? Was he on T1? Was he one of the players that migrated across? Yeah. Who would win in a fight between a Munchkin and an Umpa Lumpa? Like gladiatorial to the death. 
Well, it was third time lucky for Gen G last He did well in T1. Yeah, I mean, T1 last year was great. I don't think this... Like, this T1 is good this year, but I don't think it's as good as last. Like, the way that Gen G have leveled up is great. Were you good at math at school? Yeah, I'd say so. Why have I made, like, an error in my mathematical skills? Now it's a little bit more conventional, but that's never the name of the game with Paper X. In he goes. Something's looking for a fight. Paranoia. Oh, my God. The Is that Team Flash? The Brutal. Oh, it's a one versus three. Three versus one. With Meteor left standing and his back. Whoa! Uh, oh! Can somebody do me a really big favor? Can you just go to like VLR and check for Paper X in their event so far in Madrid? How many pistols has Paper X won? That's question one. Just how many pistols total? And then the second question is how many in a row? Because I think they're on like a 10 win pistol streak. But also, it just almost. We're going to continuously see the switch up of who's going in first. So you're going to have Forsaken sometimes taking space for something. Maybe if he has that operator in hand and something in that round taking space for Forsaken. They are a yeah, that's a good example, I suppose, of like Paper X doing the whole Fnatic thing of you get, you put pressure on site, you back up, they're forced to like chase you, and then these players come into support. You lost the last two pistol against KC. Ah, uh, okay. The outlaw, but this man's making it work with the marshal, the chief for weapon. Okay, an opportunity if they had a spot of the Oh yeah, they did. I completely forgot. To deliver the killing blow. Mind freak fell to a snake bite after being Ooh, if that no scope hit, that would have been a hell of a play. I was going to say that would have been something, but I think that gets confusing in the server. A serious opportunity. Yes, he's far away, but that might. And they're protecting the guns too. Could pick up a weapon. They're on 15. They've won 15 pistols out of how many? Wait, I can do the maths on that. It was a free map against EDG. Free map against Heretic. So nine maps, 10 maps now. 20. 15 out of 20. Still no weapon refound. Now, Karen does have himself a paranoia. He's brought up his full belt of utility. He can somehow isolate one of these jewels. For now, at least, it seems like he's waiting for that site to be taken. Unless I'm wrong. Well, I mean, that's why I said to, like, look it up. And now he can look to try and see if there's any gun to be had. And, well, there you have it. Thank you, Yeti. Yeah, we've got a bulldog to play with. 100 HP. A paranoia. He did these kind of clutches against DRX. Fuck, he even did it against Paper X the last time he played them. This is a good double peek. That's a 3-2-1. Perfectly on cue. They won the round, Tom. Three players down. So out of 40 rounds. They would have wanted to start it. When I add to that, that it's a Marshall headshot. Okay, well, out of 40. Are you, you doing like total? Pushing a smoke close range, using it like a shotgun. That's not going to feel great. And the other player died to a snake bite. So I could still miss that. Right, I see. Engagements uh, that ended up. Well, Rocking the boat a little bit for Paper X. We'll see how they recover. When the thing is as well, the player you really don't want those always to be going over to is Meteor. Three away from the blade storm. Even just a bit of damage in this round, and he'll have something for the next. No cut in the second round. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Players now are fairly low on cash. Like you've got Forsaken and Mind Freak down at 150 credits. So for the next round, they might be in a little bit of trouble. Forsaken, though, he's just gone walkabouts. He's sprinting. And then they got two here. Lackier, yeah, yeah. So it's 13 and then two here. At least for now, it's only going to be the control that's lost for Gen G. All right, this is what I mean, though. This isn't the greatest anti-bonus. Uh, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong team entirely. This is okay. Yeah, I was like, why is he got? Why is he just got a fucking stinger? What happened? But no, I'm looking at the wrong team. I think mean, you did take out the two low guns here. You still have two rifles. Oh, that's not a fight worth taking much, kid. Especially, I, I think Mind Freak. Uh, just peeking out that wide. I think just staying here would have been good. Like, if you could get onto, like, the off angle and hold it. He's going to be half HP entering the site. They don't even know the Munchkin's there. A perfect reposition. This might be a If he had a stinger, that would have made sense. Defies the only man left standing. They just full out wide peek. Talk about can he do any semblance of damage as said they invested some extra credits into this round so the next round's not exactly going to be pretty he's trying to get away steps no nope. silent jump sorry holding on to a gun here. Whoa. Whoa. Exactly nice flash 
I imagine there's going to be pressure placed onto this man. Blast packs. I like the sort of peeking your head up and then flashing just over the top. To just jump down upon him. Who's willing to go for it? Texture is. And Texture just gets him straight away. It wasn't even close. Flawless anti bonus. That's changing it really nicely. It puts a lot of focus onto this round now. This is a brave decision for Genji to be making. Like playing here against like close quarter weapons, like stingers and specters, and you're fighting in close proximity. There's a world where that can go hilariously wrong. But I feel like that was a bit of a read from Genji. To have two people waiting here. I feel that's an anti strap. Poison Cloud missed. Oh! I wonder if Munchkin's playing in a position where he's literally body blocking it. I don't think they know that the Poison Cloud didn't hit, but. Yeah. Two versus four. Texture's not afraid to go fighting this. You have a uh, Omen ultimate. Texture Karen. Didn't look like a hit, Munchkin. I think it did. We can double check it if we get a second. Okay. Why is he doing a full, like, fade in and out? I don't need that. No, I just missed. My bad. And a sheriff light shields on most players. Heavy disadvantage. Just unluckily missed. A stinger diving on the site. Two kills. Can I turn this off? To close the round out. Doesn't get much better. Surely I can. It was even a classic jumping around the. Like it wasn't. It wasn't even doing this beforehand. But it's also now you've talked. It's eight rounds in a row that were lost. An 8 2 scoreline. I also can't do that on there. Two. Two. Like, that, that's Sorry. how close Paperx have managed to bring this. Going onto their favored side, the B site under Siri. Hey, Galv. Half the team still waiting patiently. Karen's reposition is sublime. He's managed to take. Oh, him. how did he get Monia? Brilliant from Karen. Nobody cleared him. There's just too many smokes. I like the fade in. I just want to be in. I like fucking Gen G on their attack. I just want to be in. You don't think the lunatic's going to be up top, but my goodness, what a reposition from him. And clearly one that wasn't expected on the other side. What the fuck was that TP from Karen? Economy discussion around this squad. They've been sitting pretty. They've been looking fantastic. They were able to obviously rebuy in this round because of the damage done early on. I could have gone both ways. I mean, we saw Monye do a similar play by jumping up on new box. Called by Paper X, as they can Wait, let's. Feel if it's a timeout now, very let's go back and watch our TP again. You know, so they've been Going on to their difference is now just two. Uh, that, that's how close. <laughs> it's the fact that he even goes for this. Paranoia. You just don't expect it. It's so ballsy, but it's such a good outplay. Because if you see him here and he paranoias, there's no way that you would think that he would go for that TP. And, oh, just as I pressed refresh, fuck me. I'd get cleared in rank. Yeah, they're just thinking on a whole different plane of existence, though. Pulls out a crazy play and is able to win the round for them. Yeah, I mean, it's a common thing to do, right? Said, Playing an omen here. Uh, sometimes Miska watches these streams. Um, I think uh, Miska's an omen player. If you are here, Miska, just do what fucking Karen's doing. I might even message him in case he isn't here, but like, just watch fucking Karen on defense. That's how you play, like, the omen, because he plays um, omen on A. I say, play him on B, it's so much like better, but it's like, I don't really know how, but it is just because you are kind of like sticking out like a sore thumb and you need somebody like Texture to just be instantly there to help. If you get pressured at all on B, you need that instant side swipe. 
them to fight their way back through with utility, but it's this man's position that might get them something. He's found another with the He's got a gun and just oh just on the angle. He might have been able to slip past. The texture's in a good spot. Oh uh, I think most of the seekers got broken too. Munchkin is giving away the position. Yeah, he just needs to keep backing up, backing up, backing up, because these players are going to push. Just keep giving it up, keep giving it up, keep walking back, keep being Homer Simpson in the garden, in the hedge. Just keep going back. And there's no way, he is going to clear it, but there's no way that he expects to. Great read, fucking great call in from Munchkin. I'm so happy to see, Jin like, this is what I wish China was playing like. I just want to, like, to be at EDG, like, you see this? This could be you! Plans to fight him at any stage. Wants to just play the higher percentage play, and that's why Genji have been able to confer a lot of these advantages. And for pay breaks, I recommend opening up a new tab to rewind rather than rewinding immediately. One of the sort of glimmers of hope. What, just to avoid he has to get some bullshit? Otherwise, it's just now a push. It's like the first time I properly used Firefox, but um. I guess I am in the market for a new browser. So I'm like, oh, I'll give Firefox a try. I like the pop-out player. This is Paperx's map pick, yeah. I said that they should have gone bind, but even then, that feels like that could backfire massively. Like the majority of maps... Genji had a better team out. And Genji banned out Sunset too, which is a great veto pick. Wait, by all accounts, Genji should be winning this series. The veto is really good for them. The map pool is really good for them because of the veto. He cancelled it. Nice shots. Force up. Yeah, unless uh, Paper X have come up with some cool stuff on Lotus, it could be a very, very defining... 2-0 for Genji. Up against four ultimates, only the blade storm that's gone. Like keep in mind, Genji of a full buy with seekers, with a viper's pit, with a showstopper. From the shadows. And so, so long. <laughs> defensive side to close out this game. If you remove those ultimates, it looks like they'll close out the game because they're winning almost yeah. all. 12-7 when yeah when Paperx get both pistols and that's and they need to show up. more than half the runs they get. Five in a row needed. Challenge already underway. Just sprayed for the smoke. Maybe overstood your welcome there a little bit, Munchkin. But this is a good adjustment. Like, Lackey just dropped into the low ground. I think this will be cleared. Yeah, it is. They might have heard it or just know that somebody's going to try and do that as a response. Karen, this smoke just to get out. It's kind of like the alpha year play. He stays, almost gets a kill onto Forsaken. Now, there is a flank. And no one really watching it, although it seems like texture... Doubting player behind. Also a 1v1 take. Yeah, Meteor saving here is probably a good shout. Or exit frags. More damage that you can do to Paper X are better. You can only get the one. You have to win your defensive first half on split or you're in a world of trouble. To be fair, they're both running double duelist. Which, playing the double duelist on defense is hard. The attack should be the better side. Usually, winning a buy round, but winning a stacked buy round in terms of old economy, and they've still got some left to play with. But I think 8 4 when you win the pistol and it's still an 8 4 half to the opponent isn't good enough. Genji, you're finally seeing some some negative economic state. They're all oh, they just peek out, just ego swing. He's got his teammate Meteor with him. And they're absolutely extinguishing the flame of I don't think it's attack sides. Like, attack side did as much. I think comps is the defining factor on split, more so than any other map. Because split, you can run so many different, like, comps and, like, variations. Which I think is what makes it one of the best maps in the game. From, like, a pro-watching VCT perspective, I think split is the best map. Because I think it's, like, there's a lot of verticality, so you could do a lot of, like, cool movement. 
a lot of close quarters ranges so like good angels good clutches space they lost because this viper's pit isn't just stopping a push it's stopping all of paper x's plans their plan was to blitz that's such a crazy read the four stack where paper x wants to exec ready and waiting yeah i mean i think in most cases you're going to execute towards a with double duelist anyway and it's cancelled back and the jet stashed in so these are isolated really good read from gen g here oh and they've both gone into the smoke they don't know where the last player is like he might be able to get this yeah they just don't expect him to come from vents which is kind of odd for 15 seconds that he has to paranoia get the spike and get out yeah no time genji had a real fucking deal apparently i'd favor sunset right now for pro play yeah i like i like sunset a lot i think that for split it's more defined by the duelists and the controllers because you can run like astra you can run both uh you can run with viper without i think for sunset it's the initiators because every initiator is played on that map i think the one and a the two agents for initiators on sunset that are starting to fall out of favor though a fade and breach because i think this is just getting replaced by um kale and fades mostly like gecko i think but i think silver is also good because of how good Cypher's got. So that the crowd is dead because there's no EMEA team. Yeah, it's 5 p.m. on a Thursday. Like the grand finals and stuff are all sold out. Like, even when we went to Copenhagen and watched, like, Fnatic and FPX. It was it was dead then. Because it was just a... It was a... Week... Day... Game. Red Bull gives you wings. <laughs> But yeah, good stuff. I feel pretty happy with... Can I turn this off at all? Am I going to like... I don't know if there'll be a way. I, I doubt it. What reason might I have to look at? Um, yeah, it's Solotus. Again, this is heavily in favor for Gen.G. What side? Can somebody do the maps uh, command? I want to see what side Gen G start on. For Lotus. Because we can have a look at this myself. Uh, also. Do this at the same time. Uh, Gen G are on defense first. Great. I'm not really going to look at what Paper X are running comp wise. Just because. Uh, <laughs> like they might change it up. Can G win the Vita? I don't think there's really a way that Paper X could win it, other than like them going bind. I think they would have had more of a chance there, but not by much. There's just too many maps, like Icebox, Breeze to avoid them playing. Their Split and Lotus aren't up to speed. Their bind looks like you're adjusting. Ascent. I haven't really seen too much of it. It's only Sunset that they look genuinely good on. Which I think is a bit of a problem. Because this is an event where there's quite a lot of teams that are either good at Sunset or will permaban it. Right. Let's go Junji. Let's go Lakia first. 
Where is this baby boy playing on the fade? Must be on a. It, it's is it like OG fanatic? Yeah. I guess the better question is: Is Meteor ever playing on A? A little bit. What about the alarm bot? Alarm bot mostly on B main. Sometimes they have it for stairs. Sometimes they have it in the B main choke. Turret here, turret across, turret here. So they do sometimes have A main setups, but I think much like old Fnatic. Mostly on A. Maybe you do like what Narrate does and you play here so you can throw the fade taunt this way. But um seems that like Lucky's gonna be always around A. Meteors towards C. Yeah, a Lambot there. Nanoswarms, does it say? Oh sorry, Nanoswarms here. B site, one in secret, one across the site. Karen. Like hey guys, actually more C Link. Instead of like going for the aggression, texture going for the aggression there. Munchkin playing on B, and the wall. Usually, when the wall doesn't show up, it's just you know, um, this wall. Or like either version. Like this one that goes across here, they have a little bit of a gap. Or the one that goes like across there. We would have won EDG or Team Heretics KC. All three teams crumbled. I'd say probably the EMEA teams. I'm really surprised the EDG beat Paper X. I think they could have bottomed out just as much as uh, FPX did. So the kind of comps are fairly usual. What about if they're on an eco and the other opponent's on a full buy? Let's get rid of the wall. Lakia, Karen, and Texture on A. We main turret. So it's like, even on their, like, ecos, they're playing very, like, the same default, basically. Anti eco? Haven't had any. It's not a great sign. Surely they did. I'm pretty sure they were destroying Paper X last time. Also, getting rid of that is probably a good shout. Right, I went to quickly go over that. I'm going to go for a wee now and run some ads. And we're back in it for map two. So, yeah, don't go anywhere. It should be a good one. They had the pop offs, but they also had excellent fundamentals. You compare the info these two teams were getting on their defense with the Sky Uta. Genji was always on point with the rotation, setting up reclears, swinging together, whereas Paper X looked like a team who was, you know, playing for the individuality. Yeah, and the, and the telling thing for me is Genji willing to step into that zone with Paper X, where, you know, you have the flood free techs or, you know, stacking up bodies and looking very aggressive engagements. Genji, we're getting down and dirty with them. I'm kind of coming out on top. Yeah, you guys are hyped up. The rookie, a Karen, coming to this a lot. And here he is in the Verizon high speed moment round 17. I mean, you gotta check uh, your corners, man. This, you gotta check it. This is exactly the sort of scenario that I'm talking about, right? Making plays like this, getting ahead of this execute. You lose to Paper X when you allow them to execute onto you, come up, play very aggressive. And Karen, I mean, Tom nailed this as well in the cast. There's a sort of rank play that catches Paper X off guard because they don't expect people to match their, their level of unorthodox. I think that's exactly the point, right? They're used to teams playing back, cowering in fear. Playing for flood retex against a squad like this instead. Gen G can give it to them. They're so willing to get proactive to fight into these executes, and their sight anchors were constantly staying alive, <laughs> doing stuff like that, and actually buying time for the team to rotate oh. and help everyone. All right, out. we're back. You contrast that to Paper X. Their players were trying to do the same thing, and they were getting. I think it doing things in that order would be better. Like over the break, um, we can look at augment or any other stuff that we want to look up. And then when I want to go for a win, run ads. You know, when there's the desk on. I mean, he was looking pretty deadly at the start of this map here. Again, super aggressive, almost like in the pistol round, he forgot he was put onto the omen. Still on the race for some reason, jumping in. Uh, but there's just a number of situations where you're looking here, and I was talking about, you know, some of the aggressive players. That's a good question. They felt very disjointed. Up, up, which can 18 10 and I think that great igl in like, great this is a team great stuff for him lucky having the most first kills though is kind of funny well jump meteor 
those moments against uh, something one and five Genji knows him so damn well just a really tough old time and not letting it get past them I mean, we've been again these are wrong a I... from this man but I am expecting a solution let's hear what <laughs> Alex had to say ahead of map two Hey guys, I'm here right now with Coach Alex of PRX. So we did see that, you know, although the team struggled on that map... Uh, I'd like to saw something stop. ...you got some of that momentum back. And we do know that the team is a very momentum-heavy base. Yeah, so he did quite a lot of damage, though. Like maybe from you, but it's just to too many openings. You know, All-time is tournament on split. Uh, I mean, usually momentum comes when you win some rounds, you know, so... Stats split wait if it goes well you know then we can roast no more oh you can't do it and you have to do it like for this way um madrid split. they look they just sound boomed oh right this is the fucking looking at this comp what is this mike the fourth there we go they, they've played on this map yeah, we, yeah. We've, we've gone back again we've got the cypher back in and yet back on the raise so uh, i guess maybe then the indicator we did see that he's still like Lewis towards the top this does fix the issue of having the worst jet on here but let's be honest we're not seeing a lot of jet regardless in this comp. You're lacking stall util and on the anyway sorry side, you're way more readable they've gone back to this Forsaken is going to have to be very specific with how yeah, they've reverted back to this to catch people out. But I mean, I just don't like this. I don't think it provides enough. But I guess you're attacking first, so like having the Sentinel, having the Cypher might not matter too much. Really, really going to be scrutinizing him. Oh, well, paper rags. If they don't win, yeah, here, they like I said before, I think something's had to like adjust to playing differently. And Tom Biz, how are you guys feeling about this one? Well, Yinsu, I'm feeling excited because at worst, we should have a good game on our hands. Last time around, Genji won both pistols here on this map, and it was still a very close game with them barely edging it Like, you have less individual moments out of him, but I don't think he's really been set up to do that. Even when he's hopping, it's a little bit more, like, yeah, used to on chamber. More like area control than going for the crazy plays. I think, yeah, I agree that we need to see more out of him. But I don't feel like it's just him individually that's the problem with that. I don't know what Lucky is thinking there. Or more maybe the people didn't communicate that he wasn't with them anymore. But either case, you got the people going this way, you go that way. Bit rough. Munchkin taking a little bit of damage. He's hit by the Sky Dog too, so it's an easy kill from Monyet. Is Genji going to get that first pistol? Three versus three. It's looking good. It's looking good. He's going to knife them, and he gets knife back. Oh man, that's it. It's done. That's, that's the series. I feel like you can't come back from that. Am I actually thinking about the Gecko swap? Yeah, I, I think the Sky Gecko could be an interesting comp. I think Gecko on split has a lot going for it. For sake, it just peeks into two. To be fair, Paper X would usually win those. Especially when it's like Forsaken on site where he gets one here and then goes and peeks two here. I definitely feel like I would have seen him get one, like get that fight against Karen and actually be in a 1v1 and win it. Like, we've not seen Gen G panic against Paper X at all. We haven't seen them throw, like, a 3v1 against Paper X. Like, they've been so clinical that we're not getting to see that, like, Paper X magic. Because Gen G are just not allowing it to happen. <laughs> yeah, the way that Gen G play Valorant is, like, the way that I prefer to watch it. Where... Nice shots. There's a little bit of, like, skill expression on the agents that they're playing. Like, you've got... you got an omen on this map. It's not too crazy about that, but it is Karen playing the omen, and he's allowed to go for, like, aggressive TP plays. He's allowed to go for more creative things. Um, like, Texture and Meteor have freedom to be aggressive as and when they want to. 
find something there. Like just because you play the bland, boring stuff doesn't mean that you need to play it in a bland and boring way. Case in point, Cam and Cor on this map too. He's just proving my point, isn't he? You won't expect this off rip if you're Gen G, and a little bit of danger for texture. That crosshair is lined up on his head, and it's done some damage. Nade paranoia. Even the horn getting onto Monia, but they still can't quite clear him. I like this one way, actually. Just stops anybody from peeking out this side or being in a good position to take it against this fight where Karen is. I feel like you do kind of give away that Karen is playing right over here. And people can't quite, like, string that stuff together. Secrets being open. I don't know if it was open all along. Oh, um, something just times it to a T. Might have seen him for a pixel. I do want to see how Jinji sort of play this for the rest, though. How much A main aggression they're going to try and do on defense. Because having to do that against a team like Paper X could be a bit of a challenge. Nice shot from Munchkin. Now these guys have to respect it a bit more. This isn't just to do a bit of damage. Never mind. The time is fairly low that the likelihood of getting this is kind of gone. And he thinks that their backside. But that's still, like, Munchkin has turned it from, like, a, all right, that's a fine bonus to a really good one. Yeah, Alex is definitely mad with how Mind Freak went around this side. I think he went in that way to sort of, like, try a bit of a crossfire. Or to be in a better position that he can, like, get out and get away from the spike. But I think he's better off, like, doubling up with his teammate in Tree. Hey, Aker. Uh, did you have a good time? I just sort of, I didn't realize that you also went to check out Clove. Have we actually got a controller that's worthy of being hyped for? Challenge for this attacking side. Weakness is already seen. Chance for Gen G to shut down the way back through for Paper X. I'd like to think that Clove would be what Chamber is for Sentinels. Well, he's not a duelist, but people are still really want to fucking play him. Oh, the paranoia hitting just as the showstopper does. He has no fucking clue where he is. Paper X is just like my team. I, I, I'd also say the same. Like, that's a fucking... That shit tilts me to no end. Oh, it's an Acre raid. Sorry, I thought you were just stopping by, but thank you very much for the host. We're watching Genji absolutely annihilate Paper X. And I was trying to bait out an answer from Acre about the new agent. I didn't realize he was priming me. Here's me fucking asking him, like, Clove, look, is, she, is she like Chamber? Meanwhile, all of you are watching me like, he, he doesn't know. Yeah, thank you for the host. We are watching BCT today. We got this upper semi-final, which Genji won their up on. I don't know if Ake has been watching these games. I don't know what you're talking about, Ryan. Hmm. To be fair, there was a picture of Meg that you were from Meg that you were tagged in, but I didn't see a dog in that picture, so I genuinely don't know. I don't know who Glove is. Is it a 22nd? No, I can't talk about it. In this round, Paper X have basically nothing to play with. Four sheriffs. Well, also they've, they've already taken but yeah, uh, Genji 1-0 up. They absolutely annihilated Pepper X on Pepper X's map pick of Split. Um, Genji, I have winning this event, which is a little bit controversial when you've got Sentinels and Loud still in it too. But um, yeah, I think that Genji have been playing really well. They've got a young, complete unknown player. They picked up this guy, Karen. He was playing in ranked in Korea, and they picked him up from that. And now here he is in the top four teams in the world at Masters. Like he's going for it. Karen is, yeah, crazy. And also, you've come for some Cypher on Lotus. 
which personally I'm not that much of a fan of in like coordinated play, but I've seen like Acres play where he has the um, cyber cages on top of the door and playing around it. But I don't think that's the kind of stuff that we're going to be see seeing here necessarily. But yeah, my, my hope is that people are incentivized to play. People are more incentivized to play Clove and like controller related stuff because they have like aggressive bits of their utility. I'm going to go get some food. We'll be back in a bit. No worries. Cheers, Acre. Hope you had a good stream. Man, you must have, like, come back only, like, a day or two ago. Like, being in America for, what, like, less than a week, it really screws up your, like, body clock. Paper X players are also, like, not hitting this best of three. Mind Freak. All of them hit very hard against the EMEA teams. Maybe it's just the EMEA teams are easier to hit. Uh, one sec. To talking about regional play, especially against a team you've already played on that map, you're testing so much, so many deeper things, and I think for them, bombing out like this in the uppers, it wouldn't speak well for what's to be seen because loud sentinels. There yeah. be any Sorry, I had to though. move some out my tortoises enclosure because they were struggling to get over it. Here we go, though. Again, early paranoia. The paranoia, paranoia used on defense. We said about like Genji and how they were approaching like a main aggression. This time, they're not fighting for it. They're just paranoiaing from here and then hoping that the Odin's going to hit them. But Lackey's going to get more than he bargained for here, playing in tree. But he has that support from Texture. Nobody from Paper X was, like, expecting this. They just fully focused on this player here. But nice trades either side. Divide getting two there is huge. And they even get one on the Lurk. So it's a two versus two. Munchkin is a Viper's Pit. Mind Freak is his ult too. I don't, I don't, I, I don't know why Paper X didn't play that together. This is just a Paper X way in Madrid going lowers. I think they've maybe hit a, a block in the road. Like, I don't, I don't like the Mind Free Ghost for that. Like, especially when, like, we have the information, we have all of the stuff to work with here. Yeah, this is not surprising that Alex is just gone. Even, like, his interview, like, pre, like between maps, he just sounded like it was GG. But, like, we could see that there was a player here and a player here. And Paper X, you know, if two of them go and fight this guy, it would have been so much better. But they just isolate themselves from each other and offer up two 1v1s for Texture. Who, by the way, is... An argument for potential tournament PvP, yeah, like MVP. We're not afraid to go for that, which is nice. You know, there's one backside. Karen gets taken out. Lakia. Meteor's just peeking out of the smoke. Oh my god. Uh, that's a little bit unlucky for Paper X. I don't really like the way that Gen G played that. This is fair enough. You just maybe don't expect three people to peek through a snake bite and fight you. But I think trying to go in here and close the gap against potential eco weapons is way too scary. But I guess both teams just show in a lack of respect to each other, which is good. Not to be rude, but I think they need a roster renew. I think what Paper X need is just like a roll lock. They need to work out, like put Monia on controller the whole time. 
already puts down Munya. They're getting absolutely pulled apart. Like, it's not even entertaining anymore. I just feel bad for Paper X. This is a really good start with four ultimates to fall back on, three of which will help you out if you're in a pinch. For Paper X, where do they go? Where do they take it? Maybe they can get a neural theft if they can even drop a body. No, I just gotta absolutely clear him out. Prowl, I think, connected onto Forsaken here. I assume so. Couldn't see with all of the walls and the cages. Oh, luckier. Oh, they're the kind of mistakes the Paper X could just absolutely rout people with. Uh, Devi. Devi and Mind Freak are looking way flustered. Forsaken plays this really well. I don't, like, Lakia just hopes to get him. Nice shot. The EMEA teams have watched this game and asked themselves what they did wrong. They're just, it's experience, right? What roles would you put Paper X on? No, no, I would say that's very bad. <laughs> if you're a um, yeah, and the reality is for Paper X, you're looking at uh, the last time they played this map against this squad again. You know, I was looking back at that series, which worked perfectly for me today. It's trying to think, I almost feel like you could do some fucking China related stuff, like have Forsaken on like Ray's most maps. And then something on basically on Jet slash Sentinel when it's a raise instead. Then I think you have Monye on controller. Divai on initiate a flex. And then it'd be Mind Freak on just like. I don't know. I guess it'd be like. Like Viper flex, I guess. But like, I think this role would suit something Something can play raised though, I'm pretty sure too. Alright, the operator is just with the operator as Mind Freak now is a nade below. Hounding. Good aggression this time from Paper X, but it's still just when they tried to up the ante, Gen G can match them. Yeah, Forsaken sort of just been filling that like sentinel not quite viper, but like harbor on bind and stuff. Like, I don't know. Like, on a map where you want um, a Sova, who plays the Sova for this team, do you reckon? You could also put Mind Freak, maybe, on... This is assuming that they would want to. Like, you could put... I think you put, like, Devi on, like, Sky. Sova. I think both are fine, though. All five ultimates, by the way. Genji don't need them. That, that's actually the point we're in. They don't need the ults. They're just winning the rounds anyway. Normally you'd be thinking of this yeah, I don't I don't know what they can do. <laughs> like, roll-wise, it's so weird. All right. All right, so lockdown gets broken. Round 10. All of the space taken. Door was opened by texture. He has a showstopper, so he's just trying to group with the rest of his team. 
Monia gets seized. He could have collided them because something is right behind him on an angle that you just don't expect him to be, even with the Night Force showing his position. It's still awkward. This is looking like a triple peak between people. Really good fight against Paper X. Or four Paper X even. But the spike still hasn't been planted. I'm putting the headset down. They've got decent amount of HP and they've lost Mind Freak. Okay, but it doesn't stop Mind Freak just is dying a lot unnecessarily. But he's so low. I beg of you. Not one at a time. Not up against Munchkin right now. He's 11 and 4. He's been winning round after round, but a reposition by Oh, the double peak is nice. They're both so low though. Like, I, I don't know where Mind Freak's head is at this game, and I don't want to single him out in particular, but he is just... Yeah, that's what I mean. That they lose the rounds, they use the odds. That's the weird thing about it. And, and again, a lot of this just came down to... Shows, does this show how strong Jing is? Not really. I think if they had Jing, it would have been the same problem. This is not a good meta for them to be fucking around with, essentially. Completely for Alex if they managed to lose that. I think you could make this comp work if you had old Sky, but you have new Sky. I think just get rid of the desk, man. Punch and bag with an LED screen in it. Whose face is on it? <laughs> it depends on the game. Make it interchangeable. Well, Forsaken's picked off Karen. That's a fantastic kill. Look how open the A side is. Yeah, I don't think Jing fixes this. No further challenge. There's no utility. There's no reaction from Gen G. So Forsaken realizes it's wide open and he gets caught. By that timing was near but yeah, Chen Chi are just fantastically drilled. Like here, something goes for a fight, just can't get much. Has to back out. I do think that this is a... Like, I don't like playing drop here because you have nobody to play off of you. Now you're just... Yeah, the Seize has got you as well. They had to TP out. I guess that's a good thing about playing the Omen is that you could double TP to get into tree. Yeah, he just gets farmed for another one. Good post plant, no. Oh, this is a late fight. Oh, I love this position that Monia is in. Oh, he missed. He's going to be able to peek it. Yeah, that's nice. Really nice from Devai. Clutch King. Devai, Devai. Well, it's the same thing as what we saw before, Tom, right? They're getting this little resurgence towards the end of the half. This time, Paper... It's still, like, very rough. They were both on the previous map, putting them up four rounds. Yeah, this spot in, like, post is just incredibly nice. They're doing it in the clutches as well. As close as they may come, it's still giving them that little bit of a heartbeat to continue on forward. Now, this round, the last of the half... Watching Jinji right now is like watching Loud, honestly. I... Or potentially I like watching Genji more, I think. Man, but that's just me not really giving too much to of a toss about loud. I, I think what makes Genji a lot of fun to watch as well, because you've seen them get better too. It was We've like... So low and now it's this isn't a team that's just come out as perfect. Yes. Like, they lost to Paper X the first time that they played them. Went through play-ins farmed all of that experience up there and then sort of came out on top just uh, with every map and every series that they play they've been looking better and better the dash is good really nice entry from something paranoia is going to connect onto him now and just like he can't quite win that duel alone a lot of individual one versus ones happening this round. The paper X are going to be happy to take. Three v two. I like the meteor is here. The snake bite as well going into drop. A meteor, just, I guess, was holding to see if anybody was going to push. Ooh, peeking finer angle is kind of scary. The smoke kind of makes it harder too. And they're both on phantoms, so these are great guns for this. Ooh, almost lined up. Yeah, really good turnaround for Paper X. Yeah, good effort, I think, with Genji in a, like, two versus three. 
uh, and a streak of rounds. That's just disgusting. <laughs> I was thinking for Forsaken's point of view, I was like, I didn't even really see anything. That's how good texture has been. But but this is like more of an attacking, leaning map now. So, 8-4 on your defense. But Paper X chose to attack. And he only got four rounds. It's a bit rough. The pistol is 100% needed, I think, if they want to keep in this one. And they kind of like one step ahead, especially on Lotus. We kind of like, mm, they did exactly what we were watching them. Like in the vaults, like they play the same. Like they are not scared, even though these like, I think for some of them, it's like their first time in Masters. I think this Gen G is better than the old DRX. I think it's really hard to tell just because we just haven't seen enough of them, I guess. Genji gets, I mean, the good thing is probably we might be able to get some revenge, you know? I mean, we lost to them in the oh. Pacific kickoff, and yeah, I mean, I think texture is giving us a lot of problems. Like, just. All the RX were ahead of their time. I think they definitely, like, lacked in some areas too, though. Like, I think they were too rigid and too structured, which I don't think we have that problem with Genji. Like, they, you have, like, Mako and stuff that can have, like, clutch moments on, like, Omen and Controller, sure. But I don't think we've ever had, like... It, it feels like DRX have never had, like, a texture. I don't think they've ever really had a Meteor. Like, I think it's the front and back of the team that they missed. Like, you've got Stax as an IGL. you got RB with being flexible. Like, the middle core of the team was good. But, like, Buzz was never all that, I don't think. Um, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a challenge, I guess. Right, Genji, one and two on pistols. See if we get a third from Paper X. Just as the dog, like, is about to get broken. On the other side is Timings of bits of utility like that is what makes Paper X so strong. Now everybody's been pulled over towards A. Not quite checking where Meteor is, but thankfully Forsaken's there at least to trade it. I think if DRX have given Foxy Nine a good chance last year, they could have had it. Yeah, I mean, they... DRX fucked up a lot, I think. A shot right to Texture's Temple. That's going to put us in a 4v2 with Paper X. Definitely Something. This pistol now for sake and fallen. A little bit of like finding isolated fights here one at a time. Something's done well. But there was a couple of occasions where like if he loses that fight here, you got Forsaken going down here. A lot of stuff around it where you can see how Genji like pull themselves back into it, but. Like, if Paper X can find this confidence, you're in a great position. Just good shots. Like, this fight could go hilariously wrong for something. And somehow, Genji have pulled back a 2 versus 4. Which, yeah, not good. Pistol win then was essential for Paper X. Now the follow up looks easy. Very little to play with for Gen G. And even if they drop something, he's the player that's rocking with the pistol. So the margin for errors already been reached here. Any further kills. Feels like Gen G's flow is way more consistent than they have players who can spike and go beyond that. Paper X on day are insane, but the floor when they're not on, it feels a lot lower. Yeah, I think it's also like expectations. Because you have more of a solidified, like, role set up for Paper X, everybody knows what they should be doing. Like, I don't think we've ever seen Texture, like, over-peak with the Operator, looking as if he's like, I need to make a play here. That's what I need to do. I need to be the AD carry to bring back my team into this series on map. He just plays it like the team needs him to. If he needs to be aggressive and make space, he'll do that. But more often than not, it's more like playing in a system. 
like we i don't think we've seen a team play like a korean team at least play with this level of structure it still gives players like this freedom to go and make plays within it it is the perfect like in between of a structured play style and a fluid play style consistent he normally is with that op i would definitely put stock in him finding at least the two orbs one kill and a death we'll see what he can get up to because i think the other teams that are like that are like loud and fanatic and even evil geniuses this is not really the gun you want to have here but somehow he gets out of there a two rounds difference now they also had an initial setup for players outside same sort of thing applies here that if paper x on their bonus with an operator can actually beat gen g's full buy here we could see Genji start to panic a little bit, but you look at how they dealt that second half of split, looked unfazed, shouldn't really be that phased here. But let's see how something does here. Like, does he feel like he needs to do more? He's backed up a little bit. He's still holding an angle, still a support from stairs and on site now. He gets isolated in the fight one at a time. Divide trades him. These guys opening the door and going back and Divide's going to try and cut them off to see if people actually leave. The has been really good this map. 19 and 9. Like, Jesus Lord. And a good double peek here. Yeah, the Vi playing off of that there was really nice. Paybreaks want to do hero play so much. Yeah, because honestly, that's been the difference from them for a lot of it. You know? Paybreaks have got this far because of individual moments. Not because of, like, a, a set protocol or a default or their retakes. Like, they know where their be uh, bread is buttered, essentially. But yeah, we'll see how this goes. They know he's going to be here. They know there's a high chance he'll be here. And they're actually going to really put the pressure on early. It's got to be a limit to it, surely. I think we've seen Paybrex hit that limit multiple occasions. Two versus three now. You got some buy ups. Lucky is actually push up all of this way. Sorry, Meteor. I got baited by the UI. I was like, Lucky plays uh, Sentinel? Plays the Killjoy? Good reads. And this should be broken too. Tells you nothing. These guys just baiting and holding to see if there's any aggression further this way because of the flank that's happening behind. Really good call from Paper X. These moments, the calling and like fundamental understandings of Paper X are really nice. Like there's a bit more structure. There's a bit more respect. And Meteor's found himself an op. And this is like a jet player. I think they know that both of them are coming from Waterfall. But it's a really good post plan for them to be playing CT. Oh, that's a hell of a fucking flick. Holy shit. Top 10 player. I told you. Meteor is fucking unbelievable. Holy shit. This headshot is crazy. Like, I feel DRX in that instance, Buzz wouldn't go for that play. Or he would and he'd fuck it up. You know? But it works this time. Certainly caught his opponents off guard with Genji 9 to 7. I can feel it when Meteor got the up that they won the round. Have weaknesses. An operator in the hand of something. You just don't expect the one gun. Like Meteor picking that up in a two versus three and holding the flank. But he hasn't got the dash anymore. Show, show stopper. It's going for on to B. Central, where's he going? He's going towards secret. If he throws it down now. He holds it. Mm, that's a fucking moment. That's a Valorant moment. Made this one problematic. 
spike already planted at least. So they're gonna have to respect it. Two versus three again. Player disadvantage for Gen G is it gonna matter? Now you've got two players that don't make the hero plays in this hero play moment. That's the only snake bite that they have. It's more time. Something dashing through. And they just go for it at the same time. For some reason, I thought it was just the Vi is the last player there. Or oh, Forsaken, sorry. Why not shoot it always? Because I guess he didn't want to give away that he was in that position. He would have killed him if he threw it there. Chose wrong. Chips on the wrong color. Well, nine to eight. And for Paper Rex, yeah, nice try at least. Really got their hands dug into those reins. The economy is low. We've seen Gen they have a win low by rounds. Bit of a buy up, but it's a buy next. But the main thing is something has got basically an all right now. That's a Yasin dash. But it works out for him. No punish. And the reposition gets him another kill. Swing out. Coming in. Good response. Closing the round in just a second. Blink and you miss it as we're nine to nine. Yeah. It gets loud munchkin made some nasty hero plays as well on the on icebox hitting some six shots. Yeah, I mean I think it's more like what was basically we were a scoreline where this looked over. What was it? Eight one? And then they went yep. three rounds in a row. I meant more like clutches and stuff. My god. You think it you don't really think it at the time because an eight four half is still great, but it seemed like Gen G just let the foot off the gas. A few big I thought that he got, got Genji to 12. Not quite. I mean, it's still even on score. The rest has just been all paper X again. Nice shot. Paranoia is marvelous. Oh, and Divide. 2 HP. They know that he's like 148 HP. Uh, how is Divide still alive? He's still, he's still there. He's gonna repeak it. It's the Paper X way. You think that he's just got off sight? Like he's just jumping with the classics. He's like, I just need to do one little bit of damage. Good fight from Meteor. Important fight to win. Oh, something had the right idea that somebody was gonna peek him from the other side of the Viper's pit. Now he's resetting and going up towards CT. Oh, Munchkin. Oh, he doesn't have any bullets. He has to get the Paper Ace Classic out. Oh, my God. This is how Meteor and Alpha switching great duelist players with cracked aim to Sentinels could work so well. Yeah, I think I put. I think for most teams, you put your best aimer on your Sentinel. Because you have the least utility to like actively work with. Especially on attack. Did I hear Vukashu? A great example of it, yeah. They've got a lot set up in front of them, Tom. There's a, there is a showstopper for Munyet. Other than that, everybody is just on the rifles. Credits are low. Gen G could be on the home stretch very, very soon and forsaken in that corner. Clear needs value. They've not seen him. He's good for one and damage. Good trade. Easter. Because you could also put forsaken on like Sentinel full time. He did play a bit of bit of kill train stuff way back when. So many players are low. He's definitely filled that role before. <laughs> Stay by and kills him. Out. That was the low HP player that goes down. I, I don't think they're gonna mind that whatsoever to put it back into a three versus three. Something about to try and go through this. Is a smokes and an updraft. <laughs> Here he goes. He's in. Oh, awkward fight. Karen just seemingly like they look like they line up for him. Not worth. No. This could be the beginning of the end. It feels that way, Tom. Two round cap. Wow, that's a good transfer. I mean, it's slowed down, so it looks not that amazing, but it's still pretty fucking good. This is the easiest 2 0 prediction. I would have said it was a free mapper, but that was assuming that Paper X would pick Bind. And that would, just for Gen G, be hard to gauge. And something's 
just dashed right into it. There seems to be nothing that Paper X can do to surprise this Gen G roster in the last few rounds. And with 12 looking like it's on the board, Tom, yeah. these players, they have to be feeling... It's just about as good as they switched over could go. Yeah. The lower Agreed. Them. And there they'll face elimination against the Sentinels or allowed. Nice shot. Easier fight for them than a team that they know. That's why I think putting something onto Sentinel would work. Again, Paper X losing because of Vito, like Champs Grand Final. To be fair, in this instance, I just don't think that P Paper X have the map pool. I don't, like, even if they had picked Bind, I still don't think it's going to be an easy, like, choice for them. They have too many maps that they don't want to play. Overhaul of this roster with risks taken. Players brought back who had been in a Masters right at the beginning of Valorant. A player they got from Ranked. Especially because something seems like a player that wants to like hold down a position. Well, so, yeah, I think that that role would suit him really well. And then on maps where you don't need a Sentinel, like Bind, you could put him on the rain. It doesn't seem to matter as much. Also, Russian. So, another Russian God Gamer Sentinel. Up in Sentinel. Yeah, you could do that too. Reminds me of like Yampy when he was on like the up and kill joy. Because it's also like on maps where you'd play the raise, you're not going to up as much. Like bind, it's hard to up on bind. Uh, on split, you could still play the jet as well as a raise, so that's fine. You could just double kill it still. Sunset, I still like, the gecko up seems to be fine. I think. Oh, and he forces out onto texture. Wait, they knew the texture was there because he was fighting beforehand. Meteor's always consistently able to get one. Oh, wow. They've even cleared Mind Freak. Oh, and the TP. Oh, I mean, more lucky than anything. I uh, don't like that something went for that peak before anybody else was ready. I mean, it's just what Paper X are doing. They're just peeking one at a time. Time is getting way too low. Oh. Just lucky it just unfazed. What a statement from Genji. That even at time, it would have been incredibly low. You can't say GG easy. That's not fair. Not even close. I, I feel like you're... You're sounding like a very tilted Paper X fan. Elf. You're sounding very... Very unhappy. Alright, so so far that means I'm um, one on one on Preds. I do think not a Monyet problem though. Yeah, I don't I don't think you could ever say that it was. I think it would have been kind of tricky. It was always gonna be a real uphill climb. And like I said, it was less on paper X playing well and more like would Gen G panic or not? Would they be really flustered? Would they be really uncomfortable with the pressure of the game playing the occasion more than the server itself but like, honestly genji looked better than they ever have honestly 
a chance to make a historical run here in Madrid for their... They do need to establish their roles more. Yeah, just... I, I think a weekly stage of playing is going to benefit Paperx a hell of a lot. Chinese team of EDG in there as well. Making a run. Paperx making a run. This Gen G squad, though, it feels different. They're just being able to chip away at maps and know what to focus on instead of, like... They just ran out of stuff partway through the event. But them just coming up with random ass comps, we're still good enough to just go in and, you know, just come in and dominate against like EMA teams with less experience. It definitely feels like they have a long road ahead of them. Hopefully, no bumps in that road. And the reality is, you know, texture for me. <laughs> Where's the 2023 Gen G that I shit on after they go zero and six in the final week? Yeah, I mean, we actually have a Korean contender. It would be so funny. Like the one proper like international event that we have without DRX is the one. Event that we actually see a Korean team win. Do you think that a team like KC or Team Heretics would have put more of a fight here against Gen G? Yeah, I think so. Like, I think that they would have, like, especially on maps like Split in Lotus, a bit more of like a mid rounding, slower style, know how to deal with aggression. That's such a huge compliment to hear from. And I think that's the great thing about this team. You look at them on the stage, you look at texture, just having a great time. Everybody like standing up, like bows and arrows. Yeah, Jinji played a lot like a very experienced EMEA America's team there. Luckily, now we get to hear from Munchkin as he's going to be down on the stage. Who's doing the interview? Sounds like Dryad. This is um this is Jen. I do believe if T1 getting better, then Shanghai is going to be Genji in T1. It's free slots. What makes Genji so much better than the DRX? Um, it's hard to say because it's early days, but I think that they have a star duel list, which I don't think that DRX or Vision Strike is ever really had um i think meteor on the sentinel just offers so much for them too like on lurks on finding opportunities uh karen kind of plays like mako so that's sort of 50 50. i think it is just that i think it's just that the rx is backbone it's core of a team with like rb and stacks and mako it was just way too good but they lacked some of the, like, MVP. They didn't have a Dirk-esque player. They didn't have a Less. They didn't have a Demon 1. Like, they just missed a star Duelist player that is on the Duelist full-time. Doesn't change depending on the agent. You've just got Texture playing the Rays and the Jet whenever necessary. I'd love to see Zayta come on after kickoff. I feel like the tournament came way too early for them. Yeah, I think that a lot of maps like their Lotus and stuff look really good, really well drilled. The young players that they have <coughs> look really promising. It is just like on Icebox and stuff, you could just tell that they hadn't had enough time in the oven to explore the map and... Uh, get it to work. That's my like general approach. Uh, 
I would say there's a little bit of pressure on us, but not a lot. And it's not going to be a lie. There is a little bit of pressure, but that's not enough pressure to crack us uh, when we're up on the stage or, uh, you know, affect how we perform. And I just feel like we're that type of team that gets stronger and stronger. Holy shit. <laughs> Fucking. Um, as we play and as we make those runs. Uh, hold on. I'm sharing my very glad that we're able to pull this Discord. Can I hide this in the side? Sorry, Dryad, I'm interrupting you. Looking at some stuff from the Discord, uh, that Jim Tookie's been saying. So these are sort of the chain, like AG staying the same, BLG staying the same, EDG and FX. So JDG got rid of Jakuro and brought in White Chen, who was the IGL of Attacking Soul. Nova brought in Swirl instead of Panghang, but I think that that's uh, and a guess. But we know that Swirl's been signed. Tyler who brought in Flex in from Trace and Aaron. Like, this is a fucking good team. I like this a lot more than before. Tech have got AC in. I don't know who AC is, but they got rid of Chu, which I think is a little bit unfair. I think Chu is quite good. He just did a really bad series towards the end. Like, lock him quiet, Abo. Like, I don't know anything about AC. Tyler with HM from my HM from my played in the last stage. He was in kickoff. Um, yeah, so Tyloo traded Flexin for Lau. And Lau's now playing with Trace. Wolves is the same. And DRG have brought in Xion instead of Dingwei. I did put in Xion on like main initiator again the bold uh, the bolds are the new players that they bring like swell is a new player they drop panghang yh chen is a new player they dropped jikuro or ben jikuro these two were a swap Aaron was from nip i think Aaron on this team would make it work so much better and ace ac is the only player i have no idea about And then, yeah, they were talking about, fans were talking about, like, SLK and Anders. And then, okay, look at this. This is SLK. But, like, holy shit, I would, I would love for Anders to go to China. Because he would make, he would be the LS of China in Valorant, wouldn't he? It'd just be such a weird thing. Yeah. Also, yeah, some of the other teams like CXY, like this ZYG team looks really promising. The savior of the region, yeah. I would 100% sign up for that. Imagine EDG with a fanatic system. Yeah, I mean, you'd you'd be what? You just look straight at the fucking camera, then. Um. Yeah, I mean, EDG with a more structured system would be playing like Gen G is right now. Uh, let me just check my messages. Oh, hello. I was just messaging you. Oh. Oh, I didn't even notice. I didn't even hear you come in. Didn't BLG have an e uh, economic issue? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah I don't know what to have for tea. I think all of the China orgs at the moment are sort of struggling money-wise a bit. I don't know. What are the options on the poll? 
Yeah, but what are the options on the pole? Can't run a pole without any options. I don't know. You can have the hot dogs in there. Yeah, RNG. Um, they were the ones that had a lot of like money issues and probably one of the main reasons why they didn't get franchising. Also, it just sounds like they weren't a very good org. Like, didn't pay managers and stuff like that. We cheer Wolverhampton. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited to see what like Wolves can do with more time. Um, I think all of the teams are looking a lot more promising. I think, all, like, uh, Trace, I feel like maybe Flexin was done a little bit dirty. But also, if there was a player to change on this roster, it would have been him. They brought, like, they brought in CXY, though, as a sixth man. And then they just sign Lau. And it's the same for how successful RNG have been in LOL. Yeah. But, I mean, you could say the same about EG. They won champs. They've got a horrendous reputation now, too. So, yeah, it's kind of, like, tricky, I guess, for them to find that balance. Uh, we can do the pop out of this. Where is it? Here we are. And in series two, how do I feel about this VO is the question. Said Dolls banning out Icebox, I think they kind of have to. Loud banning Lotus, kind of have to. Said Dolls picking Split. Yeah, confident in that. Loud picking Sunset. It's either Sunset or Breeze. And I think with how well it's been going for them, I think they go Sunset. Because I guess their worry is like maybe Sentinels like can anti stratus and also Sentinels like to play it. So maybe the pick breeze because they know Sentinels is less likely to want to play it. But we also haven't seen Sentinels play breeze in a few weeks. So it could be looking a lot more competitive and Sentinels haven't had to show that much this event so far. So taking them to maps that they have been playing and losing, probably a good show. Um, and then whatever, since it's also banned, whichever of these. And then bind and bind or ascent. Yeah, I think this is a good veto. I guess it's more of a question of Sentinels go for team A or team B, but they have been going team A and been comfortable with it. Here I thought EDG posted the code for us these players was kind of bad. Yeah, I mean, it's it's weird. There's definitely like a culture thing with like EDG. Just a lot of the answers that they gave on what went wrong were just very like political and just, you know, we didn't play up to our standards. And it's like, well, yeah, no shit. But like, what have you identified as the reasons as to what went wrong? You just tell that they're not being, they're not giving anything away. But I'm not entirely sure how you approach this. This should be a, a really good second series. Welcome back everybody to day six of Masters Madrid. I'm your host Yingsu and I'm back on the nice nice cosplay. and Hypog. We've had our first regional rematch already, and let's get into the second. It is America. Look at a wingman. It's <laughs> just bright shining. That you're very, very excited about. Yeah, this one's going to be fantastic. It went all five maps in the finals in America. Sentinels pulled it off there against Loud, but Loud has really leveled up at this event thus far. It should be a great match again. Yeah, I think so. A couple of stumblings along the way. Uh, it is a concern for me that Loud have already kind of shown some bad tape here, obviously, with the perma ban even being shown. Did I miss something about EDG? I was this about the EDG League? No. Oh, EDG League. Sorry. I was talking about EDG from um, the Wayboy interviews after Madrid. Yeah, a lot of tape, obviously, to go through. Um, an opportunity there for Loud. They've already shown that. You know, yeah, Sentinels have had to show very little. And pulled out a curveball and, and changed something up. So there is actually a real opportunity with the break coming into the playoffs. That That's pretty bad, though. Um, I'm going to quickly see Beth. I'll run some ads. The rest of you with 
uh, Twitch Turbo or a sub or Adbot can just watch the rest of the desk, but I'll be a couple of minutes. I won't be long. And it was the same in America. They played more rounds than the rest of the teams in America's playoffs combined. But finally, this team has had a bit of a break at the playoffs. Yeah, and I mean, this this break is going to be very, very important for them as well. And speaking of that, here is what Coach Kaplan had to say right after they secured playoffs. I cannot wait to see you. Uh, it, it, it means a lot. Uh, it's been really hard to have such a quick turnaround. Uh, we showed everything we had pretty much in kickoff and it's uh, we didn't have a lot of turnaround time to deal with that strategically, right? Especially in scrims or jet lag, there's just so many challenges. So having some time to breathe and be better equipped to handle opponents studying us is a huge relief and a confidence boost for the games ahead. I mean, this is the thing. They've already achieved everything so far without that a little bit of a break. So how much stronger do you think Sentinels are about to be? I think they're going to be really strong. We've already seen, even with the low prep time, how good this team is at counter striding Against both Heretics and KC, I think the squad came in with really good game plans to fight forward, to punish their opponent's tendencies. I think they're really good when they have even more time. And we saw that in America's. When they went into playoffs, they further leveled up. This is a squad that when they really take that effort to study their opponents and come prepared to them. Match. Yeah, and I think indivi the individual performance is here. Sassy, a little bit of a concern, but I think if there are going to be any change to the composition, the way that uh, particularly Zek and Tens are both performing individually, there's room there to put them on anything potentially and outside that. John QT as well, individually standing up so far here in Madrid. Yeah, let's talk about Tekken here because we we, we say, <laughs> yeah, Tens and Zek and Tekken. Okay. We've been kind of debating, you know, rookies here and there, but there is no debate when it comes to these two. Maybe they are just the best right now in this tournament. Yeah, both these guys are looking like top five players in the tournament and they're on the same team and the thing is they're always playing together these guys out of the server they're good friends the, their teammates call them the kids of the team they're always hanging out and they're setting each other up together in the server as well they're a very aggressive duo you'll see them take risks but the difference between them and maybe a team like paper x or the player like forsaken per se is it it's always together and it's always being really well integrated into john qt's system when they go for these risks when they go for these early fights the rest of the team is calling around that they hear Zek and say, hey, I want to make this play. Tens knows how to set him up, and the rest of the team adapts around that really, really well. Yeah, and I think as well, just to double down on that, the support system here is really the difference. To have everybody here delivering individually, Zek and Tens being the ones to lead the charge, I, I, I it's terrifying to have to go up against them in this sort of form. I'm going to make Tekken a, a thing. But let's move on Don't to the other that. side uh, for Lau because they had a slow start. Uh, but Hybok, as you know, even when they've had a slow start in the past, they always go really, really deep and they, they manage to take it all the way sometimes. Yeah, Lau have always just got this playoffs form that they seem to, it's almost like the trump card, the Uno reverse that comes out in the series that they need to deliver it. And I think, I don't necessarily think they've shown that so far, but coming out and, and bouncing back the way they did uh, with the follow-up series, we talked about obviously it being a bit of a concern, the loss to Gen G, but outside that, you still look back and you think, well, what series has Les been playing in? In particular, Les having another MVP worthy performance. Uh, and you look back at the series, you think, how's he doing that? Yeah, and I, I honestly think that this team has leveled up yet again to a form where they can be a contender for a title. I, I think they worked out some of the issues they showed in the kickoff event, where they're, they're playing these like Phoenix comps, it's not really working out. Here, I think they really narrowed down their map. Well, they showed maybe some weaknesses on Breeze, but on the maps that they're committed to, their Sunset, for example, they've looked excellent. The strategy is really coordinated. Players have also leveled up. Quick in their last game looked so much better than the rest of the season thus far. This is allowed that all always wakes up the deeper they get into tournaments. It, it seems like they find the ability to hit the peak at just the right time in like every event. Yeah, I think as well that they, they've already shown here that they are willing to kind of detract away from the commitment to the Phoenix and Breach. Uh, they're obviously busting out the Euro in particular, but QCK's individual performance across all the duelists has been pretty incredible. I keep saying that nobody plays this much Phoenix and comes out looking like, yeah. you know, a great duelist or a great individual player, but somehow he's doing it. Yeah, you guys mentioned Les already, who's also having a, a great tournament. I believe he is standing by with Mika Fabs. Take a look at this. Not just quite yet. What about uh, this? What about this? this? I want to look at this because this guy's yeah. stats have been ridiculous this tournament, but they are oh. every time. Les is look the consistent member of this squad. With Osmus out of the team, he's the number one guy you have to look towards. He's always playing Viper, 
but he's competing with the star duelists in every role. The guy's ridiculous. And if Loud is going to win a trophy here in Madrid, it'll be because he's... So what is this? They're probably going to fame mode fans. Like, which I think that, that side of it, I guess, is what I want to see in like Valorant. Is them just be like, yeah, we've been doing really badly in this element. So you've been on the team for forever. You know how it's like when the team gets that synergy in order to win championships. I'm curious how uh, this level of synergy has been from like the beginnings of this roster all the way up here to Masters Madrid. What's that journey? Is this like a funny pack? Kind of a trendy. Yeah, it must be. Put your wallet in there. I mean, especially walking around Madrid and stuff. I haven't seen the LPL lately, but hopefully they're doing fine. Yeah, I was also quite surprised to see that the LPL and the LCK like clashed quite a lot. Look at that! I don't like how that looks. That's better than nothing, I guess. Better than the little funny pack I have. But um, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if um, VCT China and Pacific clash a lot. Because China, I think, is going to be Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Did I miss the veto? I don't think I did. Otherwise, I'd be talking about the maps more specifically, right? Vito hasn't happened yet, so they're doing the walkouts before the vetoes, which I guess is kind of good because the vetoes are pre-recorded anyway. So just get the players out, show the veto, show the edge select, ish bash bosh. Who have people got for this one then? Because I think a lot of favourites, bookies wise, but I don't think that I don't think they're favourites, but I still have them winning. Is that me just being like a sort of? Pick me. Love Pete Roger. Okay, here we go. Uh, what's the veto? It's a breeze, Lotus. So I'm immediately wrong. So Icebox surely for loud here. Yeah. So interesting. So wrong on this. Wrong on uh, right with this. Right with that. Wrong with that. Sentinels burning out a scent. Um, wrong on that. Right on that. Sunset is a third map. I think Sentinels has fucked this. Like, I have Sentinels winning this one. But, like, Sentinels have to have a good game plan here for Icebox. If they don't, they've fucked it. They've given... Loud, two great maps. I'd say Loud are heavily favoured here. Maybe not heavily. Sentinels here. Loud, heavily favoured here. This favoured towards Loud. Yeah, this is a really nice feature for Loud. I hope Sentinels have something cooking on Icebox. It's also like, do they just flounder on Split? Alright, let's um look at somewhere else real quick. Because we actually do have like the stats on the bottom. So Sentinels on Split. Really good defensive sides. Uh, and they're running Race Sky, Viper, Omen, Cypher. So the Cypher Viper comp is pretty good. And Sassy on Sky just makes... It looks better on New Sky than Old Sky, which is kind of weird. So this is a good map for Sentinels. I imagine they're attacking first. Because Loud's defensive side is a little bit better. And they are running um, Sky Breach Viper. So yeah, same compositions by looks. I do think it is a little bit concerned in Sassy's performance in areas, but I mean, you could argue again, it's it's another one of those familiar opponents. The Sentinels attacking, so yeah. Sentinels, what they just need is like a decent half. Like four to, four plus rounds on attack, and I think they're good. Because their defense is strong, Loud's attack isn't. So here, I think... 
right now. And eight rounds minimum. If he can get the openers for Sentinel, give John Keith those John, John Keith so it's like that. Those options in the mid round. I just lost like a sad face on this side. This tournament is gonna be really tough for Loud to recover. Yeah, well, I've just been told that Bren and Sideshow are in fact contractually obligated to cast every single Sentinels game. So uh, here they are. Over to you guys. Tens hates Icebox with a passion, so I think they'll lose that map. <laughs> Surely you'd want it, if you hate Icebox, you'd get so fucking good at it, the teams are scared to pick it against you. So you don't have to play as much. And they're kind of taking over that mantle now. You know, me and you, Josh, we were talking about it just before we got into the game. But, you know, you think of that, that Optic Core versus Loud matchup. Yeah. That was, you know, El Clasico. And now maybe the passing of the torch over to this one. We've seen Sentinels versus Loud now many, many times so far in 2024. And it's always pushed both of these teams to great heights. It's possible that we'll see it even later on in the playoffs too. We've yet to really discover which of these teams are going to be able to battle out against each other and, and make it deep. Put sharp on the bottom of my desk. It was stabbing in the leg. Looks scary. You do not want to be uh, uh, in the lower bracket if they end up down there at some point. Uh, obviously, Paper X no pushovers either. So winner plays up against Gen G. Cool regional matchup that you have. Loser games. plays up. Against now, Paper X. One regional title in America's to fight over. That was loud that ended up taking it away. This year with kickoff, stage one, stage two, we're gonna have three potential opportunities for regional fights like this. Good, like we've already seen some pretty good like Omen plays. So like seeing tens maybe do some stuff here would be good. But loud and Sen, they're not just fighting here for the rivalry, but they both believe, and I think a lot of players do too, that they've got a serious chance of being able to win the thing. I think every team does that's at this event as well. I think Sentinels win cons. Uh, one is tense. Let's just see that continue. Two. Two is Zekin. Actually. Every team here is looking to do one a second. Now that we've got a little bit of time to just to dig into the map veto, it's going to be electric. Um, two is just getting four plus attack. Three is lurks because there's no cipher on loud side, it gives John Cutie, especially, a lot of space to find like gaps and walk up places. And there's no like sentinel utility to make um, like stun plays off of. Loud going to be fighting B main. No one way, just a smoke and a boom bot. Are they going to try and like have two push here, two push here? This is a great position though for Zelsus to be in. He's just backing out further. He's pinged it. They've pinged it back. A little bit of damage done. It looks like just Sky Dog used already. Oh, they didn't use one flash, they only had one flash. They have one flash, one dog, and a frenzies. Salax by sorry, wrong sky. This side, full utility sky flash, heal, and dog. Dog being used on the other side. Second gets the first kill, and tens is traded. So there's no smoke on attack now, other than the Viper Wall. Smokes if they decide to go over and commit to B. This is a good call though. Like if they could just walk out B, especially if John gets all of this information. Getting one is enough. That's enough of a window for these guys to go, but you gotta go now. Getting past these angles and get past this choke is good. The nade is fantastic to just buy a bit of space. And now Sentinels are gonna try and push CT. It's a free versus free, so they don't need to overextend, but it's like they're playing ready to snake bite, fight this. Good utility from Zelsis. And the snake bite actually kills him in the end. That's a fantastic pistol for Sen. I love watching Sen set up these kind of little plays. Actually, good utility from the Viper there. Actually, I kind of like less versus Zelsis. Like, it's the two Vipers. Interesting matchup. And they've always got a different idea. That's the great part about this Sen team that took the offseason so seriously. These players now have one just a depth of micro plays that they can add in. This one, a snake bite off contact. <laughs> just more bundles. <laughs> We're already seeing examples of both of these teams just trying to be proactive. Yeah, I call in that mid push earlier, fighting through. I hope Zelsis gets like a bigger cut of the fucking skins because he's just selling them out so much. John QT's only got a classic. Classic has got a ghost, so he's pushed up on A. 
I think what you're seeing at least yeah, at the beginning of this I think John QT doing this is like the big win con. That's a big kill. Like, it's a fantastic kill. It's not a gun upgrade, but you know that this is kind of where the main part of the default is going. Paranoia is really nice from Tens. He's going to follow it up. Kalanzine, really nice flash, actually, but not quite the position that was going to get full contact. Tens was aware of it. But I do like the flash just on the lower part of this. That's cute. Two E's. Only kill that he got was John QT, so he only has a ghost. Goes up against the fight. But still, good couple of kills. You've only lost a ghost, which I think is just going to get given back to John QT for this bonus. And that's going to incentivize Sen to play a little slower, to try to punish the jump peaks and see if they can get damage or kills that way. To try to punish yeah, I think I think Sentinels have lost a veto, but I might have said the same for them against KC, and they shut me up. Like, I, if, I think Sentinels have a plan here. I don't think it's expected, but I, I believe in Kaplan supremacy. Sunset's kind of good for Sen. It has been amazing for Loud. It's definitely doable. It's definitely winnable. Salak just spraying down two. Flash, so he knows that people have peeked out. Knows that there's one plant pot. Knows that there's two. Unfortunately, he has to reload. Nice snake bite as well, actually, behind the screens from Zelsis. Why did they first ban Breeze? Because if they didn't and they banned Icebox, Loud would have probably have taken him to Breeze. Did they? Uh, no, they... What did they ban? Oh, was that the first ban? Yes, it was. It was... I'll show the veto in a second. Sassy. Viper's pit on round three, though, is pretty fucking crazy. And I love that they played around it. Nice from tens. He's 20 HP. Lesser's got half. They're both low. He, did he try to stick it? There was plenty of time. I guess the plant is really awkward, but the plant is really nice for a bonus. Because there's so many, like, close angles that you can fight it from. I think he expected that Tens would go around this way. Then he'd go for the open angle, so him sticking it. Yeah, that's not too much of a bad idea. If that was a full buy, I think it would be less likely, but they're on eco. Fundy's on show for Sen. Winning that bonus round is amazing. And I do think that that's such a key. Most players would. If you were on a full buy, I think you would. But if you're on a bulldog, you've heard that they're low. You're low. I think this was more... Should be more of an expectation from less than it might have appeared. But it's a, the decision makes sense, is what I mean. Not really a misplay. Just unfortunate. Or if anything, really smart from tens in the end. Said that we know that Loud are an extremely good team. Stun going across, right? They're just going to full contact and then stun across. <laughs> yeah, you see everybody. <laughs> hey, space librarian. Because they're all looking at me in mid. Lucky to not pay with it with his life. Nade waiting. Loud. Could be some danger if they find a few initial. I need to get some like Mandarin greetings. Like good morning, good evening. Follows through with a snake bite exchanging. The handshake dropping down. Sadak was alone there. There wasn't really much to do with in terms of the follow-up. They have to face it wide though with the aftershock being played for. So much damage. Done to these loud Just say ni hao. Yeah, but I'd like to learn what like good morning, good afternoon is. Survive into it. Zekin picking up threes. One away now. The big critical ultimate on attack side. That Nihau just seems like very generalist, I guess. Yeah, and this is the problem once you start snowballing forwards. Loud are going to be one away from having a broken economy again. Is it Shishi? Sorry, I can turn this up now as well. Sorry. Game audio was a little bit quiet. When they get into a plant scenario, Zekin's holding Nade to try to deny someone who might try to stop the plant. Is the audio for game better now? With that Nade. As soon as the retake starts happening, GG. They know how loud it just sounds like I'm saying GG. <laughs> counter to stop them. 
Alright, full buy again for loud. Uh, you have sequers, you have ominal. That's kind of it. Second is really close to having a showstopper, really close to having a seekers. Good ult rotation from Sentinels here. Yeah, Shishi means like thanks. Disincentivize what Loud have been going for. This is Sentinels Viper Orb in mid there. You're gonna take a lot of damage if you want to try and fight mid. If you're Loud, and that's broadly speaking what Loud have been doing on this. Three in mid. Only four rounds in though. CC like that. Dog right on cue there. Guys like Shishi. Gonna be broken for a bit of that mid round information, but only shown by the one player. So my X eyes like shh kind of noise. I'd still left scratching their heads ever so slightly in terms of wondering where this might land, but they are starting to guess now correctly with the Seekers as a point number. Because um, the first word of Gal said, the XEAO, that's like shall. Now, Bannon split versus Sentinels is a huge giga throw. It's either that or you ban Lotus. And then Sentinels just take you to Lotus. It's like pick your poison. Maybe to be granted to them. A bit of spray with the damage. The bullets going wide, but this is such a difficult setup to break into. 20 seconds left. Yeah, there's not much time. And Loud have stacked in the right place. We're about to melons. No thefts. They got a plant. They got to stick it. And actually, this is being respected and given up by Loud. Because Kowenzin's only 30 HP. He's pinged it. Less is going to repeat this, I think. Paranoia goes on to elbow. No reaction. Wow, Celsius has read this so well. He's backed upon heaven. Oh my god, Celsius might have owned this round. Just playing here. They're waiting now. They're waiting for Celsius to peek. Yeah, Les is so well aware. That was really nicely done there by Loud. Coming back in, they had so many different things that they needed. I'll take Lotus into the split is got here. I think the loud split is better than our Lotus. And also, we've seen a lot of Sentinels this split. You've had a couple of days to actually like watch them and prepare for it. The good thing for loud, I suppose, is that when this map is open, you know the Sentinels is going to pick it. So you pretty, you know, you could scrim three days worth of split, right, in preparation. Or VOD review and anti-strat them. Yeah. I, I mean, especially because Cowan's even backing up here. The other thing that's amazing about that Loud have beat Sentinels on this map before. That's also true. Because you could lurk through it. Yeah. So I think we'll be seeing that one come out to play a little more. I, I have Sentinels winning this map. I like Sentinels for this one. I'd say Loud here. This one's more like... Handshake. 70... Oh, not even that. 66%, I think. Allowed. Loud. I do think if Zelsis holds heaven more aggressively, but that's just me. I think, like, Tenz is happy to offer himself up as bait. It's more that Les knew that Zelsis was here, saw that he disappeared, and knew that Zelsis went for this. So, like, Zelsis goes for the fight and just holds this angle. Stone is really nice from Kowenzin. Good nade. Kowenzin after shock, considering it. I do like Kowenzin's utility. Because he doesn't just spooge stuff out. He just sits and waits. And he's like, I'm going to aftershock. Mm, never mind. Now the util's going to come out and help. Three versus three. Time's getting really low for Loud now, though. Snake bite onto screens is really nice for second. It forces up the peak. That's such a good snake bite. Great trade from Zadak. Oh, my God. Loud are playing this so well. The high, low, two... Terrific together. It's two years. His partner in crime. Mr. Man, these retakes are really good. Like, it's board. not really like a Love game plan. It's just good util. Like the state by here. Yeah. Kowenzin's utility yeah. from yeah. screens. Sentinels were anywhere near set up for it. Right? Like the aftershock, did you see, that came out at the same time? Some kind of idea for That's really nice. Plan, like Hold on, let me... 
but if you show it because between them going to it's even better than you might think because the showstopper comes in here the aftershock goes across here so with the players in this spot when the showstopper comes in they can't go and hide an elbow because this was aftershocked so you're just stuck on site sometimes before it's a really nice little set play from loud and all because Cowan was like, hmm, I'm going to hold on to my, my aftershock. And yeah, so like the mid-round reads are good. Stacking bodies, don't get me wrong. Just hoping that a few stray bullets might land into the cranium. This has to be like a positive side, though, for Loud. They need, like, what did I say that they needed? I said the Sentinels only needed four rounds, four plus. They were already on four rounds. Unless Loud's attack is a lot better than it's looked, because it hasn't looked great. But all of this Skydog so with just John following up. Full clomping, making a bit of noise. But just him alone and the sky that's probably got like another flash, maybe Sassy could throw here. It's just John. Like stun is really good. Kanzine goes to fight it, clears it. Aftershocks just in case there's more. And at the same time, Sentinels tried to go towards A. It's a really nice flash from two E's. He's backed off to CT. He got the lurk mid. Tens is paranoid across. Great position from two E's again. They don't expect him to still be on site because they had the TP's going away. But Zekin clears him new box. And then Zelsis playing off of that too is fantastic. Oh man, the quality of this game. Like some of the stuff we're seeing on either side is really nice. That was a tricky round for Sen to be able to convert. When John Cutie goes down over towards A, Sen are forced. Their hand has to go. This game is already much more like, mecha like methodical than Genji versus Paper X. Yeah, agreed. Celsius destroys that attempt to flood retake. Dodge the flash and pick up both players. Like, bo like, just how well Sentinels is kind of do what Gen G does, where they have such good, like, structure. But then Zekin's able to, like, make a play. And then Zelsis gets a couple. Like, Zelsis is playing fantastic. But he's not, like, trying to just clutch shot in. He's just got good utility and knows when he needs to fight and when he needs to back up. Sentinels could absolutely run away with this, though. He's been... Noted that he plays here a lot. Solo play. They're just yeah. going to posture and pick up the orb. And if they can find a pick on John Q to push him away, it'll create timings where Loud can worry about the rest of the map. And I think they've got a very good read that John is playing solo A a lot. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, maybe Sentinels can mess with a little. But at the moment, Loud have found a decent timing here. To make Flash getting information game. vents. So what's Tui's call here? He's the only one with a rifle here. So him backing off is good. Yeah, 40 seconds now. It's three people A. Which is where Loud are going for their gamble stack. There are only 30 seconds left on the clock. This must be a raid from Loud, knowing that, like, if Sentinels don't put pressure in the right areas, like, if they don't put pressure here early, this is where they finish. If you hear a lot of noise from John QT, that typically means that it's more of, like, a mid to B push. There's got to be some raid here that Loud is getting a feel of. To have people stacked up on A when it sees late rounds twice. But it might not even matter. What a swing and great dodging movement by John as well. And let's pick this up. D3. He's been a monster. He's got the rifle to do it still. Zekin just on a nice aggro angle. Who they're up against. And another round where Sen, it looks dangerous on the minimap. You see them walking into the trap. Yusuke even manages to get one. But everyone on Sen is playing really tight together. Making sure that they can trade, making sure the spacing's excellent. Cinema, perfect. <laughs> Absolute cinema. And they're running away with this. If you wanted to have an expectation coming in, is this the first time out for Loud, or is it the second? The I think it's just their first. Play before one was an Left it kind of light. Close split. The Loud ended up winning with Sadak just popping off at the end of the game to drag him over the line, and the other was a flattening. It was yeah, just it was the first. Just 
I think waiting for round eight to do a timeout is way too late when it's like this. But I guess maybe like Sadak is making the right calls. Maybe the coach doesn't really have much impact because it's like everything that Sadak is saying is right. Like that's what they need, we need to do, but we just can't get it to work. Like even then, with this timeout, it was mostly Sadak that was doing the talking. But he's still going. He's still yapping. So maybe that's why they didn't have a timeout until a little bit later. Very dark bags under their eyes, but now they finally think it's kind of too much for attacking. I would agree with both these comps. I'd agree, that uh, the especially because the defensive side for that. tens, uh, for tens sure <laughs> to sentinels. This is what I mean about like I should adjust. listen to like Chinese commentary because I just hear what the casters are saying and just end up parroting it. But um, sentinels is defense like they've 75% win rate, like they usually go 9 3 on the defensive side. And they're already six up. Like, this is their weak side. This is Loud's strong side. It's a little bit fucked, I think, for Loud at this rate. I mean, they lost, like, what, 13 3? It looks like maybe it was just a setup B main control for two years. Now, look how difficult this is from Les and Karnzine's point of view. You know, when this orb goes up, it's very difficult. Drop the two EU teams and dips. Yeah, Paper X are just the. Like, America's. A players have to be cautious. Support, I guess. Offloaded, pointing in various different directions, but it doesn't really give Sen an indicator. They do know that a male is going to be free or not male, but ropes itself. Yeah, that seeker went a long way before yeah. it hit Cohen Zine over in A Heaven. So Sen have a pretty good idea. That wow, it's sort of pulled this again. Uncontested. And, the dog here and it seems again because it's late. Time's getting late, and there's been no presence from Sentinels outside of mid. The call again from Loud, even on the full bite, is to go and stack A. Is it just a lack of, like, Cypher on their side? That they're just worried about Sentinels going here late? Because it's not working. Three players have been pulled over to A based off fucking nothing. Yeah, they just have to play retake on here. But to be fair, the retakes have been good. You have got a rolling thunder. But against this... I still believe in loud on this one. But it's going to be really hard. Rolling thunder does hit danger. You got a late lurk from Sassy. And he's just going to back out. Maybe should rotate all the way back. That's what he's looking to do. Neurofeft no, is going to show exactly where these loud players are. Paranoia. I think those actually connect up to Zelsus here. Oh, and they just double check him. Sassy's moved across. TP's been used. Good fight from Tui's. And Zekid is just protecting El Presidente over here. Now, with a player advantage, they can spread out a bit more. Yeah, Zekid. Just going to. Zelsus even just going to push. You gonna catch him? Not quite. They're gonna be knocked straight back down onto a low buy. And that adjustment, whatever it was that Sadak came into the round trying to inform the rest of his team, it did not work. They weren't ready for Sassy here in B Heaven. And they weren't ready for Sassy again once he repositioned into B Main. It completely disrupted what Loud were going for there with the retake. The, the timing could not have been more perfect. Low buy again. This map looks done, to be honest. Yeah. Unless Loud have really worked on their attacking side. But playing against this defensively, when you've got Sassy, who's making new sky work as well as he is, it's going to be hard. Nice nade. Just goes right into this corner, stops these players from vent. What Zekin's on the eight and seven, his like individual performance on the duelist here is just can't be overstated. He has given him a rifle though and a low buy. Nade's good, forces tends to TP. He has a paranoia that he's gonna eat towards ramp. Snade bite is also really nice from less that just forces these players back. They push these guys back. Tens is gonna pull out the ultimate. He just wants to keep these players like they don't have a clue. I mean, they've just caused them to all just be looking backwards as well. Where did Celsius find two? Was it just in screens? Were they just lined up? One with a rifle, but no longer. Drop to the floor, drop to the deck. Less. Quite able to do it. <laughs> yeah, and it's not really tens that makes the round winning play, but I think it was that cipher trip coming from John. He'd popped it over towards screens, 
I don't think this. No, I don't know. You could be right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Also, because the corpses look like they were further back. So it just gives the perfect timing and positioning for Zelsis to go for that spray. I guess I should have gone from the assists. It must be devastating for the. Yeah, I saw the trip, but I saw the corpses like further back here. So I was like, they haven't got quite through. But it's because the. I guess the cops just fell back. Show stopper. Right. Any trade at all from Loud? Yeah, Kowenzine showing up here. So these two players have a chance to peek out. The only issue is one is an operator. Yeah, Kowenzine doesn't need the support. But two versus four. This sort of reminds me of Paper X. Like, it could be another 8 4 half. Yeah, Kowenzine is just not wanting to fucking let this go down. Pretty certain that A is completely he did have support though from two E's and to a lesser extent quick. This one is gonna be tough and loud cannot afford to throw it away. Yeah, just watch him for it. Look at that. Loud. Great awareness. Sassy one versus four. Do it against your old team. Can't quite do it. Come on. Support. Yeah, it was uh, even if the upshot misses, it's still kind of scary. Try to do something fast at the start of the round. And that actually results in Loud getting the round win. Right, every other round, we've seen Sentinels with a tortoise-like pace to the beginning of these. Making sure that they are cautious, diligent about everything. And as soon as they step forward to try to take the fight, Loud are so happy. Yeah, they just triple peek it. These players behind Zekken just got wide swung and minced. I mean, they peeked out of the smoke. Well, they were like, they were fully half, stalled. The ult's even better. He, uh, we were watching quick and he peeks out misses and goes back play really much more aggressively now that he's got that one and the silver lining yeah they didn't molly it they can win a pistol maybe it's doable i mean they might have done it at the start securing those wins actually with the rounds that are available to them now timing chaos into the mix i mean look at the amount of loud players it's just gathered all the way into mid to mm. watch it they've got three players checked and ready yeah and tense is still holding counter utility the main. not and too far away at all looking pretty good just now that they've spotted the up though the calls we made to contact in through b main so sen have just got themselves a freebie there can now utilize this oh, yeah i did oh, say they need eight runs oh Once more, still keeps a gaze on a swivel. Molly's Fucking it's raining acid. Into the open. The easy collection of the kill. Now there's 45 seconds left. Chances to slow this one down, but it looks like Sen have no intention of it. Forward positions once more. Second and tens are stood on fucking top of each other. A high low for heaven. And Kowensi managed to get past them. Celsius got a fight. He's been yeeted up into the air. 4K on the horizon. What a fucking aftershock. Is he going to waste? Is he actually just going to have, like, the breach round? On the cards, Lester stick. This one comes down to the spam. Stun does hit him. He's going to be out wide. He's going to be force wide. Knows it. Info gathered now. But another stick now. Less finally to trust. Maintained in his... Oh, he has to reload. Might be punished. Oh, Kowenzin, you've got a 4K. You have to waste it now. Balls of steel. Oh, what a clutch. I, uh, that's got to be so tilting if you're Kowenzine. He did everything. John took the timing as Kowenzine reloaded. Les was still on the spot. How did John Cutie get such a read on that? Like, this is... The aftershock into this corner. The flash. But the timing on that... Of when to take the fight in the 1v2 was utterly superb. <laughs> you see the two guys down here that probably like looked at each other? Like they're fucking like actors. Why didn't Les defuse? I just think they wanted to kill. They were waiting for the peak. I think they expected that John Cutie would be a lot more, I don't know, more panicked into peaking that. And we looked around that one guy did the pog face. Yeah, exactly. That should be the new pog. They focused on the goal and we won to zero. I watched all of their VODs. I even came here and just spent all my time watching uh, Split and Lotus. I've noticed their patterns and what they like to do, what's their tendencies. So it wasn't that hard to like, kind of like guess what they were doing. I like to tell my teams that the devil is in the details. It's the small things that adds up and create that big thing that will make the difference. 
All of the close stuff in the background as well. What a round though from Drunk QT. I mean, even from Loud, that was a really good retake up until the clutch in the end. Nothing that Loud do is working. They just can't get it going. Very like lows, lows after the 2021 Reykjavik. So it hasn't been all rainbow and sunshine, but the fans still stuck with the team. Since I joined, I mean, I'm lucky to say uh, we've only had high highs. We've won all of our offseason and VCT so far. So, I mean, everything is going great right now, but we're still process oriented and like goal oriented. Even if we lose, we still make sure that to keep to keep it like consistent and not really like hmm. worry about the comments. Yeah, they're going going against a very defensive sided split. But like things change. There's been time. Like for it to work, it needs to work now. You know. But part of that is just them honing these map pools. You know, all the questions placed onto their split. Why the team? What are we looking at? Four players in mid. Trip to go across hedge. Pretty much just on like the default plan. Certainly true. For heaven, camera up on top, so you have like a little bit of the one way. This looks good. That means you have to go towards this. So pistol round. Loud decided to take a. They actually pushed up and managed to break the camera. I think they break the camera from here. You just see a, a pixel of the A main site. Sky Dog is good. The nade has to be respected. John decides that's what he's gonna peek. And they aren't on site yet because of this trip, unless they've managed to work their way up here or satcheled over it. Also expecting there to be more players on site right now. Like, okay, well, where are the other two players for loud? So they just pushed around with knife. Yeah, I mean, I think that doing this as part of a pistol is a pretty common thing to do too. But this silent jump spot not gonna be punished. Comes down to a couple of obstacles, really. And look at the rest of Sen tripled up re-clearing areas of the map trying to regain some information not with sure sky no don't offer any 1v1s yeah methodical you know the win conditions of loud right now and against it slowly creeping forwards making sure to regain some of that map control no kill found onto kawazin less a chance really for him to bite back and fight back here it is the turn of the fire tends from the wrap around Two years running all the way through. He knows the times against him. So, pistol round. Both pistols. Oof. Might be another 13 3. I think that's what it was last time on this map. Might have even been a 13 2. Extremely similar to the last time we saw these teams face on split. As pure send domination. Sadak caught off guard by that one. And John picking up the 2K. It's just enormous. That paranoia, by the way, too. Lovely from Tens. They didn't know as far as needs to force by this. They didn't get the plan. Got one, two kills. Stinger force might be a good option here. Yeah. Right, you're down three to ten. You didn't win the pistol. You need some momentum. They just didn't do anything really that round. To... It's not even about like doing damage to keep it tight. It's more that they can't buy up much more than fucking sheriffs and stingers. broken before it even triggered into it. After no plan, I we seen a lot more like stinger buys, but yeah, the plant would have helped more damage would have helped, but just this you just have to do something. But I feel like this has been read that you've got like mostly stingers and like nobody's low buying here onto a like a sheriff, for example. Feels that sentinels are well aware that like with this kind of lead, they could force buy, so let's just buy up ourselves. Because if we lose this, we could just eco. Lads still have a way to climb. Might not even matter in the end. He's paranoiring, but he can't quite get the gun. That's the only like benefit. He's a trip right in his choke. And you've got one hiding in Alba, sort of watching behind. And then John Cutie's utility is just playing on the screens. They must expect that he's on site. Stun on elbow. They've had to satchel back. Nade is good to just buy a bit of space. You know that the Cypher's probably here as well as the Rays. There goes second. All right, John QT is just refusing. He's doing a Benji play. Force doesn't work. 
Really excellent teamwork and anchoring again there from Sen. Didn't have a cage for himself to be able to play inside. If this pay breaks, he'll rotate by now. Teammate, yeah, Sen still's not overreacting as nice. Yeah, maybe he'd go next. Really solid setup. Beautiful little team plays happening all over the place for Sen on this map. They've refined it so, so well. And loud. No plan, they fell. I think they had to. Like, it's not good. But I think they kind of had to try and do something. With only sheriffs to work with. This one is a GG go next. That's brutal. Really brutal. And the other two maps here are going to be, even if Loud were to win them, very hotly contested. It's not like Loud have a map themselves that they are guaranteed to dominate on. No, they got a Sisyphus level. I would fight. say that that'd be Sunset, but I might be alone in thinking that. Xbox, both of these teams quite favored on their attack side. Sunset, I would give the edge to Sentinels. Yeah. Even if you do win on that second map to extend the series, it looks dire still. Anything can happen. Team like Loud being around the block. They might be down and out right now, but they have that experience to maybe rally themselves here. They need a few more. Are backing up? Eh, kind of clear. Defensive setup for Sentinels just a little bit too strong, too well honed. Yeah, I'm just calling it early. They, Call it in. Key, every eye. Yeah, there's looking to be flawless too. The devil's in the details, right? What makes a team excellent is not just the macro, not just the shooting, but it's all the small things, the little interplays between players, the maximization of a it's certain piece of universe. definitely impressive how well we're seeing uh, Sentinels play here. In this particular way. And on split here, Sen approaching some levels of perfection on this map in the current meta. They are ahead I am really true believing if Loud can turn this one around. Of else. If you have a perm, I guess it's like pay attention to their body language after this map. Yeah, playing split against Sen, I mean, almost guarantees. You know, Sentinel's going to be taking it. They've only lost it a few handful of times. One of them to this team that they're playing against now, Loud, but... <laughs> Kind of team get knocked by their losses. Paranoia aggressive play from Sen. Well, good count of good one, yeah, from Kawazi. Sentinels might win Icebox of Lava 2 boomed. I, I think there's a good chance mod I think about it. I think really depends on how Sentinels are set up for this. So we get to see a slightly more aggressive version of their setup. No Aspas, no win. Mm, I don't think it's that. I think it's just that loud of too many maps now that they Similar to pay breaks, there's just too many issue maps. Well, maybe not too many, but like Split and Lotus. Like the fact that like these are two maps that um, Loud need to sort the shit out on, they're also two of Sentinels is best. This is just a hard veto for them to win. Waiting for the right timings. I mean, the smoke up. One second here for tens. Going to be using it probably to block off. The angles just jiggling for now. Spectre Vandal Rifles. Paranoia flying with the fault line. Time. Time to tick. Late snake bites, I guess. Falling on top heaven. TP forwards. Backside control. Unless they were just playing late on. Yeah, I guess. Less was just going there for the flank. Let's push him away. Attack from John QT, but forcing the fights. Out into the open. The snake bites. Plenty of util here. So All right. Nice run for loud. You still have to get like eight more, though. Fully, just using the util. And it's officially now a closer game than it was during the grand final. <laughs> where Sen won 13-3. But man, it doesn't feel much closer. No. If Loud win Icebox, Loud Sunset is also good. Yeah, I think if it goes to Sunset, Loud win that. There's a bonus, you know, yeah, Sen didn't have as much util available to them, but still, you know, Loud... I think for Loud, this map is just a picky poison. I don't think they expected to really be able to do that much. They kind of felt that they had to go here. So I'd be here a Lotus and more of a chance on here, I'd assume, which just says a lot about how bad their Lotus is. The Zekin has the confidence to go and push that as well on his own. Less dropped. I mean, this is your star player. This is the guy you're expecting to put up massive numbers who's going to offset that mechanical. They trip across here, like across these boxes. Like that. And then a trip across this is nice. 
in their face. There's no, no protocols at all to really deal That's with one thing one. I do like about Sentinels is like Cypher Util. It is just very like, instead of having all of the Cypher Utility on this part of the map, like you have a trip here and then a trip across here and a camera, like it's like full map control. And then last live is Sadak, IGL. It's runs into the double peak. Yeah, All right. I'm kind of glad that we didn't see EDG play up against Sen. I don't think we'd ever realistically recover from that. That was just a dismantling of the opening map. I don't know whether Sentinels have, you know, been talking to EDG and told them they get revenge, but they just stomped Loud in the same way that Loud stomped EDG. Absolutely impeccable work. We'll send it to a quick break on the other side of things. Plenty more action where that came from. What was the, um, the comp that Sentinels played last on Icebox? I guess we can close this now. Uh, Sentinels. Icebox. Mind taking a picture of us? Oh, no problem. Thanks. Ooh. Yes, problem. You need Verizon. Trade in that little thing and get a new iPhone 15 Pro with tons of storage. So What's 1311? So many selfies. A preposterous amount of panos! That means panoramic. And as many portraits of me as Why is this like designs. weird? How about none? None. None, yeah, none feels right. Trade in any iPhone in any condition and get iPhone 15 Pro and iPad and Apple Watch SE all on us. Only on Verizon. Some of these ads. Typical America's cringe. Sorry, I don't know where to put this fucking board. Maybe I'll just stick it there. Um, what are the... Who's attacking first? Sentinels are attacking. What are they running comp-wise? Running Gecko KO. Same comp as... Um, as... EDG did. Which I'm not very... Happy about. So I don't really like this comp. Red Bull gives you Why are they playing the Gecko to begin with? More towards like B? I guess there's like maybe a Dizzy that you can do over here. Zekken up on belt. I guess just watching to see if anybody's going to fight and then pathing this way. And jumping up on top of that box. Tens. Holding here. Jumping up to pipes. Where is he knifing? Onto pipes right at the start. Which again is understandable. Celsius watching here just typical like a aggression hold plays otherwise alarm bot here just in case defenders push him turret watching crosshair or actually watching up here interesting and then john qt here it's almost like gen g's like how they hold on what is it breeze but they just have people like in these kind of corners just sort of sat waiting for like any aggression what about their defense I don't know what the song is might have said right to start this it's quite good John is on B Sales, this is on like snow pile, a lamb bot in tube or underneath it. I guess either or. Turret just on top of here. So that's what Zelsis is. The KO is over on A. Where are you knifing? Just on the front of belt. Zekin swapping. Sassy on pipes 410, ready to like dizzy across. So. Pretty good stuff, I think, positioning wise. A pretty standard stuff. Despite it being a pretty weird comp with a gecko, everything that they're doing, like compositionally, seems to make a lot of sense. I 
I don't think, yeah, I think Loud kind of just got shafted that map, but where else could you take it, right? Or where else could you be taken that you'd be happy with? Because you go to Lotus, it could be worse. It could be worse than a 13 4 loss. Which is a little bit concerning, but that's the kind of form the Sentinels are in at the moment. I'm standing right now with Kaplan of Sentinels. Now, of course, the team, I don't think I need saying, but the team is looking like the current favorite to win it all. And a big part of that is just how consistent the team has been. How have you ensured that, especially since you guys have been very vocal that it's such a hectic schedule, how have you been able to uh, ensure that consistency in their performance? Yeah, it's always impossible to perfectly control how your off days go. You know, you can't prevent things like jet lag or a hectic schedule. But uh, the one thing we can do is control how we sound once we get in the game. So as a team, we really emphasize the atmosphere. Is it too high? Is it too low? Recognizing it as a team without me needing to pause. And, you know, the whole team having the skills to call it out and know what to do to, to shift into the right space. And the guys have done an incredible job with that. That's wow, that's a really good video. call. Have you touched grass? Yes, uh, that is another big part of it, uh, preventing burnout. So we had a really nice day where we, uh, I think it's called Parque de Retiro or something. It was beautiful. We got outside, walked the city. It was much needed. Glad to he hear he it. sounds like a dad, though. Sentinels that's the only so issue. Let's see if they can carry it over to the second um, but Yeah, I'm going to run out of stuff. Oh, great choice of extracurricular activities there from Coach Kaplan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the host, Yingsu, and I'm back here with Mimi. And uh, High Park, they look so good. It's, it's good. the park, man. I went to the, that park. It's lovely. They ride around on a little rowboat. There's peacocks They in the had park. a boating day, for sure. For well, sure. How could they not 13 4 how, how come? How come we don't perform like this, Mike, after we go boating? <laughs> yeah, I can't answer that one, unfortunately. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, to take nothing away, now if there was any discussion ahead of this, I know Josh said on the cast as well, there is no question. Sentinel's split is seemingly flawless. Like, they do not miss a beat. And every single decision you see along the way in some of these rounds, it's not even coming down to mid-rounding. The decisions of the individuals are automatic. They're firing on all cylinders. They look so drilled. We talk a lot about this team's defense and how they're, how good their retakes are, how good their protocols are. But look at how they're playing their post ones as well. They're setting up forward. Here. Still, this has a molly off his teammates' contact, and then they're ping ponging off each other to take that fight together. This is another round where once they get into post one, they're going for these executes with the double dive between Tens and Zekin, which always looks incredible. And again, look, Zekin has a nade primed, ready to go towards heaven. They have so many layers to these post plans, and really, it seems to every stage of this map. So yeah, the, sorry, just caught, caught my breath for a second there. I They're think as well, loud, yeah, yeah, just a, an inability to really throw them off their game, right? There was no pressure towards the back line, the weaker extremities ahead of some of these executes coming in. Uh, unfortunately, uh, loud just didn't really get a look in. And with the way center have been playing and how well drilled things are, if you let this Sentinels execute on you, you're losing time and time again. Yeah, and I want to shout out to the fragging IGL on the other side too for yeah. Sentinels. Uh, John QT, take a look at this. A uh, Hyper X reflex. I felt like every round when he was still alive, Mimi, something magical was going to happen. I mean, this was after Cow and Zine got a 4K, almost gets the ace in this round, and then John just plays the clutch to perfection. He's not always the flashiest player, but when you put him in a position, he needs to step up. He, he seemingly always does. Mike. Yeah, he does. It looked absolutely ice cold afterwards as well. Giving him a wave to, to, to close out the half. Um, it's, it's heartbreaking to see Loud lose rounds like this, but like I said, with the individuals on Sentinels, not even second and tens, in scenarios like this, stepping up, this, this is the plan B. How scary is that for every other team? I mean, everything is just coming together beautifully uh, for them, but the job is not done. The job is not done just yet. They are one map up, but let's throw it down and hear what Loud's coach SDK has to say ahead of Icebox. Welcome back, Mika Fabs here oh. now with. I'm back. Welcome back, Mika Fabs. Oh dear. Here now with STK of Loud. And I think that was a pre-recorded thing anyway. Map. Um, what what was the team struggling with the most, and how do you guys plan to remedy that going into Icebox? I think that we entered in a game with a game plan. Did, this game plan didn't work, unfortunately. They adapted their. People themselves. forgot John Cutie was a main duelist for his Mina team. So on Icebox we have a like. Man knows how to take jewels, that's for like sure. We have like more plays on this map. So I think that's about this, like reset about the first map that anything went good and uh, go for our full power right now. Well, Loud is a team that you can't ever, ever count. So let's see if they're able to bounce back on Icebox. 
Exactly, Mika. Well put. But the thing is, uh, Mimi, what are Lao's game plans for Icebox? What do they do? So they play this Harbor Viper comp that they've been playing for a while, but they execute on it really well. Last time they played, the thing that impressed me the most was their protocols in plant denial and retakes. They're very good at kind Just of looking about the same. Seems it. Mollies to delay their opponent's plant, then going for these flood retakes that, with the Harbor Viper, are really effective. This is a map where I think you get to see the experience, the fundamentals of Loud on full display. They've played this comp for a while. They have a lot of variations of how they want to set up with it. Love starting on defense here. Is that a pro or a con? For the Brazilians. Comfort? I don't know. I, well, I, 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 call me a doubt or whatever. Okay. I think, obviously, this being the anomaly of the, of the grand final. Uh, Icebox. Really so bad defense, but, uh, but uh, only I played a little bit of it. Like we're getting the attack side was, like, fairly decent. Apart. I don't um, think really tech side for loud today. fairly Send decent pretty, pretty good pretty good standout individual for loud on icebox but so know. for loud it sort of feels the same I, I agree with what you said this is still I think, like for loud four plus rounds on the first half and you'd be good. They run a very different um, They're playing this KO Gecko, and I actually think that can play into this Harbor Viper quite well. You can be fighting through the walls, kind of think fighting through the smokes. What else would be important to highlight? I think unreal. like QCK's jet. The jet on this map. Well, this is the thing. Last time versus second. Other, uh, Mike Sentinels did come out on top. You think history is repeating itself? It was 13-11, wasn't it? So I feel, I feel, yeah, we were talking about this before. We were talking about yeah, it's going to be a long drawn out affair. Why is that? I think with that start, it's just so hard. Loud one ones time and time again, we say they're never out of a series. They're never out of a map. I'm just not seeing it again today. It's it's another concerning look at, you know, and it'll okay, that should be okay. With the, the interview there, talking about the adaptations that Sen made. I don't feel like they made an awful lot. Loud had no approach to really disrupt Sentinels gameplay that they've demonstrated time and time again on split. Sentinels, they do look so, so good, but you guys are home voted and you think that this is going to go the distance and I have faith in the MasterCard fan poll. Uh, but the question is, Bren and Saisho, do you guys have faith in Loud? I mean, I'm, I'm praying. I'm on my knees here praying. Yet, so I'm not going <laughs> to lie. I want a close game. I want something that's not going to be so lopsided between these two teams. We can certainly hope so. You know, the last time these two teams tackled each other on Icebox, it was Loud who got the better of them. Both of these teams have very, very good fundamentally attack sides with their comps. They are very well drilled in that regard. But I want to see some fight back now from Loud. I actually think that Sen's composition is extraordinarily good against Louds too. It's just that Sen what haven't worked on this map as much as some of the others in their pool. I have a wall to go across there. Use this time accurately. They didn't actually do it the other way around as well, like this. They can come out with another incredible map win. Sassy goes down first, trying to dizzy in that corner. At the start of the round. You know, he's a really important piece of the puzzle. In terms Four of people have rotated over now to A. You just have this alarm bot and then the turret and kitchen to watch across. This to be a re -hit. Turret's got some information mid. The yeah, what kind of rotation? Is this going to be... Sadak fighting this on loan? He is fighting this alone. Oh, he gets more than he bargained for, but he still gets both of them. Good position for Zekin to be in, though. Fantastic push-up. Just finds a little bit of a gap. Sadak is still here, but nobody else is with him. Rikun Dad doesn't get anything over on the site either. So all three of these defenders now clearing Snowman just because that's where Zekin was. So Zekin pushing up all this way, getting a kill and coming back is... Good. Crazy good positioning. You can't be getting away with this, son. Surely not need. Really nice. I know Ten's getting the free K is big, but like the work that Zekin did, the work that him getting up. To give Sadak two kills was about the only way that Sen could have messed up what was happening. Not that it's their fault. They didn't know where exactly he was positioned. But for Ten's to recover that, he has to. He's forced to take that duel there as he crosses back. I mean, yeah, Kalantin just out peaking there is a bit wild. It's got to be frustrating though for Sada, but I guess he made the call for. Give it to him, man. Oh my god. The call for the free players to push this to reclaim where Zekin was. Sadak was just left alone. It was so scared of Zekin that Tens was just out facing them. The actual shots that Tens has been hitting, the moments, the multi-kills from him have been unbelievable sometimes. 
As of right now, I have no qualms putting second as my top player for Madrid. Like, I still think that that's valid. He's also just peeking, waiting for a fight. The one goes down. Pick up plants. It's not going to have an influence in this round, but I do like how loud they're using it. They throw it out from two when he's playing over towards Snowman, and it's going to let them play between the Viper Wall and the High Tide to break the wingman, to deny the plant, to fight yeah. more aggressive. I mean, some of these harbor walls that have come out from loud are being a bit problematic. There is no danger here, Senna. I've just taken a very clean B exec. Yeah. And to be honest with you, Tens, he should be trying to hunt. Yeah, you see him swap the weapon. Yeah. Offloading it in exchange there. Does want to go hunting. Oh, not quite. Unlucky. Top of the bridge brings him yeah, he's one old orb away from having his null command, so he's going to go. If he gets a kill and then dies. They would just have it straight away. But now they need to go fight for one of the orbs, either B main or A. And the thing is, Loud's composition doesn't actually have great ways of uh, disrupting you when you go for that. It doesn't have the ability to, you know, flash repeak from yellow or on pipes on A, that kind of thing. Which. Teams like Gen G have done so much work integrating those micro plays yeah, on the defense. A little bit of proactive fighting over. Yeah. And I think that's one of the reasons why we saw the attack side be so good for both of these teams is that Zen hadn't really built out those defensive plays. So far, so good for Sentinels. The bonus is not too bad either. On playing retake, which is easier to deny. I mean, this Dizzy is pretty useless against uh, the Cascade. Just the spot of a player is but at least it keeps Cascade forcing them to use it. Away. If that's even been noted i mean so you get a cascade out and then the high tide here for Sen, all grouped up and they want this orb on a really an opportunity nobody's really fighting for it though loud i don't think Instead, i think they're almost giving it up now tens is getting in position for this this flash dizzy combo that gen g were using it's so good yeah it's a nice one too like this lineup is really good you can't pick up Cascade. I know you can, but like you force it out early. It's a little bit delayed. So yep, it's down close to the quarters. Down underneath rafters. Kawazin wins his one out versus second. Still, gets to the position for it. And Tens is starting to use his ult now for this. Making sure that they can't use any of that post line util. All right, Tens, good fight. Take the fight. He's ripped Kawazin's head clean off. Over the top of the rope. I don't know if I said it in a way that made it sound like he could. Like the high tide, you can obviously use again. No real casualties. Now, but. CK finally. Ability's back online. Dash backing away. Gets the one. Needs to clear the corner here, but he's just really struggling. Waiting out wide here. Half of the fuse from Sadek pushed back. Away. And a wide tip Retake actually was fantastic. Remaining, Even against the Very no nice command, they dealt with it really nicely. But I can see that Senna's starting to add more stuff into their playbook. I mean, that flash dizzy combo is so good. The power but yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I said it that. So much of the area, and Loud had to wait a long time to get that high tide and the cold back. But I mean, yeah, like the gecko flash isn't really gonna get anybody, even if they push from B main because of that cascade. But you can pick up your dizzy and you get you still get them to waste utility over here based off nothing. And these players are smart, they understand what two died and three ammo rebuy is kind of good eco. True, but I mean, it's the dedication of Mikhail that sort of makes it a bit more understanding of what is really going wrong. Like exciting for Sen, I suppose. Knife not broken. Hangs on to two. Yeah, that's going to create a serious threat, though. See how Tuiz is using his high time to make it difficult. This is an interesting fight, though. Unless he's pushing up on the other. Alarmbot, turret mid. Is this Elsis? Yeah, that's just playing and chilling. Flash, yellow, dash, snake bite on here. Really nice utility to clear this for Sentinels. But I don't know. You can't really go for this plant with a gecko. Just because it's so out in the open and there's two people here. I mean, they either needed to hit But like, Celsius is going slowly. These are the only moments I think where Sentinels look a little bit more scared and it could be more problematic. Like, it's leaving it so late. Think that a lot of these players have left the and this is still like a really good like, disruptive way i think this is yeah they have just a molly on the choke they have a molly on top of the default box the lamb bot for elbow and then a turret watching mid you can also have this turret which sadak likes to use yeah 
Ten is lucky to be alive, facing top raft the Sadak. Taken out cleanly. Now Ten's going to be playing a four position here because he is so low. Just had him behind the box. And Sassy with that ult plant. Is he going to listen for some steps? Ah, uh, the recon is nice. Really waiting, available, but still. But yeah, they have the fresh for the. Sassy. First plant. Did it go elbow? Didn't hit anybody. Not quite online here. I would have sent that just to the plant the a little bit later on. Because you don't really have any intention of following up on this. Bad a post plant here from Sen. Unless, just has to get out. <laughs> Celsius isn't going to let him. Less surviving is so important. He's even going to try and go for a few more fights. He was the player pushed the furthest forward on a last to fall. Everybody crumbling around him. Uh, I just want to go back a little bit to their communication from the previous round. Sen were coming, or Zekin specifically, was saying, come the mollies. And, and the reason John, so actually, yeah, I didn't realize that he did so much. Nice free K. Players need to be able to hide. Yeah, ults for Sentinels on... I remember on Lotus against KC were really good. Split that we just saw was really good. Like they had the Viper's Pit for the bonus. Like they're very good at just playing towards, like, what's going for them. Like, here, they're on a, like, anti-eco. They should know it. So farming up John Cutie's ultimate. Or Zelsis's. One under two. It's a good shout. That's why I guess, like, fighting for B is quite good here. And take control of B main. Not going to fight for this orb. Because they could reset, go back and get the orb A, but it seems like, okay, we're in an anti-eco. We've lost one player. Let's like play this a lot safer than we might usually do. This is the kind of bit of play that EDG have been missing. Because EDG in a 4 versus 5 against an eco would just full p p panic execute. They're even not, yeah, well, the gecko's gone down, so they are going to at least get the plant down for the Viper. So it should mean that they have Viper's pit for the next full buy. He's got past the alarm bar. I think it's been heard. Might not. Oh, they didn't expect it at all. But they're like, y'all hear something? Well, he's got his ult for the next round, so there should be a full buy there. So a thrifty round for Loud. That's what you want to see. Yeah, that is just in time. What we saw on Split was the economy just getting ruined for Loud over and over. They could never build up a bank to work with. Loud timeout. A timeout after the win in this round as well, which hmm. Maybe they called it, um, yeah, early. But maybe there's also just like a very early read with how this is working. It's a time of a Viper ult. It could be. Most of the time when this happens, it's like they called it, um, early. And it was too late for the last round, and then yeah. they've used it for this and one. Also, QCK being able to give them the confidence to stay on B by taking that mid-round timing and taking the risk to re-explore through mid. And it is a risk. You know, he's only got a... Because I think Nicole could also be what you've been saying, Galv, of just like, look at what ultimate Sentinels have. Whatever they're close to, that's what they, they're going to fight for Robs to get it online. And that's how they're going to play around it. You know, trying to fight before Sen have utility set But I do think Sen there just... When they went into a 4 versus 5 with the buy, how quickly they tried to like group together as 4 in B main. Like they just felt very like. Shoop. It's like a tortoise going into its shell kind of thing. Little bit too bunkered up. Yeah, where the Viper's pit now? I mean, you've only got the Silver as your initiator. Yeah, you really have to I don't know how much of the game plan this is going to be for Sen because it's you got John QT on a Vandal instead of like a Phantom. Not that I think that's a major thing. I I would just like if I was a Viper, I'd be like, okay, I'm got my ult. I'm going to go get a Phantom just for the better gun and I don't like it. 
four players grouped up on defense on A, just pushing QCP. What's the plan here, though? This is a lot of space given up on B. Still, he's going to be telling his team to over rotate. Get your asses into mid. Get your asses. The alarm bot is pretty much going to be seen now for quick. So they know that Celsius is still nearby. Lovely. I mean, they've managed to get into a position where Sen. Now he's managed to go up and go around. Celsius is playing this really well. But now they're far enough away that they don't like. The alarm bot's probably down at this position. Now it is, and it's not going to be heard from QCK. I think they've got all the info they need, though. Yeah, they have. Well, but yeah, they've got them in a box. Like Reckoning going to be used oh, just before the plant comes in. Second stashed in onto site, and he's completely kill. ran past some of these loud players. Good clearance, however. They've lost the Viper. Spike has been planted. And then, look at this late push. Celsius is, like, really tucked in now. He's watching behind. He's got an alarm bot, which I think was broken. Loud of, like, yeah, really constricting them here. There's no real chances here. There's no real chances, maybe. Yeah, good from Loud. Really nice. I can see a Sentinel's timeout soon. Especially coming out of the Loud Gen G game. That was my big takeaway. I think Loud's protocols for dealing with B hits like this are actually real nice. Yeah, they missed Zekken, but they keep good snowman control. They fight from Kitchen. They have good crossfires on people. Look at how Sadak, playing around Orange, is able to pick up Zekken. The reckoning timing was really nice, too. I think should be quite cautious if they're sending B hits over and over and over. Yeah, I think this is a great timeout for Sentinel, too. The map does look more of a weakness for Loud. They tend to play it for retake more often. The Flash Dizzy combo on A is just more powerful, in my opinion. And Sen are going to have opportunities then to fight aggressive in the post plant to stop Loud coming back in for the retake. I think uh, you're definitely seeing that there are many more opportunities for Loud Real. to get wins here on Icebox than we saw on Split. Right? Split from Sen is perfection, but not every... A lot of talking from Kaplan. ...that kind of calibre. And Loud are finding those ways of stopping Sen going for these hits. Now they've knocked the economy in the other direction. Okay. Did Sen even have a single mm. eco round on Split? <laughs> I don't think they did. Like it. They won no. the pistol both times, and then they just dominated the game. So I think this might be the, their first one. Down to it. A couple of decisions to be made here because they do have money for a potential investment of one rifle. Or so looks like John QT is the one who's uh, bought that one up. What are we like? Sword, second, six, and three, less six and two. If it goes poorly. Lockdown, Viper's Pit, Hunter's Fury, Lockdown almost online. But, you know, Sen might start playing towards some of the orbs, trying to earn up some big ults. So is this a bit like Sentinels trying to get the orb, get the Lockdown, try to avoid the Hunter's Fury? Oh, QCK's botched it. I mean, I was going to say to post somebody up really deep so they have good information. And then they've just botched it and reset. Now just has to kind of chill and reset. But Sen are not going for anything too aggressive at the beginning of the round. They're worried. As Weird as mistake to make, but, it you know, it happens. Like many players ready to fight B. Even though we can see, it was only two E's at home. Had I got two E's moving over to B to play alone? Doesn't have the high tide, so really, can you stop this? You have some support coming in from the sofa. Is there a recon? There is. Aldron is the thing that's going to be used. Now that they're pushing in. Tense has managed to find a nice little gap. Not quite. Kanzine just peeks him as the flash goes down. I mean, I don't like this pit. They got half. Lockdown being used. Loud is just wasting nothing here. I'm not surprised, really. John is going to get stuck. ANDB. Strange. Viper's pit. You're on an eco. You didn't have advantage. You were kind of stuck. I don't mind the lockdown being used for loud. So close to the like, I think mean, Loud using uh, a lockdown against the Viper's Pit, just even if it's full by Eco no matter what, I think that's worthwhile. But the Viper's Pit definitely felt like it was a bit wasted. And now you've got your own um, lockdown on the full by, but there's a Hunter's Fury. 
and a Viper's Pit on defense. So they're going to Viper's Pit on here. KO Knife is going to suppress them, so that's going to stall it. And with the Viper, yeah, they have to back out. Presence being shown by Sen, Sassy. Thrash movement. Is it just going to be this pathing? Actually, no. It went this way and dashed in. It's nice. Viper's Pit for backside is good. You can't pick up the Thrash either. On this Fury for this? On top of it, lockdown though. Should push him out of position. No one has fury. Potentially it to clear, but less might They're just happy to get less get in detained. QCK. It's wrapped all the way behind him, and yeah, he will get Interesting that they're leaving this, and then he gets killed for the spray. I wonder why they didn't hunt this fury that. Oh, uh, QCK gets killed on the flank. And this fury now gets used. Gets a tag onto somebody. Yeah, tens goes down, but it's still a three versus two. Okay, it's separated off the kill draw into this position. They waited for the mosh to be used. Now Nana Swarms are going to be used. Cove is broken. Oh, loud. I thought they had this under control. Oh, never mind. Kowenzine and 2E's clear it up. Ooh, that's touch and go. I didn't like that at all from loud. Sen were running out of postman utility, sure, but they still had a crossfire from three different areas no that way they could set up. There's no way. And yet through the high tide, through two eases util, Cowan Zine, the hero for loud in map. I wonder if the call was like, the yeah, we're gonna have the Hunter's Fury for the lockdown, but as soon as the Hunter's Fury comes in, yeah. uh, sorry, the lockdown comes in, Les is probably calling like, I'm the only one here, I'm in a position where they can't kill me. Doesn't matter if I get detained. And I guess it's just a bit unlucky that loud got sprayed shot. through the viper's pit Sometimes it'd be like that. Yeah. Loud. but also like you're detained here i mean it's going to be a more likely place that they spray when they see that yeah. one's been detained good from qck chairs are cheaper than desks also sponsors Oh, hello, counter spam. Kawazine dropped. Still but also, yeah, I think for Kaplan, I'd be upset that you lose it that way. It collided them against the null command. Anybody going to peek him? Tens is looking this way, so he can't see. Time is starting to get a little bit lower, though. Vizels has traded, though. Drop down. John QT again. Isolated in this one versus two position. Winnable for John. Oh, not quite. I don't know what he was looking for. He was looking for another gun. What a round from QCK. Very similar to the three. I don't think the loud is like just winning out because they're better, though. I think Sentinels are just kind of like making a lot of mistakes here. Like I said, the loud need four plus rounds on their defense. They've got six. He was reloading. Yeah, I think he was looking for another gun. But I guess he just wasn't expecting them to be in his face that quickly because he's like out here. Clearly loud are the ones who have stepped up. Won't go quietly into the night. That is a disgusting shot. QCK with his off. Zekin's Achilles heel. Yeah. Barely tagging on to him. Look at all these retakes though. So loud. Six defuses. Which is QCK's op. And now they've given it to Cohen Oh yeah, they have. What the fuck? If QCK gets spotted now, still it's rattled off the shots. They got it just posted up on Bell. Using the dash. Why has that kill come from? I mean, unless this is pushed. He's pushed up. You see the spike. In the pistol round. I mean, he went for this aggressive push. Oh, and headshot. I fucking hate this angle. And then he's gonna peek out, and there's the op. Doesn't hit. Probably should. Less is just gonna peek him one by one. Silver op is in. Is it? <laughs> After that peek and miss, is it? Oh. Okay, that's a bit tilting. that is very, very angry. Yeah. Mm, I, you could argue for another time I have for Sentinels if you're feeling spicy because it was looking good and then now it's looking really fractured like John just peeks out there first but Zelsis has not been giving it to him if they're B defaulting and they leave Zelsus Yeah, a lot of the death. I mean, all of the deaths, I think. All of the individual ones for Sentinels, they're going to be pissed off about. I would be. You like the idea of stepping up. I don't know why you would. 12 and 3 less. 
this guy. I mean, he gets sorely underestimated by a variety of people coming into it. I, mean, I don't think we're getting much use out of the Gecko either. I think this is the first time that we've seen... No, actually, that's not true, because we saw the Gecko for Jinji against Lab before. I think it was the same thing. Like, loud on the defense were good, but on the attack against Sentinels has come. That's tricky. Decided to take the re-peak. Dizzy shot fired straight into the wall there. Zekin wins it out though. Molly's dealt with. Accounted for. Now you're gonna Reckoning see good for the retake. Oh, Zekin unlucky just on the timing. Even more unlucky. Just the fucking killed through smokes. Maybe Sen could make something of it. Again, the triangle of death set up. This time Crash. Taking that first contact. Celsius winning that fight. Oh, they the found an opening. Now it is it just becomes a dire Celsius is 5 Celsius HP. Over them. IGL, one versus two. Seam one up on pipes. Planted, Sassy tapping Sadak over and around. Sassy's bought a lot of time in. You know where John is. Sadak now for time, surely. Working against him, the jump spot. The jiggle junk. He's got half. Trying to gamble and dice with death himself here all the way. Oh, wow. John is really good in these plus point positions. We don't need a timeout. We need Zaddy working overtime here. So similar to his situation on split where we saw him play against Cowan Zine. Unless. They're getting it together, though. But I do think overall Senna giving Loud way too much space in these post plans. If Zelsis hadn't been able to get those two kills and open things up, I think Sen might have been in trouble again. Yeah. Most teams most teams when they play against the Harbor Viper. That'd be me. Just taking notes in a little book. Stop them before they get into retake spots. Senna backing off and trying to play post I think that the gecko on this map is a lot of promise. What was that flash? That flash just bounced back. Is he trying to throw for this gap and it just missed? Everything. Lockdown, no Hunter's Fury. With this composition, you have no way of dealing with the lockdown. You don't have Molly lineups. Get off. They go back in. Do you have anything to go back in? Round 12. Anything you have, you use. Whose lineup is that? I can't remember. Who. Oh my god, John. Oh, and he just gets them as they're peeking in. With him toppling. Ace. On the cars. The crowd wants it. The people are chanting. QCK spotted out one. They're leaving it. Team give him anything. Not quite still. QCK is like, I'm not giving him the fucking eggs. I'll go die to Celsius instead. That's a salvage situation. When his heart was looking so damn poor. And round 11. I think it might be a boost to your lineup. Who salvage it is John. What a beautiful spray transfer there. And then getting the third on the rope too. All coming up. Like you do it from... Bell. Sent up to four. Well, he's done it to get him to five. That's crazy stuff. Honestly, a really, really competitive. Get one nice plus complaint and more utility than Sage. I don't even think it's like about the gecko plant because I think the Sage, like the gecko plant, isn't as good as like a Sage Wall or a Harbor Cove. But I do think that like the gecko utility on defense, especially to stop plants, like the Molly wingman to clear angles, the Frash two for retakes, like just the pacey utility is really good. A lot of 50-50 angles that the Dizzy can clear. Uh, we weren't able to show our game on the first map, but we are trying our best on the second one. Of course, excited for that comeback. Now, what's this I hear that you bought every single VCT bundle? Is that correct? Yes, is that true? Oh my gosh. Okay, now I have to ask you, what's your top three? And you can't say loud. Okay. Uh, I hey, really like tail, uh, Talon. 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 G2. And also mm, Cloud91. Oh, okay. That's a that's a healthy representation. I like those picks. Now, last but I don't know how you can not have Paper X in the top three there. Maybe get them to uh, buy some. Uh, not saying Leviathan makes yeah, sense. Sure. Uh, first of all, buy Loud Bundle, and uh, thank you guys for cheering for Loud. It's a close match. We are top four. Uh, last masters, we weren't really great, but I hope this one we can get the title. All right, you heard it from Coriano. Let's get back into the game and let's get back. I like the C9 one. I do. 
It's simple. I mean, I will say, but it's good. Loud, they, um, they do have one of the only, like, you know, proper green bundles, if you like the color green. <laughs> That's um, true. So, they, you know, they yeah. got that going for yeah, them. Yeah, if you're a fan of green, any uh, eco-friendly people out there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, money. We need more green orgs. <laughs> like, la la Loud <laughs> found a market there and they ran with it. Bundle, but yeah, listen, seven maybe to that's five. You. Important pistol round coming up. Yeah, a very, uh, honestly, a huge one. And Sen have won every pistol so far in this series. So, if they're Ooh. able to get another Ooh, one. I point, keep yawning now. I've, ever since I had my cup of tea, it's just made me more tired. To work with the entire time. Less. He's picked up a sheriff. Louder, one of the teams that buy sheriffs the most in these pistol situations. All right, defense should be good. There's two players. I think Loud's attack is very strong. I think that the pistol feels like everything. Like it's still close, but I think Loud, if they can get the uh, attack pistol, make a good bonus, you know, plant, get a couple of kills, they might be able to, like, snowball this a bit more. That was fake pressure. A good gamble to take. And they've got a little bait and switch set up here. Kind of blocked by the wall, though. Yeah, I mean, there's no going to be any swings coming out for here. Sassy needs to get one. Mm, Sassy no just in a in second, no man's land. Activated. And then second, because he presses the dash, he wants to push up a bit more, but he's been given nothing. Sadak's, Sadak's made a lot of noise, pushed up. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is a good, like, attack and default. Even as his turret to play off. It's just whether they clear Zekin or not. Now Celsus has come into support. Uh, not quite. Any more damage? Any more kills? Not quite. But Celsus not in a position to help. He's just going to sit back. He can't panic out now. Flash ready to go. Oh, yeah. oh the flash is great from Tens. And the peak afterwards. Oh, loud. Les has found a really good spot. Snake bite is good. Sadak needs to stick to the plan. Uh, it kills him. Less in a one versus one. John's been winning these all day. What a read from Sen. Where you at, Les? He's just. He's like 14 HP facing. That's now going to be dropping. Orb propped up. How does John choose to play it? Here's those shots. Spots it out on the right click. Business. Good time. Done. Yeah, John is letting nothing past him today. This really well done. Sentinels. Like this 10's flash. And then Zelsis is peeking off of it too. Sen really abusing the slower pace of life. Like the kill on Takao and Zine, as they were going to plant, was everything. Because they took so long dealing with Zekin, and I mean spin. this util also perfection, putting pressure on the clock. But yeah, because they took so long dealing with Zekin, nice. that allowed Zelsis to tuck into yellow. Nice. And like I said, Bren, this is four out of four pistols. I don't know who I want to hit on. This is gonna get I mean, into this map. I I don't know really. I'm trying to ignore the fans. I like both the teams, like all of the players on it. Going with a bonus. Fans just ruin it too much for me. Very clear ideas. I mean, here, Zekin, Outlaw. Sees the jump. Spots. Ooh, he Just loses it. it. Now you've QCK. given QCK an Outlaw. Just didn't really realize that he was already mm, on the side, scary. So an yeah. John's on a Phantom, though. That's a really bold Anything to stop this plan? Yeah, Mosh. Sadak not willing to give away his life to the Molly once more for the plan, so... But yeah, you got four sets of Mollies. Two of these players will die to a one-shot from the other. Oh, they're not watching for it. Over the top there, that's the ghost. Game Big kills. Right Ten's just having to peek out wide. Is there anybody else on the site? No, but the spike hasn't been planted from loud. Have you got any gun upgrades? Not yet. The fact that this is being held, like none of the guns could get picked up. said, a single shot will do. You've essentially handed over the operator to QCK. The Viper wall about to go up. KO knife brings it back down. Two E's has a wall at least. Still gonna try and fight over it. Oh, he still gets two E's. They here. planted, faked it, and then went back site. There's no way that you can get across to A. Like, this is what. Oh, he's looked away. The wall all about the timing. No way. His lesson finds it. And the gamble. I mean, I feel like John was baited by the fucking audience there. 
It's not going to be planted out wide. Less is even. He does where one is and does it. There's one back sight. All right, tens. How are you in the clutch? Less again. Good advantage massively in favor. The wall's going to go down again. He reads it so well. Like, just that he's going to be in this position. That is a crucial one for tens to win. What a play. I mean, both less and tens getting value out of the play that they went for. Still a good eco. Still a good eco, though, if you're allowed. You plant and you bring it to one versus one. The whole time. This can't be... Is this just going to be a full eco for Sentinels here? They're going to, like, just full force. You got bonus this. Could not have gone better the timing in that round for tens. And despite Sen winning, a follow-up round, it was really expensive. Yes, they carried a one rifle through, but they're opting to just take a full eco. Yeah. And so, a really bizarre start to this half. Yeah. Sen win the pistol. You expect them to get up the momentum that they have done on every other half that we've watched so far. What's the buy like? Oh, I mean, it's one rifle. Good shot from Zekin. The only good note you had, you've lost instantly. Getting one is good. Zadak is brave to just peek out with util. There's the angle. A land bot. Trying to put it deep. There you go. Oh, he's taking a bit of chip damage. Not too bad. No, yeah, not a bad amount. You can plant in a number of positions where it's very helpful. Planting right on the edge too, because it's easier to protect. And also, you take a little bit less damage from this from being wall banged, but not a huge amount. Enough that it matters. And also a snake bite, uh, snake bite, nano swarm, right underneath the plant. A lot of from Sen just to try and clear that back at the side. But again, time is of the essence, and with the nano swarm dead already, it's running out wildly. It's not a luxury they have whatsoever. No one's even forcing a tap onto the spike here. There's a gap into the wall tens. Out wide and open. Oh, man, this is just really nice. I don't know if that's like planned. Fish in a it works. You can see Sen had no idea there that Sadak could see the spike. I mean, it turns red when it's being diffused. A little bit of a gap. Exactly where it's being diffused from. Boom. Headshots. And the fact that Loud were given those kills towards the end. and this is Still a, a way to go. Now you got the full buy again, but a lot of half armor for Sentinels. No operator, just all rifles at the moment. Must be a lineup. Yeah, I mean, that kind of stuff, Loud seems to be well aware of. They have, seem to have a lot of, like, wall lineups for Harbour, too. Before the big execute comes through. Maybe that's what Senna planning with both of the flash initiators and Zekin playing A. So what now? Turret here. People pushing up. Senna's going to break it. Now Loud regrouping over towards A. And this, this is where I'd love to see Zekin posted up on pipes. Alamba and Nana Swarm B. Why is there such a beef focus here? Loud, this execute is going to be oh, reckoning. To hold on against. Drone going to be heard. One tag down to Sassy backs him away. And then K ultimate. And spotted dash to get himself out of there. Reckoning now. We'll when are they going to use it? The if they're going to use it. Wow, Zekin is peaking this. Stuns. Like stun, I mean, that could have... It did end badly. Loud gave him nothing. Good flash, but it's allowed QCK a bit of a gap to play around. He knows that there's one heaven. He's somehow still alive. Two E's goes down, so does Tens on the trade. And then one flanking from Zelsis. So it is just a one versus four. One v four. Last one left. Decision being made for him really has to be the save. Just has to Recon be some exit damage. In nest. Normal damage doesn't do that much. Saving the guns probably wise for Zelsis, I'd imagine. I'm loud building up a nice economy. They've got a great game plan. And Senna Seeing if we can get anybody that's rotating out this way. Just getting to play but I don't think anybody's going that way, do you? They could never really get a grapple on that on split. They were always trying to force fights in mid, and Sen were never letting them. That time, the patience and the slow pay slow play really rewarded Sen. And on this map, I feel like they need to be getting a little more up in Loud's face, trying mm. to utilize the strengths of this composition, which are the flashes to go for those mid-round reclear timings. But when Loud are given space, you see how difficult it was, though Zekin tried for him to get a timing around the harbor all there. And then when Loud is set up in these aggressive nice plants, the players... They can shoot, man. Kisuke, a little bit lucky, shoot. I'd say, in some of that, but... 
He's actually winning out on the duels against Zekin now too. So the jet is working. The buy in this round, very similar to round 15. You know, everyone on pistols apart from one player with a rifle. So with the money chunk down, theory you're expecting loud again to just keep stringing these rounds together. The danger starts building. Hello. Through the wall just in case, but dash to respect it. But the trouble is here, I mean loud, you gotta think. Could be probably able to get themselves a plan. Only orbs. Only second both heaven. Times, even heaven. And the re-aggression here actually from the sassy flash is good. It's actually Sadak that gets the first kill. I did like Sentinel's plan there. Sassy's on there and just peeks into two players. Loud and really good at just how they bait people into taking these fights. I mean, that's what they did really well against CDG too. Like it just pulls these players out into fighting them before the spike is even planted. Because if the defenders can't get in a good position to disrupt and, what you're doing, yeah, good timeout. When they Three in a row for loud now. You know, in, in times gone by, but the attack side, you have the opportunity to go and take a little bit of space and use big ults like Sadak's lockdown to really give yourself a free post plant situation. And that's where you need to see Sen fighting a little more for some space. I think this is another round where the same concept applies. Sorry, just because today's been a little bit more of a chaotic one. Now we've got T sorted here in the flat. They want to go towards. But I think getting Zekin posted up in some aggressive areas would be decent. But it's also kind of difficult to go for any mid round re aggression with an operator. It's more that you take a line at the start of the round or something like that. It's certainly possible, but. You know, there's two key areas, if you're thinking from Sentinel's perspective here, that Sadak would want to be using the ult. One is over towards B main, and the other is over towards pipes. And so having some setups that could deal with those yeah, might end up being really crucial. Just trying to think one step ahead, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, and, and where are we at now? Sadek. He's a good enough IGL that coming out of a timeout like this, he might decide not to use... Five... Uh, play whatsoever from the strap book and he might just send it with like I don't know three players pushing mid or something you know really five rounds on this half with what center you think more any EU stars will go to China so APAC for big payday deep with the cascade mm. to push away anybody that might China would pay big but I don't know if people would go early days yeah oh my god Zekin is on the perfect angle for all of that QCK he's already pushed up onto the left hand approach yeah yeah it's tough you can a ping this Cascade now over towards A. I wonder if some utility was broken. You know, only the lurker is here. Yeah, knife gets the Eldron just beforehand, too. I believe Sadak was just caught by the knife. No, I don't think he was actually. So he's going to be able to get this lockdown off. Spice dropped down in mid. Trying to fake presence here, except. Well, I'm about to see if anybody's going to aggressively try to push upon it. So this has to be respected. There's no Hunter's Fury either to break this. So it means that, again, Sentinels have to respect this. Go, using the lockdown for the fake when they have the full A site. It's if Zekin really, it's on him because the loud players are now going to be walking and wading right into that crosshair. Dark forward. Missed. This is the shot. Big shot the to miss. Shot that might be it. He gets out and then re peeks, but now they've gone back. And then Zelsis is uh, pushed up. So he's going to hear all of these steps. Oh no. Oh, what a fight. And nobody can trade Celsius either because of this poison cloud. Sadak has found all of the space. He's waiting for one. Crash is going to be used. Oh, and he gets onto the Gecko too. QCK is even there to add more to it. What a masterclass. What a mind game. I thought it was, yeah, like Sideshow was saying, a bit overcooked. I thought the loud overdid it here. Yeah, not unless Zekin's able to get a... But Zekin missing that shot, man. Like, missing the fight here. Very difficult from Sentinel's perspective. If he gets that kill, I think it's a whole different round. So, I, do, I certainly don't think the round was game-planned like that, right? It looked like it was intended to be an A fake that you end up hitting B. But the audible call does Sadak just realized that he had all the space in the world. And Sentinel's now need to save. So it's 11 for low. Yeah, I mean, he just wandered, <laughs> just wandered in. <laughs> Top left rafters. He wandered yeah. in, takes the rope, jumps onto rafters. Yeah. He's got a great spot. But also, Sen unaware that a lurker could have taken that positioning. Yeah. Right? Tens walks through. Sassy's using thrash. They don't think about how, are they ending A here because there's a lurker giving them that info. 
Just let them try to catch me. And loud, they are pulling away. Right. Be better here on Icebox. Which, oh, is, which is really good to see because Split was unbelievably one-sided. But of course, Oops. This That's so weird when it's slowed down that much. Worst Oops. Man have in their pool. Yeah, there aren't many of them, do they? No. Through the cracks here. I feel so, like my brain's running on fumes you know, right now. For them to still be keeping it somewhat competitive. Need to get myself some water. Not bad. It's not bad at all. It's allowed. All five of Loud pushing here. Still the operator for Zekin. They're trying to get an orb. Yeah, less. He's one away from his Viper's pit. Nothing to stop this. You have your own Viper's pit. And I guess they're like feeling if there's enough pressure, if there's enough force this way that the Viper's pit. They try to aggress, and again, like, this is something the Sentinels have tried to do a couple of times, mostly towards A. But Loud have been reading it so well that they don't really get caught by it too much. Like, Loud playing against this uh, Gecko Dizzy is getting so much value. Even if there's anybody close, there's still this Viper's Pit, but how are you going to use it? You're just constantly pushed up and... Yeah, like Josh said, this second holding A alone with an AWP. Oh, there's the re-aggression, but the trade was good. Tens is still alive. Shock Dart, is it enough to do damage to get a kill? Not quite. Tens still having one flash. Gonna try and re-peak again. The aggression from Sentinels is nice. And Calentine's absolutely fucking fluffed it. Reckoning's got to be used to buy some space. They're even going to break the wingman. Figure that they have a bit more time. And Zekin was about to stop it. He might be able to, yeah. Uh, like a weird round with how they were playing that. Who was it that pushed here to try to break the wingman? It was so scared of the wingman stunning them. But yeah, good bounce back. As he hears the drone coming through, which allows him to have... Uh, denial of the plant pressure at the same time as flashing through the wall, which is sick. Those kind of timings, beautiful. It's also rough from Kaunzine. Uh, Sadak. Let's go! Let's go, boys! So much utility pressure in that round. A lot better for I mean, that was the Pogchamp guy on the right. They stumped loud. Recon a little bit deeper, gets broken. Second one is to just get a little bit more out of this off. He's not been dying with it, but he's not been getting kills either. It's just not really been a value. Free, suppressed. I don't know if they got the recon, uh, Aldron. I think they did. Did they expect him to be on belt? Oh, he's whiffed. Second gets one, and he's still alive. He's sticking. He still has his dash. He didn't even activate it. Sadak's pushed up, got more, got Celsius. The aggressive alarm bot is interesting. Has to respect this because of the mosh. He's baited it out. He's planting, faking, and he's going back. Because he ex is expecting a read in this aggression that keeps coming out of Sentinels. Oh! Hmm, okay, interesting round. Wow, Loud are getting really, like, panicked by the aggression that comes out. Like, the disruptive utility that's coming in here is just a bit too much. But also... The defensive utility is lovely. They're throwing great util to stop the plant going down. And then also four versus five, too. Flash and pop back out. The Sentinels won. Fight loud. When loud don't really have utility available. Sadak anticipated it, fell back, but they didn't win the duels. This is aggressive. Yeah, time to show some disrespect, and he does get the value from it. Sadak playing that spot way more aggressively than Celsius was, too. Offering himself up as a pick. Kalantzine gets ult online. Can they cook some kind of play? Based Two players on here. Kind of four. I think it's going to be difficult. Sentinels having a good run of form here. Like Any ultimates to work with? You already lost Sadak. Sorry, I didn't even notice. Was that just from this? Alright, Zekin is getting that up to sing. Sixteen and fourteen. There's four kills in the last two rounds. He saw him, yeah. You've seen it. He is exposed, though. You are right. Many chances for him to be 
It's whether a player peeks him here at the same time or peeks him from under. Yeah, they just reek on it. Oh, he saw them going over the zip line, but can't quite get there. Zelsis, however, gets the one player in elbow. Operator shot. QCK is not afraid to keep peeking this and pushing this. He takes that space, smokes it to try to not get caught by a player pushing through here. Necessary in this, spot, especially this is kind of what you want to be seeing more out of him, though. There's the Karen ult, the one here that you look over in this spot, and it's just so big. Molly is good. Kind of separates the Viper away from everybody else. QCK is still alive, only just for a short second, though. Oh, he managed to jump out of the way from the players pushing him. Incredible. Was it the wingman that just survived it all? Because the UI went off. I thought he managed to get off. And they just assumed that it did. They didn't deal with wingman the entire time. When you're dealing with a player... I mean, everybody got baited by the UI. Because the UI had it that it was disarming. He doesn't care about it. Look at him. He is no man. He does not care. bro. Sliggy losing his mind. I mean, I'm more upset because I thought I didn't realize it was still diffusing. Are they on cut? They're still managing to have buys. Sorry, looking at the wrong team. Still the same, same point. How are they managing to like keep the money up? Because this is just all Sentinels now. Is it going to be another like 13-11 scoreline? He gets a tag, he gets hit by the knife and suppressed. I think it just gets the silver. It doesn't get these other players. So what have they got to work with? Not a lot. Tekken didn't get a kill after the one that he got last round. Yeah, I just can't. I get it. Loud, where are you planting? I feel like there's a part of me that's like Loud is just kind of fucking about with the plants too much. It's also not positioned over towards screens. Yes, it doesn't go as deep. Like but less. Going to make sure that there aren't people playing these aggressive post plant positions. And then no command. Oh, I don't. I, it's odd watching live with this. With a, a little, little bit. Just wants to take up the straight up. Chaos knife is really good. It out now. The molly is perfect, the but just Sadek somehow still surviving. Kaunzin goes down first down again for his team when they're fighting this. Lost less. Sadak's peeking, they know that he's beneath. Do they know where two E's is? It gets one, but he doesn't get the player defusing. Oh, it's close to. Oh. It's just so sad to watch for loud. They're just. I'd almost prefer that. Yeah, I mean, this time I could have come fucking two rounds ago, I think. The lockdown. Is so nice from Zelsis. Teams have come up with protocols to be able to deal with the lockdown that's over towards screens. They have a player up aggressive, or they have some kind of, you know, nade combo. Sadak has lineups for it too. But throwing that out in a different position. This is a hell of a combat though from Sentinels. How many rounds in a row has it been now? Like four or five? Start the retake proper. Now we've seen round 1920. Sentinels won by. Dragging the clock down and putting a lot of pressure on the plant itself and put Loud in a tough spot. Oh. Now they've also demonstrated in round 21 and 22 that their retakes can look... And these have been like four well. full buys where they've had ults. I mean, the last one they won was the like mid-round play. I mean, since then, it has... Like, Loud have just started just going in for like A execute, haven't they? Like last couple have just been straight A executes instead of when they went B, posted Sadak up on A and then returned. Hey for his mount, sad for loud. Yeah, it's just they're going to caveman brain of let's just hit A. Still with the Viper's pit. Still booga booga, you know? And all of this without Zekan really finding too much value from the operator in the last couple of rounds. Right? He's trying to take the timings and he's finding good openings, but he's not landing the shots. Here it looks like he wants to try and take this time. Seeing if they can... Now they're going to go B, which I feel like with a timer like this, Sentinels might read a bit more. But they actually don't have anybody trying to post up and lurk up here either. Drone. 
utilized by Lauta. It's going to be pushing up and taking this space with a lockdown. Feels like a B hit. Should be a B hit. Second. Where are you going? Where are you going? With four seconds left, is this being hell for? Yes. He hasn't face. got a dash either. He's fucked. He's so fucked. Uh, a little bit much. And they're just going back. Like the Thrash is just going to see that there's nobody here. And like Celsius now is gunning to catch the rotation. Maybe not gunning, but I thought he would just full on sprint. Yeah, he catches less mid lurking. So 4v4, yeah. Lot of mid control though. The Mosh is going to hit Zadak a little. Everybody's out though, just a little bit late. Watching Sadak on the Killjoy playing on A-Site is so stressful for me. He's just slamming his shit down and going for it. Great flash from 10s. Good peek onto QCK. Oh, man. Sentinels could do no wrong here. Two E's, one versus three. John has his ult too. Celsus has seen him. There's an alarm bot here too. Sassy sticking half already. Options dwindling. Oh, man. They can't quite do it. There's an absolutely incredible resurgence from this team on this map in particular. I mean, they're looking to seal this one up. Is it going to be OT? What's the buy like? It's got to be that. And the Sen retake was too much. It's another four versus five. The Sentinels have won. The flash to be able to catch QCK is lovely. And then Sen players playing high low positions. Even if they don't work, I love that you want to be. Yeah, it's great. Communication. The read from Zelsis, though, as soon as the Thrash doesn't get much information to go and get posted on this angle, it's fantastic. I do feel a loud of overcooked it up by not going B. This time, they're just going to go for a straight A execute. They get the first kill, but that's meant very little so far. Second survives, though. They still have the up. They still have Viper's fit from John, but I don't know where you'd use it in these instances. They're going for the Cove plant. Snake bite. I don't know where the snake bite would have gone. I think it was just here. But it hasn't done any damage to these players. Man, peak is good. Two E's just sort of caught out. Really awkward fights. They know that QCK is below. They break the dizzy. Alright, OT it goes. Finally, Loud able to get that round that's been eluding them for so long. Mm -hmm. This is scary for Loud. Even if we go to Sunset now, I'm like less convinced Huge that it's going to be their way. Their to crumble. A reminder, we've obviously never had that 2-0 between these teams this year. We've had more back and forth occurrences. That little resurgence from Sen has taken us to a spot where... It does look like QCK, glass cannon operator. It. Of course, it was loud. You know, they won that one 2 0 in their initial matchup in 2024. Fought back immediately by Sen in the finals when they took it. An absolute. Well, I've had yells on 19 Back kills and 14 nine. deaths. World class game from both of these teams. Hmm. Pushed once more. It's Sentinels attacking first. 4 1, just pushing up. Dark. Seeing if anybody's going to aggress. Okay. Doesn't look like it so far, but he operates on a really nice spot. The knife doesn't tell you too much about where they'd be positioned. The dizzy also goes off, but the flash doesn't connect. Cascade is nice. Aggressive angle. Is this going to be traded? Yeah, and that is traded too. Oh, I don't like that fight from Kowenzine. I, I don't like some of the stuff that Kowenzine is doing by just peeking and fighting this. Like, you're sober. You've got your Aldra and you've got your shocked out. You don't need to be fighting like these aggressive angles that a jeweler should be on, maybe. Three versus three, yeah. This pit would be really nice. Three versus two, sorry. Can drop it at any point to try to set up the double face. Up side by side, top rafters, two years. One versus three. Two E's is low. Oh my god, that's Yeah. Why would you give that to him, Sadak? Oh, uh, two E's plays it well. Fuck me. And he's free HP too. Like E. John was thinking about just slipping away. 
But loud. Why are you cheering for loud anyway? Is it because it's green and you're Irish? Or are you suddenly just a Brazilian esports fan? Like, I don't know what other esports you would follow that loud would be playing in. I don't know if you know them from other places. So we're going into it. Sen kept to 12. Second is I'm going for the same thing. The glass yeah. cannon off. They have not found success with this particularly. But they've been winning anyway. That must loud. I just <laughs> dislike Sen really. I mean, I predicted. I'll look it up in a second if it ends here. Very close. I had loud winning sensibles in this, so I'm just cheering for them purely for my pickums. Where that came from? The rest of his team. This is it. Set up for success. Set up for map three, and you got to think it. Nice, QCK. Oh, it's all just faltered. Like sensibles did so well to like claw this back. It's a fairy tale moment for Zekin. It will have to be, and he doesn't expect it. They're up there. So 14 to 12. Loud. They are going all the way. All right, sunset. Uh, I think I think sunset for loud is looking good. We'll see. What did say, Lampiel? Was difficult for loud to deal with, but they found the adjustment in the final moment. Huge from Sadak and the rest of the crew. I think QCK played a blinder of the game there on Jet, putting the doubters to bed. Absolutely. Set up for a good one. It is set up for a good one. Sunset will be the decider. And what a map to end on for both of these teams. I like his heart. So you're telling me that your reason for cheering for loud is because you have the username of a bandit leader who has a cool hat that so happens to be from Brazil. Look at this fucking anime out of him too. Pretty much. That honestly is not like the least surprising thing. At least there's some, like, lore in there. But, um... Let's go self-NA. That is also a very good way of putting it. Um, but what was I saying? Um... I just think Lime Piao is a really good name for a monk, to be fair, in World of Warcraft. Feels like a very, um... Like... Mandarin inspired word, I guess. I think I would have thought that would have been something that would, uh, you know, keep people in. Uh, what are the stats for sunset? I'll also need to sort out some food for me and Beth. I might need to go and get it. For sentinels. They played it four times. What are they on? One free lost one. The one that they lost. Oh, who was it? Was it loud the first time? Their attack side's a little bit rough. Um, their defense is solid. The attack side from pa uh, Paper X. The attack side from loud is good. Their defense is also like good. But I don't know what their stats are for like um, maps again. Who's attacking? Sentinels are attacking. So you're going into a strong side. A weaker side for Sen. A good first half is sort of needed, I think. I know what were they running. Phoenix, Silver, Breach, Omen, Viper. No Sentinel. That's not too surprising. Gecko, KO, Omen, Cypher. I think it's just how much... Like, how much control QCK gets in B main, and how well they shut down, like, any John QT lurks. Because if it's going to play out, like, split, I think I'm getting a little bit worried for how loud a plane is. Because they had Sentinels running rings around them, especially, like, on their defense. The top three people on Clutch's tournament are all on FPX. I don't think the stat says a lot because it's like they might have 100% clutch rate, but they've all each won one because they've played the least this event. Like Heretics got to play an extra map. And then obviously EDG and uh, Kamen Kong got to play an extra series. So I think that might just be because FPX have played the least. They might have just won one clutch out of one.
All right, we got the, the desk to tide us over. I'll run some ads. I'm going to sort out some food for myself and Beth. And then we're back for map three. So don't go anywhere. This will be a, a hell of a day. Hell of a way to finish. Loud. They take things equal, which means we will go the distance and see map three. I'm your host, Yingson. I'm back here with Mimi and Hypog. Uh, did we maybe believe a little bit the comeback was real? I, I, I really did. Sentinels nearly pushed us all the way, but Loud, I mean, they started that first half looking incredibly dominant. Their protocols on this map look incredible. I mean, to be honest, it looked like two different teams. Obviously, Loud being the headliner here, a massive swing back into Icebox, but uh, a couple of concerning rounds there from Sentinels, considering what we've seen them really dial into on split. But they started being defined by Loud's retakes yeah, on the defense, yeah. and that's where this team absolutely thrives. I think, in particular, the way that they're setting up to play these retakes on that B site were really impressive. Here, here's a few of these rounds to take a look at, right? This team just having, I, I feel like, really good synergy on when they're bouncing between these pieces of utility, right? It's that first stage coming in with the dart clearing back site, and then they're really leveraging this harbor utility to set up cover for the planner and fight deep in these post plants and force Sentinels to lose, even when they have a comp that's built to win these post plants with a ton of mollies. Yeah, and I think actually this is the example we saw where we got a little bit of a react from Zekin afterwards. Uh, but I mean, you say loud retakes, there were a couple here. The Sentinels almost just completely forgot the timings on it. Uh, talking about, you know, some of the, the mollies to buy time. Uh, run down the clock a little bit, but the the, the big di difference between these two teams is Loud's ability to demonstrate this on both sides. Yeah, let's take a look at those uh, post plants in just a moment as well, because I think that's the round you meant, Mike, where I think he was saying something like, chill with the mollies. Yeah, chill they with the mollies. A yeah. bit too early. I mean, there were two examples that almost felt a, a, a little egregious, criminal, sure. that they lose those post plants. And, and remember, in a game this close, those were the rounds that were make or break for Sentinels losing the map. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, this is the one I think it was. Round three was the one that Zekin did have a little uh, reaction here, but it just felt like everything gets dumped at the same time when they have everything. Like you said, this is a composition built towards finding clean entries, minimal utility invested on the way in, forcing Loud back into a five-man retake, which looked fantastic for them. But this one, Sentinels almost just gave this away. Yeah, and, and we really build up how good the protocols are, how perfect Sentinels look on a map like Split. But on the other side, I mean, remember, this team has had to play a ton. Cap was saying they've had to show everything and I think we start to see that a little more on this map like this reaction Guys, from Zekin. Calm the mollies. Yeah, we really I mean, it's exactly. You, 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 can, you can watch this back. You see another example as well, but he, yeah, round eight uh, was another one where it's, uh, in terms of the plan, the initial plan come into the round, it's executed to perfection. Loud play into it perfectly. Sentinels are set up for success and it just seems like I don't know if people are just jumping the gun a little bit. There's a little bit of uh, misinformation being spread internally within comms, but um, yeah, a little bizarre to see considering how clean their protocols were on split. We went into this hearing that ha uh, that kind of between map interview from Kaplan where he said the team is really good at kind of finding the right energy, knowing when to yeah. calm down, knowing when to heat up. And I think we saw that on display here because it went from, from that, you know, Zekin giving some feedback, some of these post plant rounds that shouldn't have falling apart to in a second half, Sentinels looking absolutely revived and pushing us all the way to overtime with great retakes of their own. Yeah, you can't help but feel if it was just one or two of those post ones that win their way, maybe yes. it wouldn't have different even gone story. to Very overtime. Different. And they want both pistols as well, let's not forget. Uh, but let's talk about Les a little bit as we move on to uh, map three, because again, on that map, he was so impactful, <laughs> so crucial to keep them in it. I mean, we said uh, ahead of this coming in, Les is usually the superstar on Icebox and uh, another one, add this one to, to the collection, because uh, just individually this time, time and time again, in the right place, the right time, and he delivers back, back against the wall it could be a 1v3 he could be solo anchor in sights he's just constantly delivering for loud yeah that's the thing that really st stuck with me right how good he is at getting a kill as anchor and always getting away yeah. it's insane how much just survivability the man has especially when he when he's holding down towards that b side he's always getting a frag falling back and then using his mollies really uh, tactically to be able to set his teammates up when they're playing into these retake rounds he's such a star and he implements into the team perfectly yeah well let's talk about sunset real quick because these are the agents uh, for Lex, selects for that. Uh, what do you make of this, Mike? I mean, but well, back to the default, basically rerun of the, the grand finals, to be honest. But obviously you're going to see this is the map where we see the Phoenix come out once again. Uh, I have questions still about this composition, but it's, it's the way that they apply it. We did see some better... Um, 
but well, sh showings of uh, sure. proactivity, but I'm still not completely sold. I think the strengths of this comp for Light on defense is fighting for extremity control. Yes, using yeah. that breach, using that omen line control to set the Phoenix up. They also have great alts to cycle through and win out these rounds. But Sentinels, their strength, second half is going to be retakes. This first half, their comp is actually really strong at shutting down that extremity control. Expect a lot of early battles. This map's going to be important. Only one of these American squads get that guaranteed spot in the top three. Yeah, loud. They've done so much already to push it to here. Let's see Bren and Saisho if they can get their revenge. Metro be fantastic for this loud squad. I mean, they could be hunting for it off the back of the regional finals, but it's a hard task ahead of them. Still heading to sunset, especially with you know, Sentinels making it as difficult as possible for them to get it over that final hurdle. They have to go to OT for Icebox. It's a chance as we could have seen it just end in a 2-0. Yep. All Sentinels themselves. Absolutely possible. But I've got to tell you, Brent, out of all three maps that we had in the pool today, the one I'm most excited for is this oh. here, Sunset. The comp's the same, it looks like it. Last time they matched up, I think, I think Louder a dangerous team to go up against, especially in decider maps like this. So here we go, into the pistol. Three players from Loud grouped up. There's Loud's attack inside that's this map might end better. Up a little like Split. Where Sen want to be cautious. The attack inside is rough. Let me double check. Making the play. Not that one. Really, any util? Gotta be ready though. Dart doesn't reveal second. How right, does that not reveal second? There must be a bit of geometry, maybe. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it does. His attack inside is a little bit worse. The There's not really, really too much to go off. A preset plan, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. To insert second here behind. I mean, the uh, attack inside for loud is better. So it's like even if this is equal, you still sort of fancy loud. But I think you want to do the most damage here. If you're going to have like a 7-5, you're golden. It's actually two E's really pushed up over towards A that I've got my eyes on at the moment. Just jiggle in this corner, like I said. On split. Does not have the paranoia? Just he's going to run away. Here's the flash being sent fly. Oh, and he actually gets dinked. Oh, the Dizzy actually did connect onto Loud there. the frenzy. Like just with how loud, uh, loud, how high it was. Shugda is for safe, but the planet is a different one. Recon pings a lot. The four versus five. A lot of utility used, but it's all just like missing. Oh, the flash onto Sadak. All of these players, it catches them completely out. They do line up. Nicely done. Good pistol from Loud. But I really like some of the utility that Sassy was using on Gecko. I was watching the way that they dismantled EDG, and one of the big things they were amazing at was marvelous. And Sentinels on this Massively pistol like tried to that. do something very similar. They insert second deep up mid, uh, create a distraction elsewhere, and try to get kay. value with second creeping through. Sadak is always wary of that kind of stuff. And here, Sen forced to try to fight a bit more aggressive in the post plan. Just couldn't quite find it. Just got squeezed. Means a lot. Big pistols that, to be winning. The kills that Sen got online, they're looking to try to force into the next. I feel like the money's good enough. And they got quite a few kills. I mean, three kills plus the plant. It's not a bad buy. What direction do you take it into? It looks like mid. You have the breach in the Phoenix goal. towards A. This is a real gamble, though. If it doesn't pay off for Sen, they're going to give Loud so much money. Do you know who the highest rated controller at Champs 2023 was? He might well have the alt online at the end of this. He's got to pick up the alt top on A. Breaking the door with the pistols. With 100 plus rounds. Uh, not off the top of my head. Trying to avoid notifying Loud that they have forced up into this. Dizzy wide with the flash. It's all connected together. The QCK has to respect that one, just backing for now. Drone. Doesn't Drone? Yeah, it doesn't get anything. So Zekin's in a this nice little spot. Is such a blind spot in the way that Loud are playing mid. Yeah, two E's on a similar position that he was here. Balkum. But like I'm saying, Bren, EDG tried this kind of setup where. You yeah, know, I want to guess that. And get a look. And Sarah Kukawansi just shut it down every time. 40 seconds, barely. Is there, is there much that you can do with this position now, realistically? It's like holding this. It's a good stuff. Aggressive angle to be on. And then four versus four. So they can start to play this post plan, but do they really want to do this? Just with the stingers. 
It was Demon Mon. I didn't realize how much uh, controller he played. Paranoia. Used in response to this one, and a second flash sets them back up, but a deep smoke. After really the stun's really the nice. The mosh is good. Tanzine has to go. The wingman to stop people from pushing you. This is a really good round so far. Oh, he dinked him. He's sticking it. He's got it just... I don't know how he managed that. That was way too chaotic. Because they're both like 37 HP. He just tanked it. Yeah, did not care. Yeah, this is like these kind of positions, late round post plant. Like that's something that um, Lab need to be careful of. Against EDG, Chichu specifically, they were really good at like flushing out that lurk player, catching him out on his own, making sure that they would deal with the lurk if they were like top mid. But um. Yeah, I'm just kind of went from that spot, so I'm just got to keep my phone open. Oh, and it was a falls from Sentinels, actually. I didn't even clock it. The target you really want to be prioritizing these kills on to when he gets his ult on line, which he already does. I mean, he already had it. Why are they not using the Heretics one? Why smokes for retakes? You mean the attack ones? The ones that they do on attack like this? Or oh, do you mean this one or this one way? Because we're only seeing it having failed, but really there was a lot of danger there in, in round two. There were possibilities for them. And you think if it works out, listen, Sen got on the other foot when it comes to the old cycle. Yeah. Start building them up ahead of them. They have the economy on their side, but simply not the reality we live in, though. And that, no. that's the first time that Sen have gone down early in a half. Remember, they won the pistols every other time across split. And what are they trying to do? This is a new a very specific placement, I guess, of the poison cloud. I don't know how we missed it the first two times. Dizzy just to see whether anybody's yeah, get off fly, see if anybody's pushed up mid. Which is a bonus, it's like a good shout, because people might try and do this. There was a deep dart set up earlier, so he's got this deep line down into A. He's gonna be giving a lot of mid-round information again to his. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there was a tax smoke here and then a smoke in here. Why would you expect it? Rush is going to be used. And he just gets out. I don't think you would. But it's whether, like, this omen could get a peak. Oh, he gets two, and there's, there's another one nearby. The flash is amazing. Oh, I just ran out of bullets. Amazing 3k. That's the omen life. That's what you want to see. Second round of Frash. Gonna go CT. Has to be broken. Overheat by two E's. Yeah. Nice, nice shot, Viper. I guess. Oh, and caught out. Sassy was just ready to wait and face. Okie dokie. What do we like now? The shot on Kalantin is good, but it's also like jumping stun was kind of out there. Well, I thought there was a good he was yeah, it was a bonus, yeah. Like it. Maybe a few more bullets he could have it's still like sloppy from loud. No, it was a bonus, but it doesn't mean that so they can't play badly. Knife is destroyed, so they know that there's somebody that's pushed into B main. Any information? So they know that somebody's in B main, they know that nobody's pushed out mid. So the plan is to try and go through market. I guess, like, if they know that one player is maybe focused on taking this. That's one player here, one player maybe here. Let's focus on market. So loud have done well to like break the knife, put some like pressure here, and then double up in market. So if there's that sort of swipe that comes through, you're going into two. Juki, thank you very much for the raid. Hope you had a good stream. Were you playing Valorant as well? Are you watching BCT? What have you been up to? Throw it in like they could be. Folding into a different direction. This, this, this pause in the round of a crossfire. This pause oh my in the God, round is really just going to waiting. 
Uh, risks from QCK and Cohenzie. You can hear the Prem game. Oh, yeah, it was, it was Prem at six. Did you win? Did you play the two games or did you just play the one? It's always... That's the most stressful part of Prem is like maybe trying to get your weekly games done the two within the hour. But I also like the change of the punch Prem where you can't play the same team twice. Because we had that a lot. One buff is games that's very good. What's the, what's the map this... Uh, what's the map this week? I haven't played Premier at all this season. How many to Loud need? I'd be happy with five. Icebox. Oh, man. Oh, Tins is just eating all of it, and everybody else is saving. Six would be fantastic. Five would be good. Four's, like, not great. Three, that would be a disaster. But at least they've got three. Who understand also, I didn't change the, the title, which is kind of poopy. Like Sen versus Loud. That early economical um, advantage that Loud had to work with, it's, it's getting chipped away at here. It is. I mean, this it is really essentially is. Uh, eagle up. I mean, two of the players can't be buying. Yeah. And look, just seeing that on the replay again, it's such a large punish onto QCK. And it's all due to that freeze that John Cutie calls into the round. And he... Timeout to Sully, you're on an eco. Oh, you're on like a low buy by next kind of thing. You got some good ults. Is this a force or is this a buy next? It's kind of hard to know with the money. Lots of utility towards A, but they're just resetting and going B. Like they've used a flash, they used a dizzy, which they can pick up. They used a boom bot. Anything else that I missed? A smoke, I guess. They shouldn't be too worried about B main with the door being closed. I'll be looking for an orb on Zelsus. They smoked it, so this is a good read from Loud. Online, we'll be able to go for the B pop. He's in the 10 spot, yeah. Just avoiding it. Surely he gets cleared. <laughs> Snape bite in this, or did he get suppressed? He got flashed, so he's out. The mosh in backside. This poison cloud is nice. Do they know the Zekka has pushed past this? With this mosh, I don't think they'd think so. Yeah, they didn't expect him that close. But it's fantastic trade. Here comes this late lurk. This is something that Chichu was trying so hard to do against Loud for EDG, but it never worked. Here, however, this could work fantastic. All right, he gets the Phoenix. Just as the Phoenix came in with Vault, I guess. Cam round the back, louder left, really scrambling, looking for options, and they've decided to take the fire. Oh man! Oh no! Cowan's eating can't catch a fucking break these last couple of maps. They know that the last is behind. Is the time? They don't have time. They owned it, but they didn't have time. What a bonkers round! What is that? What an absolutely ludicrous round! I mean, I couldn't keep up. Good job of putting pressure forwards into B main. That's where most of the post on B is going to come from. Is this How did you fuck it up, Kalenzin? Loud really did a great job of that. Being able to. I mean, they should have been able to catch tens earlier. Let's go. But the flank timing coming in from John and tens and. Uh, bye again. Uh, I mean, this is like. They, I think they needed to be a timeout, like. Last round or this round. Oh, Unless, again, it's like Sadak is making the right calls. A bit of a repeat here for is looking to challenge B main. So much pressure, like four players facing. He's got to be super careful here. There's a rolling fund. It might not even matter. Like, if he goes down, all of these big ultimates that they have to work with, they've seen the spike. Just get out, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. It for seconds, so tight to the angle there. Very confident too. Necessary kill for him. He's not Flash. TP's gonna cross. They're so scared. This is such a late rotation because of John. They're so scared of like the lurk. But they know that the Cypher's now on site, so the rolling for this is gonna be used. Showstop is used on attack to buy some more time. This can't be pushed. You have to shock and the molly is really nice, but Tens is just baiting out that utility and he's TP'd into a better spot. The rolling funder gets nothing because of that zoning ultimate the Zekin used. Great fight from John. 
turns it into a two versus two. Two tagged up by the knife, but just a tap onto the head. Spot he just stood out in the open. Zelsis is good in these. Time. Oh, he gets it. Is there enough time? I think he does, just. He did. Four seconds. Who are we rooting for? For me personally, loud. Because I picked them in this. Like, it's, I'm just saving my pickums. And despite John's best efforts. Can't see this being a mess in the box. Yeah, true. Little bit more patience from Zelsis would have done it. Oh. Gonna be kicking himself. Can't offer loud opportunities. I'm ready for loud, but I did pick Sen. I think I'm the op like I'm the opposite. Like I picked loud, but I'd like Sentinels to win. It's the kind of whole like if Sentinels win, it would have been a good series. Um, if they lose, then my pickums are right. That's kind of the same for Paper X, I think. Second and tens are looking to try to explore mid again. They haven't done this in a while. Where's the fresh? Broken instantly. And like now it's a tight hold. Because it forces these players. Oh, that's nice. I like this from Sentinels, but loud of like steady there. Because of this fresh being broken, it's forcing loud to face this more, which gives up some of the space the Sentinels tried to clear here. Where the players are gonna be coming from. Sassy. Last one left. Some of these players are buttered up, though. QCK. Gets the one, backs out, 50 seconds. Can he pit? Uh, now the fresh is long gone. <laughs> it always gets me listening to the yes, nine bullets. fans chanting against Sassy. I just, it just seems so wrong. He's in a very difficult situation. Nine bullets didn't opt to reload. Didn't want to give. I wonder why he didn't reload. I guess he just wants he to clear some of these angles. Maybe he could get something done. He doesn't have this is so risky. And there's a gun on the ground at least, so if he gets some damage done. Just wanted to get the one before he shows himself up. Oh, the recon's shown him. Oh, they're going to do it one at a time. He's 5 HP. Come on, Sadak. Oh, oh my god, what a clutch. Oh, how did he manage this? Silencing the Brazilian crowd. But also, loud, like, time out here, right? Surely. Give him a minute. Unbelievable. I've seen Sassy get these before when he was playing in America. He gets headshot for the box. The gecko. The fact he can be so far away from where the plant goes down. His positioning is just immaculate. It's crazy. Sassy as a player. We needed to see a big step up. He was Norden 6 when it comes to those first kills, the first deaths last map. Wasn't having a good game. Free fire with a knife, less lucky. Relatively unscathed. A headshot should kill. It's, yeah, it's so unfortunate. Still, like I said, one more round and I think Loud are fine. Massive round up. Still left reeling myself. Flash clearance, snake bite to respond. And Loud are going exploring through mid. If send back off here, we have to back a off a little bit more. And I do like this. This is one of the things that like why I rate loud so highly. Like this is Nika. They're not really gonna have a chance to win this. But I like the proactive taking of space, especially when I don't have Sentinel. This is being watched. Townzine, just a double take. Neural thefts. Gonna give that there's more shock dart. Breaks the trip. It. Okay, we've been found out. Got to back away now. Just try and flood back into this. Do some economic damage. So, Util flying forwards here. Oh, yeah. Push think... away the plan though. So still, spike down and out. I think the thing that's the okay. more frustrating about like how Kaunzine's playing, he feels so like separate. It's like how Mind Freak was in the first series. Much danger. It shouldn't be dangerous, but like I think it's just way shot. too like he's peeking ahead of everybody else when he's like supportive. QCK, hello. Rattling their heads now. You force out the Frash, which is really nice. He popped the ult. So he's going to lose that impact to the ultimate. He's not going to get killed, at least. Ooh, nice shots, but there's no time. Jesus, Lord. It's so unlucky. All right, I need to go grab S food, so give me a minute. But one team's got an enormous advantage. They've got rifles. They're in a post-plant position. And yet, it still feels 
like any team can take it. We've had some rounds go down to defuses with a fraction of a second left on the clock. We've had a 1v3 played by Sassy. Okay, we got it. Don't care, we got it. Exactly. <laughs> That is going to harm the economy, but not in a way that has immediate effects. But it's going to keep a lid on Sen's economy getting out of control and going to allow Loud some opportunities to maybe play some anti-ecos later on. But five out of six of the most recent rounds have all gone the way of Sentinels after Loud got off to that hot start. And to be honest with you, I'm not mad at all at the way that Loud are playing. Because Think back to Sassy's 1v3. Okay, in order to get into a 1v3 situation, Loud had to play that really well, and they did. They collected on the mid play. They got themselves into a player advantage. They just lost out because there's beasts on the other side of the stage. There's no player on either of these rosters that doesn't deserve to be here. Everybody capable of stepping the hell up. Yeah. Speaking about that, you look at the scoreboard, QCK is the player in position to do the most of that. It's less actually who we haven't seen as much from. Usually, we're expecting less to just be hyper consistent, finding his moments to have value, even though he's playing the Viper. With this composition, he does end up being pretty stuck over towards B. And Senna been playing so grouped up, he hasn't really found those opportunities. Different defensive setup, though, again, being run here from Loud. As Kawanzin and QCK move their way over the B. Just calling up the back of the Natuyas. This time, standing strong, just trying to brave the onslaught as well. A rush of players now ready to push him back and away. Zels is getting the ult online, can counter Sadak. You can see Sadak getting set up to go for the ult. Oh, they just rip it anyway. Okay. Send it out wide. Smoke's not even propped up yet. Yet, Zekken in position, breaking. It's for the Tart, now a plant. What's the next fight layer fight. of this one? Sentinels, do they have anything cooked up to try and fight this one further? Normally, Loud are going to throw in a lot of utility early Hello. for plant denial. Hunter's Fury. Molly's going to be used towards the back of the side. Hunter's Fury. There's the connection. Second falls. A couple of beams of that one, but still not being dislodged from these positions. Tent up top. Familiar angle. Has the old now for a classic reposition. Alton to the back of the side. Could be anyone's game on a knife's edge. Every single instance. Tens sticking. The plow. Well, not quite already with the Alton to the back, but he has been cleaned up. Two years there. It's a 1v2. Taps it. Gets sassy. Doesn't give him anything. Still bides his time. Waits no it time. out. And now it has been fully drawn Sorry. down to the final moments. All the kills going Loud's way, but not the round. Same God, it's the same thing's happening. Same thing again. The retakes Did I just miss the one round? But just not enough to be able to get over the line for loud. It's Ten's position, I think, here that is the magic. Look at him, the way that he's able to wiggle out and avoid being traded because he's got the pillar to dance around. It looks lovely. The way the center setting up these post plants is dealing with a lot of what loud are going for. And when you saw loud demolish EDG here, one of the things they were doing on that AW. There was a timeout and then I just missed that round. Making it uncomfortable for EDG to get <sighs> into good post plant spots. But well, they can't do that when Zelsis is ulting them. Man, Sentinels are just doing so much damage in these post plants. All these close rounds just going down straight to the wire. Again, economy. It's not good. No. And how many times have we said that? It's just been a running theme. Normally, because Sen get out to such a hot start yeah. in every half, this time they actually had to grind their way back me? into ecoing loud. Thank you. And off the back of a 1v3 from Sassy, too. Ridiculous recovery. Straw. First plan from Sen is sloppy, though. They're buying time, that's all that matters, really. For a stack over towards B. Yeah, you look at the money, considering they win like three in a row, four in a row. Time again. Disrespecting them though, just holding the angle for some util needs to. There's a paranoia. Yeah, I mean, what is the timing of this? I don't know. I mean, he's found okay, it. he's found something. Maybe just hearing the footstep, but. Yeah, but he doesn't have anything to do it off. Gives up the space, just seeking to delay as long as possible. Sense like it's though, just the sound like that it's multiple. Really trying to make this feel like this you also like. Four, so all right, the scythe is there, so you don't need to watch the flank as much. Unless Tens has been flanking, but I don't think that's likely. That's a really nice recon. The flash is good. They're all on safe. The stun is perfect, but they just peaked beforehand. <laughs> it's Tens again, man. You can't get away from him. Playing that post-plant position. 
over towards a link swings around gets three and saves the rest of his team man qck is 15 and 8 and they're still losing they look over that's a terrible post mod to be playing against yeah or playing the position at least well you see how i said before that like five rounds is enough are you sure by able to flood defend and throw that utility you don't need to give me this thank you get into post line positions oh, yes, and tens bails them out top of the look at me Looking... doing things fantastically playing from similar spots deep cross map knife what's it is a mcbang watch party now that's going to give them a good idea about what the defensive setup looks like. I don't need to say other fast foods are available. Uh, five fell out. Like, their attack side is really good. So good indicator now. But with how right time to strike, this crash. is going, like, it just seems to be all sent. They cut up the side, actually, through the back here. There's a detainment into mid, but won't be any follow-up. At least onto that one. QCK should be alive as well. It's just a backup from the rest of the plan. No chance for them to use a second thrash, though, which is... <laughs> A shame, I guess. Yeah, this is stopping people pushing up. But I mean, I feel like Sentinels will still have some way to play around this. They have a paranoia still for tens. Running back's going to be used to clear out all of market. Oh, and against else this just beforehand. Really quite aware of that one, Dizzy. Tagging away. Second spam. Dart. Here we go. Only three players left now. Loud. Fast on the approach. After shock there, but a quick TP into the corner. Paranoid audio. Paranoid's being used. Stay by Molly. Look at all of this utility. Tens is just stuck. Really good retake there this time from Loud. I feel like I'm just calling everything. I think I'm good to see if I predict the future. Sentinels are going to pick up the pistol. Let's see if that happens. They called the heart pretty well. The pit to be able to flood into back B site and the way that they dealt with the aggressive players forwards was lovely. It was anybody's game though. And I think Loud need really another pistol to be able to get back into this. Yeah. It's hard to say, but so tightly contested. And the exception of being our first map, but it has just been back and forth we go hmm. between these two teams. Absolutely incredible stuff. I don't know if they lose. We'll see. Sou o Kalanzin, sou iniciador da Loud. Senti muito bem. A EDG é um time que, para mim, tem um dos melhores players individuais. E acredito que o deles não estava no 100% deles. O Kankan é um player, é um star player. E acho que ele não performou tão bem. Então, acho que o principal motivo disso foi a nossa individualidade hoje, que estava muito boa. Então, acho que é, depois que a gente corrigiu os erros contra, contra a Genji, a gente estava bastante confiante. Já. Acho que a partida contra a FPX deu uma confiança muito boa pra gente, então acho que a gente esperaria que ia ganhar assim deles, mas ninguém esperaria esse stomp. Né? Cara, a gente não esperava isso, mas acho que nós tivemos um plano de jogo muito bem executado pela nossa parte. 30 seconds. They have no map control. They are just looking to take it to the elbow, the flash. Perfect. He hasn't killed anyone yet, but QTK! He just slaughtered every member remaining of EDG! Eu acho que a Sentinels é um dos melhores, ou se não, o melhor time aqui do campeonato do, de Madrid. Cara, acho que o diferencial deles é que eles jogam muito bem como equipe. Quer dizer, tem um star player que é o Ziken, mas eles jogam muito, muito bem é, como um time. E acredito que todo mundo pode performar muito bem lá e ganhar um clutch ou talvez levar a partida sozinho. Rapaziada, muito obrigado pela torcida. Quero agradecer muito, principalmente, a minha família, meus amigos que me mandam mensagem no, no WhatsApp, que me ligam. Estou muito feliz que, que a gente conseguiu fazer isso e classificar para o playoff. Só quero pedir vocês, fãs, que continuem confiando na gente. A gente vai dar o nosso melhor. E vamos tentar right. conquistar, conquistar esse título para casa. Eu tenho muita vida, mas eu não tenho tempo para wolf it all down. Eu estava muito keen em comer o que eu posso na hora do break. Praise for his opponents. I mean, talking all the talk there about Sentinel's team play, and it goes to show as well. I mean, even praising Zekin as their star player. Now, Zekin's at the bottom of the scoreboard right now for his team. Yeah. And yet, still, Sentinels are holding a lead 7 to 5 when they had an absolutely horrific start to the entirety of that half. Yeah, and actually, I think the story over the last couple of maps has been not so much Sen getting the advantage at the beginning of the round, but just having really strong ways of being able to close things out. Tens has been amazing in those spots. And so we go into a pistol, which is insanely important, especially for Loud, I think, to be able to get online. All five going up through Alley. Picks a mid-round timing. Knife is broken. Could be anybody there. Back out. 
Still Tenzer's TPs have been exceptional. <laughs> like, the skill ceiling of, like, using such a basic bit of utility is being made better. That is unreal. Damage has been done. Definitely the Zeltas here. So kill shot will do it. Touch close. There it is. Straight to the chest. Drunk QT. All right. Never mind. I, um, I can't tell the future. What did I say? They lose. I mean, I wanted to see if it was true or not. <laughs> To have not won a pistol round the entire series and then get both of them in the decider map could end up being crucial. No way of knowing yet. But Senna certainly not going to force into this one again. Uh, on the defense side, not as many kills. That's Big pistols to get play. though for loud. Massive really pistols. One. But the fact that QCK was the tip of the spear is going to start building his way up to the Phoenix ult. And Loud started that with such a contacting approach. To give anything away, main benefit of it being that Loud they have tons of util left saved for the big site hit, especially over towards A. Difficult one to try and get through. To clear through elbow, lots of corners. I think Loud have got the read now that this was not a heavy A setup. They are just charging their way forwards. Yeah. As soon as they don't meet people early, they realize that they've essentially got a free plant off. Good post plan position as well. Just the spike to be dropped down, laid down. Snake bite. Well, eco for sentinels like as well. No fast up. Utility here, rather than trying to save it. So they can take an early fight. And you're right. I mean, could get costly. Normally, you want to be saving these pieces of util, but clearly sentinels. Push out from CT now. Feeling like it could be winnable, but really nice match. one way. Looking like a really we good anti eco too. Nicely done. Retakes on A once we have rifles online, but that was very easily cleaned up. I think that's going to put people in positions where they need to go for light armor. QCK having almost double the kills as Sassy. Yeah, QCK has found a bolt. Like, I guess in these instances, I think Sentinels would gravitate to playing Phoenix on this map. Because they do like the sort of like alt rotation, getting stuff early for a bonus, seeing if that can sway the map in their direction. Bonus round QCK is looking to do the same. Got plenty of danger in it. I mean, that ran it back earned. QCK, this guy is frying. I mean, he's 20 and 10 currently. In the top. No the score. We're at the top here, though. It's happened. A face. That contact play style. Finally, punishment in place. Yeah, but I mean, what, <laughs> what a spray from Zelsis. Yeah. They're trying to punish the old pick up there, and they both get sprayed down. Targeted. The paranoia. Onto a spot that Tens is often like it to play, but it's second up there this time. In market. <laughs> the trip not broken, though. They know it's fake market pressure. Be. Yeah, this is a weird one. No way. Did they spot a hint of... I think they did. ...that question mark on the minimap? Oh, maybe. Yeah, pinged out, I think. Yeah, it is. Leaning the smug is perfect. He is a low player, but he decides to take the fight anyway, not set up onto that angle with any form of util. Sassy now, he's in a one and done. Dart has to be broken and he's revealed his position now. This is problematic. Shugdad doesn't really do that much damage. Paranoid to get behind and they've left the play with a spike on their own. Hmm. Yeah. players barely reacted. I don't think they knew where that paranoia was coming from. Has left less in a 1v3. In a much worse position. Kind of weird to just have the player with the spike left alone in LA. Because even then, like, he has to plant the spike and you've got a one versus one happening here. Less will just be trying to win this one while the rest of the team in silence scratches their head, wondering where it all went wrong here. That pick onto Zelsis puts Sassy in such a difficult position and the flank from B bailed him out. Yeah, weird decision, I think, from Loud, but they were on a low buy, so I'll give him some credit. How many risks they were taking on this round against the bonus round, right? You think about it, pushing through into B main. Yeah. Hard flanking through the back. Giving them all that information. Nice early initial fight, too. But I think going for flank plays like that oh, just plays Still really nicely loading. into Loud's composition, which lacks the cipher. Anytime you can get aggressive like that, yeah, yeah, go for it. Why not? Right. Not gonna have that information and gonna oh, it's all soaking wet. 
Phoenix not to be dislodged from this spot. There's a Phoenix flash in his face. Oh, That's going to be annoying now. A drop down. Paranoia now. TP, foe line, everything. The kitchen sink being tossed and turned. And shucked at the flash going out. He's right uh, behind the boxer with his trip. And gets a kill. Can't escape. So you got some pressure towards market. There's no other side for utility other than like the trip of the camera here. Rash is going to be used to go CT. You've got the Cypher peeking off of it to try to take top mid back. Top mid. Top A site. Top B site. Yeah. Hard post plan to beat here, but you have a second go to Frash. But you got to wait seven seconds, and I don't think there's enough time. You forced up somebody utility, and now they're looking to send the wingman. Somebody has to get on it. It gets one. Now the wingman's going to go in. He's trying to get the angle on it, but he can't quite do it. Is wingman going to do it again? No, he's killed. He's gone. What a round, though. Jesus, Lord, everybody goes down. And this game, more than any that I've seen, oh. has featured just everyone dead on both sides, kind of. Yeah, it's true. It's just everybody's a loser in these these rounds. Playing this kind of more passive setup over towards B with the post plant, but throwing a couple of people in aggressively to draw out early utility. Is the player that was detained too that gets the various kills? We could have had a very similar situation to Icebox, where little bros just sat inside the pit, just tinkering away, cutting the red wire. Yeah, it's a good heads up from Loud, though. They get the three kill spray and down. Yeah, rolling for the now. Good ultimates. Still a buy up here for Sentinels. They forced. Just because I guess everybody goes down, down and they're like, if we get an early kill. Incentivize Sentinels to go for the B push again. Is there going to be some kind of trigger? That's a good shout, actually, from Sideshow 2. Like, if they put that pressure A and it actually forces Sentinels to back out a little bit here, are these guys going to do this? The answer's no. Yeah, camera's just on this. Seeing if anybody would go past. I mean, this wall is just good for that, too. Like, walling this off, walling this off. Like, just scaring this as much as possible. The paranoia goes onto market. There's nothing else here. It did look like for a second a second was going to maybe like peek through that smoke, but decides against it. With this trip, you know that they're not coming through mid. Hence flash goes out as the rolling thunder hits. He tries to, he's actually TP'd into this corner. He's managed to get in. He's still there. <laughs> Dynamic duo just weaving in and out of the flood defense. This time, rain supreme. You haven't even planted. This map is set up so nicely for B flood defense. Like having 10 hits of flash against a rolling thunder. Any TPs over here? Survive and get a kill. Yeah, they just assume. Okay, nobody would be silly enough. Nobody would be whimsical enough. To take a teleport into the corner while up. Man, Tense is having a game on this omen. He's taken the brain of Angel and Redgar and combined it with the skill and impeccable timing of... Dude, I don't even know. I mean, himself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who, who's got it like he does? Yeah. He's stylish, man. He's stylish. But on a nice He's edge, climbing up. One of the only rounds, really, that just goes entirely the way of Sen. I was perchance the worst rolling from the ever. There was just no chance for a follow-up. Yeah, like, they're rolling funded and nobody was doing this. It was just a snake bite put back sight. Could see them pulling away. Right here. See you on the other side. Loud would love a right, the gecko flash. And KO knife as well. Unbreakable KO knife too, so get info on free. The flash just going over the top. Nobody's gonna to follow up on it though, and it's an eco for loud. This is gonna be ten for Sen. Stay by in a really good spot. The second isn't forced to peek out here just yet. There is also a dizzy if he wants to go for this peek, but he goes. Oh no, he does go with a dizzy. Sorry, but just the timing of it is just rough enough. All up, taking a pause into the round here off that initial kill. Just seeing if they can pull any of the send players. Yeah, the gun, however, lost in it. Like Zekin, I feel like staying here is good because it means that picking up the rifle here is tricky. Up until tens to smoke this off. So now that's a rifle. Calling for a reclear potentially of their own wingman. 
Subaru gets the acknowledgement. Yeah. Somebody's in elbow and also pushed up close. That gives you a good idea. It's going to be a re-hit. Tens takes the fight. Tens oh, the stun is good, but the reload is needed for QCK. That's unfortunate. Uh, 35 seconds now is getting a little bit tricky for time for loud. And Sarak is one away from his Hunter's Fury. You can't go back. They're going to go short. I mean, the smoke is about to drop now. Celsius is in a committed position. Really committed. It's the first phase coming through. It's just a and then John's just going to play off of him really nicely. Crumbling. Less. A couple of kills. It's all right, considering it's an eco. But just loudly to get these as rounds. Not about doing damage at this point. A little lost in that spot, though, man. That was a bit of a disappointing round. I wouldn't be surprised to see them take the time out. Mm. I think they have, actually. But okay. they call a pause in yeah, the round, out. right? On their attack side, but there isn't really a threat that they could be going for the hard rotate because John still got up all of his cipher utility. He's got a cam deep in B main. He's got a trip for market, and the players over in A link know that there's nobody lurking mid. So what exactly are Sen going to be afraid of? Especially when the sensible are just playing the info game really well. This is Paul. We go. Don't be scared. Let's go. Good. Don't be scared. Yeah, and on the other side of things, Sen building up that confidence. Making sure that everybody's on the same page. Vibes Merchant laying it down. Yeah. So this next rifle round. Again, it's a call for Sadak talking a lot. Well, I at least I'm saying sentence. So maybe, maybe I'm talking out my ass there. Pivotal in how this map goes. If Loud lose it after investing ults, which I'm sure they're going to go for, they'll be dropped back down to an eco and center basically at that point. Just on a coronation march. Oh, yeah. Right? They're going straight up. The upper round two of the playoffs. So this we feel that either of these teams team beat Gen G with the form that they're in. Put everything into it. Luckily, a few ults being earned. You see that run it back. I mean, it feels like QCK is never without it. You know, and I don't know. Such frequency, all the kills I feel better with Sen beating Gen G than Loud right now. But I think that depends on like a veto and if it's a free, best of three or best of five. Every now and then you might see it. All right. I wouldn't judge this game. I'm going to judge the maps. Like Sunset, not too much because I don't think we'd see it. I think mean, Genji would just ban it out. So Loud have to start a little further back, but they don't give away that there's two players over towards A. Stun for them to try to take a little bit of space. And look at John's setup again. Cam. I'm just thinking like more whoever wins the series, who do I fancy? Alright, you get some information at the Ray. Stray shots missed him. I don't think there's been any pressure. I don't think this camera has been broken at all. But they're not scared of mid, and they're not scared of market. Because you know that they're not pushed up. Like the cipher is just owning it. The shrug down this figure that's where it is. The nade gets two. There's no assist either, it's just off pure damage. Three versus three. Where can you go? Can you go anywhere? There's still a trip over on this side, across here, and then they're going to go A, which is a good call. They still know that nobody's gone up top here. And you got a Hunter's Fury. You've just used to run it back from Tui's aggressive position. 20 seconds. Open plant again, similar to the pistol. And some players in deploying drone. Potential positions to play a nice post plant too. You don't have to be worried about the initiator utility from Sen, which is the main part of it. But obviously, there's still danger with the paranoia. With the show I don't know about behind him too. I guess you have to be when you don't have a sense at all. Yeah, exactly. With that but like Sadak is wanting to recon this so he can get into a post plant position earlier with his ult. Stuck. Tens his forwards. He wins his fight. That is ridiculous. Still with a paranoia and out of showstopper. Seeking to commit this one. Oh, where these players might be, but the first tap at least forces out the old rocket flying. Again, clears the one, but on top of this corner, on top of the box, two years, has to reveal his hands. Oh, they might be able to stick it. This is sort of backfired for loud. Oh, he's got it. Who was it that went for this fight first? Is it here? And then two E's just been on this angle. Like, where are you? If you're planted for here, where do you plan to hold it post plant? Like, in alley? 
for like a third of a second before Tens even realizes where he's positioned. Still flicks straight to his head. Just 30 seconds. Crazy. Senna still finding their way through. And I said that was going to be the important round. Exactly. There's the money. Dire straits. Leon, Eco again. Yeah, Jesus, yeah. ladder falling apart here. Good info. Let's try to be on the angle. I feel like it just at this point, ladder boomed. They lost too many, like, close clutches and all that kind of stuff. And just, I, I don't know. Just, the magic wasn't going their way, I guess. Thank you, Lexi. Don't know what that was about. Still might be some danger. Might be too late. Two players spotted. One tagged up here. Shock dots now and the squeeze is online. QCK is wrapping around. Molly there. Oh, hello. Trip. Tens lit up. Entire Never seen so up. much value come out of the cipher here. Was John. Great crunch in B main though from Loud. Yeah. Sen couldn't figure out how, you know, which direction to go in, I guess. But two is here ready to pick up Celsius. Oh, oh my God. Gee, get it together, guys. All right. Nine rounds. Good. The Mastercard Thrifty coming through could not have been a better timing for it. By all rights, that should have been Sentinel's favor to go up to series point. And instead, they're going to take a tactical time. The recon was good from Kaunzi. Uh, Sadak, sorry. They finally lost market control. Loud actually went and took that space on the map that otherwise John's just been watching with a trip. Really? Said Zulza calling a time up this early. From Sen, yeah, they were doing so well, and then they lose one round, and then they're timing out. Discuss precisely where what went wrong. Potentially putting more of an emphasis onto mid, but again, Sadak, world class caller this guy is. No slouch as well. Still above the timer, so I guess doing an early one now was perfectly fine. Even expecting that, there's layers to it. Yeah, I think from loud though. Guess you're nervous if you're loud. Most likely to break the flow before loud catches up. Yeah, like I said, yeah, I think. I didn't realize that they only had, they still had both of their timeouts to go. If they only had one, I'd be a bit like, that's risky. Um, but seeing as they have two, they can be a little bit more liberal with using them. So let's see what he's brought to the table, coming out the back of this timeout. Looks like Sen wanna try. Buy is really rough for Sentinels too, so it is an important time to take a timeout. Otherwise, you're even on score. You got a null command, you almost have another frash. Sassy's been farming him up like nobody's business. And this is a quiet map for second. He's not really been needed much, to be fair. Okay, and I've gets spatterings of info, but not too much. Allowed seemingly like they've been pressured here a lot more. Now want to actually try to put more stuff towards B. And Sentinels, it's risky for Tens to be here fighting this and clearing this, but it's so valuable with the information that he's getting. Seeing if they could break the trip. Can't quite get that. So this is like Loud trying to put some pressure in. Hello. Oh, and Zekin tries to peek off of it. That's really nice. But I love this call from Loud. Like, they put some stuff towards here, get caught by the knife, try to maybe cut noise and do stuff elsewhere, and then re-hit. Like, they sort of know that Sentinels is trying to cut them off at the pass, so to speak. Like, they're trying to proactively lean the way that Loud are tentatively showing. Can he pull out some magic? Drone here, oh, drone is good. Again, it's only Sadak here. Like, nobody else has given away their position now. No command is used. The Omen is on a gig alert now. Tuiz is in a really good spot. So, Les has gone down. He's gone down in alley. One for the open plant now, too. There's the flank. Sassy's still finding a lot of value. You got one in alley already. And Sassy, yeah, has just found so much space. Flash is really nice. Pressured into this spot. They've cancelled the Omen ult so they can actually get onto the defuse. Knife has hit him too. Oh, he's got it. He's just got it in the end. Man, some of these fucking rounds that Loud are losing are heartbreaking.
anyway. I was looking at the minimap. Oh my god. Uh, just he some of these post plants from Loud. Like, how is Sassy able to just walk he through this? And he was way out of time. I believe that's straight in catch. Yeah, it, it definitely looked like bullets were headed. Pros don't fake. I can't believe it. But it's better to be lucky than good. And damn if Tenzin. Mm. <laughs> mm. And this is it, potentially. Precipice of defeat for Loud. Three rounds, three chances. QCK seen him and he's just whiffed it. There's no Gecko Flash on the attack side to get all of this information. You should never fake. I mean, there's some instances where you probably should. Look at this deep look. These are the rounds where Les just decides, all right, my team's struggling to come up with an idea. I am going to make the play. To In that instance, definitely sticking is good because you've cancelled the Omenal. Les has found some great space. Zekin is going to peek it. Zekin is like a place that you could definitely bully. Oh, he's trying to go into safe. He's Molly and the Hunter's Fury is going to be used. Are they able to actually get onto Sassy? No, he's fully flashed though. He somehow managed to dodge it. John Cutie sent back the Phoenix ult. Sassy has no utility. He just has to fight a full flash. QCK has been getting so much with these. On top here, five. And then John, oh, I mean, saving's good because look at this money. It's tragic and you're free HP. What the hell are you going to do otherwise? You know? It feels like center in control. And yet you look, because they've died so many times while winning these rounds, they don't have an economic cushion. Oh my dear so Lord. keeping this weapon online, it does end up being really important. It's common the entire time. See it in the scam. Yeah, it's like a mini timeout for him, exactly. right? Yeah. To discuss what's going on. Uh, and really, the big difference that that round is that Les just found an opening up through elbow. And also, like, sure more of John's util focused on B. Had nobody playing there. Perhaps, even if people were playing there, he was... I know he's here. Fights, just believing in himself. Does John save this? He needs to rifle. And two years... I mean, <laughs> two is just spraying him. <laughs> right. through, no one, he's Little spin bot in there. We are going to be headed into... Oh my god. The final few rounds here of the match. With Loud favored to bring it to the final round. And maybe even some OT afterwards. It's crazy the other. Funnily enough, a really good execute from Loud. A team based thing these players are willing to make. Look at this gamble. Send gambling over towards A because that's was better to die there. Previously, Sadax already swapped it up. They're headed in the opposite direction. I don't know about that. I mean, I don't. Uh, I don't think it's huge that he does go down. You don't get a rifle last round. Mm. He might be able. He'd be losing something, I guess. I don't know. I'm confident in thinking that the money would be fine to work out because you'd have full loss bonus. I mean, a win here for Sen is forcing out those ults. I think. I don't want to do the quick maths now. The Dizzy again is really nice. The Nade too. Viper's Pit's going to be dedicated on the Eco. On the Anti-Eco. Oh yeah, there's just going to be full spamming. Oh, he tried to TP on top. It's worth it. Sassy trying to defuse. I don't know if that was the wingman. Wow, that is... Regular time anyway. I care like he's dying to the spike just to make sure he gets the full money. But he's brought down so many players. Money won't matter too much in this case, but you've got the Vipers pit out on a round like this. And a good idea, a good attempt from Tens, I think. I mean, it's just, you know, pro gameplay. It's not the crazy headshots. It's not these, like, Giga Flicks. It's just spraying through smokes and hoping. Right before the last... Round of regulation. I mean, I have it. I might as well. Tension could never be high, could it? Both teams just set to simmer. Kawanzine has a huge ultimate online, and Sentinels are wary of that. I'm not sure what kind of adjustment Kaplan wants to make towards the end of this. I would imagine that they want to use that little elbow passage that Les was able to uh, find for them yeah. in round 22. But to be honest, the, a lot of the game plan has still been working here for some defense side. 
John's been able to find so much value oh, from this. What time uh, is eight o'clock? You know, if you hit an unbreakable, there aren't actually that many tools with Loud's composition to be able to get through it. There's obviously the trips or, an uh, sorry, the shocks or an after uh, shock, something like that. Look at this. Loud have not been meticulous. <laughs> Jesus. I'm sure all of that is eroded away. Two E's has bought the op again. Didn't realize that Love had such devoted fans. Down and why not? You have the money, you have the cash. Maybe even just anticipating some kind of adjustment from Sentinels here, but it's everything tossed into the mix. One round to decide it. Does the series end? Does it get totaled, or will there be that continuation? But now, I, I feel like back. because of the setups that very Sentinels good. have had, Dominant this wall has had very little value, like for top mid. Make it feel like but this time, control. John is going for like the B setup, rolling thunder, I guess. Like, I mean, A retakes have been superb for Sentinels, bit wishy-washy from Loud. So I guess they're just sticking all of their utility on B, being like, that's the only place that they're getting success. Aldrin, see if there's any contact. They don't see anything. No reason to use the stun. Deep drone not broken. Look at this bag position for tens. tension. Brave angle. Oh, and Les goes right into it. He TP's out. He gets hit by the rolling thunder. He does get chased down. So you've lost the Viper, which isn't a big deal. You don't lose that Viper's pit. You don't lose uh, a smoke. You got Neural Theft too, that's going to give these post plans. Oh man. Actually, double checking on a flank. The Dizzy fucked up. Sassy's fucked it. He can't pick up the Dizzy either. Oh, he can't quite get the kill. Two E's on the operator. This is a good place to watch it from. You're just not going to expect it, right? It's just pulled out. Bit of a spray for the smoke, an attack smoke too. So that's what the two E's has put down. Oh man, somehow Loud have done it again, they've pulled it into OT. Oh dear. I mean, if Sassy didn't fuck up the Dizzy, that might have gone very differently. QCK is just shutting up the haters to an extent. Zekin has really struggled this map. Well, I think it's just hard to play Duelist here. Like, Raze on this map. Alright, who's got the balls in OT? It's always side show Brenna get the banger in uh, series. Poor Tom and Mitch, they just got like a very one-sided 2-0 for Genji. Brutal. Smokes are propped up. Yeah, and going for their defensive setup where 2 E's is the player holding aggressive over towards A, so they frequently leave 2 E's alone in these spots. You got the stun ready to go off of it. Two for loud. 2 E's just loves these kind of like face to the wall jiggle peaks. The camera's the thing that clears him out too. Dizzy flash to see. I don't know if it does connect or not. Dizzy off the cam contact. Paranoia is forced out early. One way is used again. Doors closed. And it's the same, same sort of thing of like Sentinels wanted to push this a bit more. But I swear, Louder always. Louder just cut off from this. Stuff like this. They pinged it. So now you've got the silver that's going to like clear it and check it. Genuinely haven't seen Sadak once. Use this like God Aldron, which is feels like a bit of a waste. This game is way too close. It's a really good series. All right, where are we at now? Oh, they're pushing and two uh, tens is in the smoke. Two is in the smoke. Sorry, there's no much time here. I've loud owned this. Zekka's up in the high ground. The plant is going to come in a great position for him to be in. Fake TP. 
They don't know quite where he is, but it might not matter. The double peek is fantastic. The camera spots two. And sends it all. Salak has to one versus three. Second, making the wraparound to A Link. Salak sticking this one half onto it, half onto the diffuse. He's bought himself a little bit of time, a window potentially, but he just needs to. Oh, uh, John is too good in these. No one will give him an easy one. Wow, <laughs> just every post plant that John is in is crazy. He plays these situations from the brink. mentally. Loud's identification that that was an A hit. And the fact that they got players ready to throw utility to stop and put pressure on the plant, that almost won them the round. Last you saw Cowan Zine just barreling over the top of the mosh, trying to end the round instantly by denying the plant. But not everybody on the same page, and it gave Sen an opportunity. They're up on match series. Mm, less been quiet too, actually, bottom fragging for his team. Snowball out of control with these rounds, and you're right. Match point, map point, series point, whatever you want to call it here. It's Sentinels in that driving seat. This time, John Cutie hasn't put a setup for mid control as well or mid information. So he's got the camera. Yeah, he's got back to the runs he was doing he's towards the end. Rely on other people watching the top Which of the has more gone in Loud's favor than anything, I'd say. Kind of cheating here, going for a very aggressive, strong... It has goal, but two players now watching CT. We haven't really seen Sen in this and match. And Tens is sort of similar, one-off, one-and-done position. A high-low position. You can't account for the two spots that he could be... Flash is flash perfect. Boss is in back. Step, Phoenix <laughs> wall, no pick up the orb. Are they going to go back to B now and pick up the orb here? Into it indeed. Oh, Kat, Sadak. Zeka, great pick. Good decision to just pull back. Sticking on the site. There's 25 seconds. you got to go for a wall of this util. After Shulk breaks one of the trips, there's still another one. Zekin's got another. Oh, Zekin's dodged them both. What is it? Two versus four now. Ten seconds. The wingman's going to stop it. The stun, the paranoia. Holy shit, Sen. They've owned it. I mean, Loud just went to shit towards the end. Sen look incredible here. Dominic it was right down to the end. Alright, Sen had a real deal. Loud versus Pete Breaks in the loser's bracket, though. I mean, that could go either way, to be honest. Loud pushed them. Oh, they did. But Sen were resilient the whole way through with huge performances coming out from multiple players. Sassy's 1v3. Absolutely instrumental. I mean, yeah, I, I feel like for... John called a great game. I, I'm just, I am a little bit disappointed with how Loud played that in some cases. It was super close, but that should have been a stomp in the direction of Loud, right? So many rounds that Loud just like lost clutches or just went down in brutal ways. Did you going to expose these NA frauds? I mean, at least they're going to be up against Sentinels who look like the better squad. Like, we actually do get to sort of see where the hype is. And what an awesome one to look forward to. I think especially just the head-to-head -head that I'm instantly thinking of is 10's v Karen. Oh, yeah. Because... Yeah, 10's versus Karen is going to be fun. But even like second texture. Mobile version of the smokes player, but Karen with the movement. Yeah, I mean, that guy <laughs> yeah. is just—he's just skilled through and through. Picked up straight from the rank cues. That is going to be one hell of a head-to-head. -head. It really is. And Sen, all of that time being able to. You know, well, Sen's also right now best uh, retakes. Those really plates of resilience. Through the Swiss system. Yeah, it's and just that mix of like they have really they good really game plans, good mid-round calling. They know their, like, win conditions, what they need to do and how they need to adjust. Um, and they just have, like, the individuals to make plays happen, too. It was really working. And it was different things that were working as well. We didn't really get to see that A retake. Like, it's magical. I really enjoyed that. Really, really enjoyed that. Um, both series. A little bit sadly, I suppose, the paper breaks went, like, down into the elimination bracket the way that they did. But it just makes me more hyped to see what Jinji are doing. So I'm wrong on my pickums here. 
wasn't the case as well. And we're just getting the players ready for an interview down on the stage view. One run, one oh, run. if I'd got this, I'd be in like the top 2%. But it's it's going to be an there's 16 stats. users that have been right on everything another match against his former team and i do think we're set up for this to possibly become the preeminent rivalry of uh i agree uh, maybe yeah. <laughs> maybe of the global valorant circuit but certainly the american circuit as well Definitely. yeah i'd agree with that too so true so this is wrong possible. by proxy it kind of like fucks up all of my yeah, predictions uh, from here on out that both of these teams i mean the final will probably today. be the same and but we'll see and also showcasing that even on some of their weaker maps like icebox they're continuing to uh. add to their playbook to the strap book yeah they certainly are i mean honestly it could have been 2-0 well. for of I mean, those two just fantastic we're gonna be going through all so the maybe i was listen where where where's sassy getting down is he gonna be as brave like it, maybe yeah. potentially yeah. chances i'm but interested to hear what their perspective is though but anyway i'm not gonna hang around for too long uh, i won't host anybody else as well because i don't think there's like most people sassy. be going offline anyway experience yeah. last year where it was I'll a little be this Imagine an all Pacific final though. I think it'd be really hard for it to happen that way. Like loud need to be uh, loud. Uh, Paybrex need to be loud, and then they need to beat Sentinels. Assuming that Genji beat Sentinels in the final, or upper bracket final. But um, yeah, I'm going to just dip because I want to get some like proper tea instead of what I just ate, I guess. Um, but tomorrow, Paybrex versus loud. This is the first game, 3 p.m. tomorrow, so same start time as today. We'll go over the vetoes, what that's likely to be, and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, thank you very much for everybody for watching. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I had a lot of fun today, learned a lot, so I hope you did too as well. So goodbye, see you tomorrow, bye-bye. And thanks for the hosts as well, actually, uh, from Juki and Aker.